It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up on alert. Millions of Americans under excessive heat advisories this morning. Millions more facing air quality alerts. After a brutal summer, is there any relief in sight? How's got your full forecast? Then ride gone wrong. This morning, an investigation underway after a 10-year-old boy fell from a carnival ride. He's a very strong kid, very tough kid, and he's pulling through well. We're live with the latest on his condition and how it happened. Plus, girl dinner. This is my meal. I call this girl dinner. It's the culinary craze taking TikTok by storm. So what exactly is girl dinner? Jenna's got the latest on this trend. And rise to greatness. From the court to the course to Studio 1A, we are scoring big this morning because NBA superstar Steph Curry is here. He'll tell us all about his new documentary. That was when I first really understood I'm different. And his big golf win that had him doing this. Today, Tuesday, July 18th, 2023. Good morning to our mom. Watching in Memphis. Love you, Grandma. Shout out to Hillsdale, Michigan. Egan, Minnesota. Louisville, Kentucky. And Simsbury, Connecticut. On our grandson, Brandon. In Louisville, Kentucky. For our 20th anniversary. You know I'm good about Arkansas. Celebrating my mom's 50th birthday. From San Diego. Today's Kyle's 14th birthday. And all he wanted is to be on the Today Show. Yeah! Yeah. We're back. Jen is here, today's talker. This is gonna be good. Uh -huh. You guys, there's a culinary craze. It is sweeping the nation. It's called Girl Dinner. Girl okay. Dinner. Okay. What is it? I am so into this. Imagine this. You have an evening all to yourself, uh -huh. no kids, no partner to cook for. What would you choose to eat for dinner? Well, if you wouldn't fix yourself a proper meal, you're not alone. This is my meal. I call this girl dinner. Meet the girl dinner, a TikTok sensation that has women everywhere saying dinner. dinner for I one. Call this girl dinner. Girl dinner. It's a supper made of snacks quickly thrown together on evenings alone. No cooking, no cleanup, only indulgence. Girl dinner! Girl dinner! Girl dinner! Girl dinner. The plates made for one person by one person often include cheese, crackers, pickles, and fruit. It's resonating with women everywhere. The hashtag girl dinner has more than 150 million views on TikTok. This is my dinner. Some users are sharing artfully arranged masterpieces and some picking bites straight from the containers. This is my dinner. The trend started when Olivia Marr from Los Angeles posted a video of her no fuss meal. I was literally standing at my counter, hair's a mess, eating cheese and grapes. And I was like, I cannot be the only person that does this. You know, who's boyfriend is at home and so they're eating like a little mouse meal and posted it immediately. I was so excited to watch women gather behind it. Why do you think so many women are finding this so relatable? I think because we've all done it but alone and as a, se not a secret thing but just something we never really thought to say out loud. You're not cooking for other people. You're creating a little platter just for your heart's desire. It's the antithesis of sort of like what was expected of like the 1950s housewife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the total like breakdown of that. The movement has its critics. Some are saying it glorifies eating disorders. Were you a little surprised with some of the backlash? I was kind of surprised, but then not. Anybody will find a reason to be mad at anything on the internet. Girl dinner can look like anything that you need, and we don't know necessarily what someone has already eaten that day. And you're not saying that you need to eat a girl dinner every night. That's what the fun is, right? When you get to sneak in, there's something illicit about it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But as long as you feel like giddy and like you're getting away with something, but you feel full and happy. A meal bringing joy to millions of women who say the girl dinner is the dinner of champions. Okay, so I'm going to put my napkin where okay, it belongs. Make sure my kiss is visible. Okay, okay. so oh. first, um, let's show what we all okay, why don't you have. Go first. Okay, I'll yeah. go first. What you got? Oh, wait, that's I love beautiful. Oh, wait, I you love hummus. Well, if you mm. have it, 
This is the, these are the rules. Whatever is in the house. Whatever is in the house. Yeah. A Trisket is the world's love, best I, cracker. Yeah, I love a Trisket. Mm -hmm. And Olive, if you happen to yes. have one or two oh, left over. I like yours. I like yours. Some carrots. And, and Reese's course. cups. And the most important cheese. part cheese. of the dinner. Yeah. Cheese. The cheese. All right. Savannah, Ms. Guthrie, let's hear it. I bet we're going to see a lot of this theme, cheese and crackers. Uh -huh. I just Wait. like a good old cheese oh, and cracker. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Not yeah. these weedy crackers, though. These are too healthy. Just more like a rich. <laughs> just yeah. a good old fashioned. A wheat thin a wheat is a thin. delicious. Oh, a wheat thin is Wait, is that a Levain cookie? What is that? Well, I just said, and something a little sweet like a piece of a cookie I don't a really good cookie. I would you not prefer eat this, this but, wouldn't you actually no feel this it's warm that oh, you have a warm cookie delight. yeah have some that. I know oh, so yeah, I would I hopefully not eat this oh, whole thing God. but if I did I would tell myself I didn't okay I how about you mine, oh and a little glass of wine mine's super mm -hmm. simple it involves 15 seconds seconds in the microwave okay I'm not cooking you're but, cooking mm -hmm. so I take a Ritz oh wait God. look what I do here oh good I put a thing of what what is happening whatever can I, I melt it? Yes, try a melted Ritz. Better than a Ritz, Ritz. Oh, come on. No. That is, yes. I'd like yes. to try one. But come this on. is the most hoted Melty. dinner of Wait, all time. Peanut butter and jelly, and then just oh, regular. This is, real. this is delicious. Mm. Isn't that so good? Mm -hmm. And then, and then my sweet treat is mm. the fad of the week <laughs> a coconut popsicle. Mm -hmm. That's your oh. treat? Just but that's been, Just that's take a bite. Been, take, please. You like coconut? It's like health food. No, no. it's not. Try it. It's, it's creamy. It's delicious. No, thank you. I, I, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want it, Sam. I am. Okay. Right. What do you so got? Now, now I feel, I'm judged already. No, you're no, not. I'm not that creative. Is it fancy? No. I just oh, make pizza. it. Yeah. Oh, quesadillas. Quesadillas. Mm -hmm. I definitely just, allow. we always have tortillas and I make it with butter. See how it's all gooey? Yeah. That is delicious. And wait, what kind of cheese? Whatever I have in the house. Yeah. It's delightful. I love it. I usually honestly put beans in it, but that's Do we all see the common denominator? What is it? Cheese. cheese. It is. Because cheese is my happiness. My world's mm. favorite food group. I know, it really is. Oh my you God. You know what it is? It's the butter. Mm. The butter, the mm -hmm. cheese. I mean, mm. I here's think, the thing though. Yes. Mm. Yeah, let's talk about I the I believe the rules are this. What? You cannot turn on the stove, although you, for a well, quesadilla like you can. You can put things in the micro. The other thing is it leads you to ask, what is a boy dinner? Uh, what is what the is boy, boy dinner? dinner? I believe boy the boy dinner. dinner is some sort of meat out oh of my the look at these two. <laughs> oh, what are y'all eating? White castles. Boy. White castles. And, and, and pizza. Riveting okay. gold dinner down there. Guys. Yeah, that was really exciting. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, there you I tell you something. That <laughs> melted Ritz cracker is not the most delicious thing I've eaten That's in a melt. long time. Oh, gosh. Show them your sweet treat. Yeah. Show them your sweet treat. You got to follow it up. I like that they're trying to bourbon. What I like about it. They're is that it's like, us. are they still talking? I don't yeah. know what's happening Wait, here. Why are uh -uh. boys invited to They're grow? jealous because they don't have a microwave. Y'all weren't they, invited. Crackers with. Kill the mic. Unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but don't you think I like the idea <laughs> that even if you're like, I don't Dad, every you? night for the kids. <laughs> yeah, it's girl dinner. <laughs> this is girl. so relatable. Okay, you. But you know what? Don't you like it when it's just like, yeah. I just want to eat my two yes. things that I eat. No, it's yes. so true. I want to have four tortillas and I want to be standing up. And I want to be standing up. And I want to be standing up. I like to stand up. Pringles I also, yes. I had this basic. Last night. Yeah. Dad dinner. Dad dinner. Oh I, what is happening? This is tonight. just a, a symbol or of what's going dad on. Dinner. The girls try to have a conversation this and then exactly speak over what us. happened. Turn the TV back. This on. is why we need girl dinner. Okay. Mm -hmm.
excited are we for our next guest? You know him because he is one of the greatest and most influential basketball players of all time. We're talking about Steph Curry. He is the NBA's all-time three-point leader, a four-time champion, a two-time MVP, and his rise to the top is the subject of this incredibly inspiring new documentary on Apple TV+. Plus. Stephen Curry, underrated. Take a look. I remember looking around like, oh, I'm not as tall as him, not as strong as him. I was the undersized, scrawny kid that was just trying to figure out how to make it at whatever level I was playing. <laughs> that was when I first really understood I'm different. You are different. You are different, Steph Curry. First of all, I watched this documentary. It's incredible. Thank you very much. If you are up against some odds and you're wondering if can I do it, no matter what your profession is, this documentary, I think, is the thing you need to see. So you describe yourself as a scrawny kid, a kid who didn't, people always looked at and dismissed. He's not going to be able to do it. Why do you think it is that you went from that kid to this man sitting here with all of these accolades? What's the magic? Sauce. I mean, it was a, it's a combination of the uh, support that I had around me, and part of this documentary is kind of highlighting all of the uh, family, friends, coaches, teammates that, um, you know, kind of uplifted me in those, those kind of rough moments when I was coming up because I was a late bloomer, the smallest kid on my team. And through it all, like, I just loved what I got to do. I loved the, you know, the opportunity to prove myself right more than, like, carry that chip on your shoulder that I got to prove everybody wrong. It was proving myself right that, uh, you know, I could make it with, you know, hard work, with, you know, undying faith in myself. And um, just kind of, to your point, it's not just a sports kind no, of story. It's, it's not. It's, it's, it's something for life, and I think uh, hopefully people enjoy it. Well, you're, you had two big cheerleaders in your life, your mom and your dad, both of whom are... Hokies. Hokies. We got the connection. In the doc, when you said, there's your dad, who's, a, who's a, by the way, a legendary basketball player at Virginia Tech. Uh, you wanted to go to Virginia Tech. You didn't get accepted, or you, or you were looked, the coach said, I don't think didn't so. Get a scholarship offer, yeah. you, you wound up going to a college called Davidson mm -hmm. College. You had your very first game there, and it was a big goose egg. <laughs> like, nothing was working for you. I think the magic of you is you recover. Something goes wrong, and then you make it right. Tell me There's about that. There's a little that. bit of him in perseverance. And the funniest yeah. part about my first college game, I didn't even remember the, the lowlights, I'll call them, <laughs> and how bad it was. It was even worse than I, than I remember. <laughs> um, you know, just throwing the ball all over the place. It looked like a baby giraffe out there <laughs> on the court. And I'm sure Coach McKillop, our head coach at Davidson, was kind of second guessing, like, hmm, maybe Why did the I scholarship pick this offer kid? was uh, the wrong decision. But even in that moment, like, his confidence to stick with me, uh, like I said, the perseverance and the mental fortitude to work through some of the rough patches early and and, uh, and then, again, rely on the work that I put in, it, it, it paid off. Something in the documentary struck me. It was when the, co when the head coach from Davidson was looking to recruit you, mm -hmm. and he tried to reach out to you multiple times, and he couldn't get you, and he thought, uh-oh, Steph's going to go to another <laughs> college. You told him that your mom took your phone away yeah. for 10 days. Why did she do that? Not handling my business at home, the priorities of... Uh, you know, we had a very disciplined kind of house and chores and making sure, you know, we understood, like, th playing basketball was a privilege. Well, she said that you had a curse word on your phone, even that you didn't even send, that someone you received, and your mom said, give me that phone. Yeah, phone. That, to me, told the whole discipline story. <laughs> your mom wanted you and your parents wanted you to graduate college. You went off to the, to the, to the big leagues, and you didn't get your degree, mm -hmm. but it was really important that that was also part of your journey. No, for sure. My mom's a lifelong educator. Going to Davidson was a decision not just for basketball, but for, uh, you know, the, the educational experience that, that it provides. And when I left, I made a promise to Coach McKillop and to my mom, like, you know, I would definitely finish and even when I got drafted I took a couple classes in the summers and re-enrolled during the NBA lockout back in 2011 but it took me another 10 years to, to find the space to, to go back and, and did it. my sociology degree and uh, and I got it done and, and, and got recognized last summer. Uh, I love it how your process. kids are doing their homework. You're doing your homework. Everyone's my, doing I, their I homework together. I told my oldest, maybe me and you might graduate at the same time, <laughs> but uh, thankfully I got it done. Though. Well, you're <laughs> like such a legend in the NBA. Your parents' love, your perseverance uh, paid off. What was beautiful to us was we know how good you are at basketball, and mm -hmm. this documentary is jaw-dropping. But also, you're incredible on the golf course. we got to roll the highlight <laughs> oh, for no. anyone who missed it. <laughs> if you can get a hole-in-one like this, let me know. Let's roll it. And it's obvious he can really play. Boy, this is right at it if it gets there. How about that? Oh, 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 are you kidding me? Oh, 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 oh
Are you kidding me? <laughs> We kept saying on the show, that's a basketball celebration. It was perfect. It's a balance of golf and basketball. Like, the athleticism would be able to run 150 yards down the down the, the hole and celebrate. One, I wanted to get up there as fast as possible to make sure it was real. Because yeah. you don't ever expect to, to make a hole in one, especially in a golf tournament like that. You are so, I mean, I, I was inspired by you before this documentary. After, I'm, like, totally blown away. Thank you. We know that you like, if anyone's going to eat a document, watch a documentary, they should have a snack. Absolutely. Uh, we hear one of your favorite snacks is popcorn. Oh. Okay, Second well, Roker wanted to bring you some. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Freshly I popped. I don't Freshly popped. Well, butter. butter. You don't morning. even care. Uh, this is breakfast, lunch, and dinner right <laughs> Hey, here. Steph, if you were going to just say the, the, what you want people to take from this documentary finally, because I was inspired. I wanted to go do something afterwards. But what do you hope people take away? I think just the fact that, uh, you know, being underrated is, is a badge of honor. Like, mm -hmm. it's an encouragement to, to run your own race, you know, to be in a position where, you are good enough, and if you have the right support system around you, you put the time and work into whatever your craft is, whatever you know makes you special, makes you different, makes you unique. Um, finding that is is your superpower, and I want people to uh, to embrace that journey because uh, we all have uh, something to offer the world, and, and I hope that you find it. Your mom and dad are incredible. Your mama played college volleyball. Your yeah. dad basketball, and they passed on all the, the beautiful uh, traits to you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, people, go see this. This is Al. This is like a crazy good documentary. It's called Stephen Curry Underrated. It is streaming on Apple TV Plus on Friday. Perfect thing to watch with the family, Absolutely. especially your kids. <laughs> One of the year's most highly anticipated films arrives in theaters this week, Oppenheimer, from acclaimed writer-director Christopher Nolan. It takes us inside the mind of J. Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb, with an intimate look at that first test, where they weren't sure if they were about to destroy the world. Take a look. Oh, did you think we were going to show you? We're holding our breath for this movie. Christopher Nolan, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, I want to talk about the movie. It's incredible. I had the opportunity to see it. You're here because 
the actors are on strike, the writers are on strike, yeah. and they had to, just in the middle of your Oppenheimer premiere in London, they walked out. What was that moment like to be ready to show your movie to the world and then this happens? It was, it was a bittersweet moment. I mean, we were all there. We were very fortunate. We had the opportunity to somewhat, you know, celebrate the film. The actors were all there to support. Uh, but then when the time came, they had to down tools and, and go off in support of all of their fellow actors and in support of the writers as well. It's, it's an important moment in the industry. Uh, the business models have been rewritten by the companies we work for, and it's time to rewrite the deals. And uh, hopefully... Um, with everybody unified, that can happen as quickly as possible. I should mention Comcast, our parent company, is a member of the Producers Alliance. Oppenheimer is a phenomenal movie. I was just saying to you, I don't know that you could have picked a more difficult subject than quantum physics and splitting atoms and the character of J. Robert Oppenheimer. Yeah. What, what drew you to this? Well, I, you know, for me, Oppenheimer's story is the most dramatic story I've ever encountered. It's as simple as that. When I learned the fact that leading up to that Trinity test that we just saw the, the moment before, um, he and his fellow scientists couldn't completely eliminate the possibility that in triggering that, they might destroy the entire world. But they went ahead and they pushed that button anyway. And that, for me, that's the most dramatic situation I have ever heard of. It, it, it raises so many questions, moral questions. I mean, to yeah. say nothing of how you visualize the actual, um, the, the, the bomb, the detonating of the bomb, mm. which, by the way, people should know, if you're going to go see it, this isn't CGI. <laughs> you were very intent on making sure this was as uh, raw an experience as it could be for the audience. Yeah, I think raw is a good word. We wanted imagery that has beauty but threat to it. Computer mm. graphics tend to be, they can feel a bit anodyne, a bit safe. Um, that's why they're tough to use in horror movies, for example. Uh, but finding, challenging my team to use real methods, some of them microscopic and tiny, some of them absolutely vast, uh, that, I think, gives the imagery the bite that it needs. It's interesting because you I know you're you to be a sort of an analog person. You don't you famously <laughs> don't have a smartphone. Is that right? Uh, I do not. I mean, which is just astonishing, but and <laughs> congratulations. Well, thank you. Um, but I also read that you even with the scripts that you mm. that you wrote that you wanted to come and bring the script to your actors personally. Yeah. And that in the case of Cillian Murphy who plays Robert Oppenheimer you brought it to him in Ireland. And I did, Did yeah. you wait while he read it, or did you give him a moment of privacy? I, I, <laughs> no pressure. I, he came to visit me in my hotel in Dublin, and I handed him the script, and I went off to... Uh, to look at the, the wonderful uh, Hugh Lane Gallery. They have the Francis Bacon <laughs> Studio there, which I'd never got the chance to see. Spent a few hours there, came back and he'd finished it, and he looked uh, a little shocked. And he said yes right away? He said, I think he'd already said yes before I had oh. him read the script, but he had that sort of relieved and slightly shocked, you know, because I think he was already committed in his own mind, but uh, he seemed to respond very well to the script. But he looked a little challenged. He looked a little afraid in the right way, because yeah. you want to you want to challenge the actors you work with. By the way, all these actors say they would work with you for anything. They're willing to be an extra. Cashier number three in the convenience store, they'll do it for you. It must feel pretty good at this point in your career to be at that moment. It, it is really a privilege to have access to actors at the highest level of of their craft. I mean, it's really fun, you know, to be able to, to make those calls, get those meetings and try and convince them to do something like Robert Downey Jr. taking on Louis Strauss. That's the kind of acting we haven't seen him do in a long time. He's an incredible movie star, but he's also an incredible actor. And to see him lose himself, you know, some people don't even recognize him in the film, which I think is, he takes as a great compliment if it takes a few minutes for people to realize which character he's playing. Yeah, everyone really becomes their character. And I just yeah. have to say, I know you want, if people can see it on IMAX, they should. And mm. there's a video on Instagram that I saw. You didn't see it because you don't have a smartphone, so let me just show you. But here you are with the actual <laughs> <laughs> IMAX film. So <laughs> how long is, you said it's like three miles long or 11 something? Miles. 11, 11 miles. 11 miles long, 600 pounds. It's, it's a big beast. Christopher Nolan, thank you so much. And you can catch Oppenheimer from our sister company, Universal, in theaters this Friday. Hoda? All right, Savannah, thank you. Coming up next, Chassie Post is in the house. She's got a new batch of Today bestsellers, affordable fan favorites to put together the ultimate summer outfit. But first, this is Today on NBC.
We are back with today's bestsellers. This morning, fan favorites all tried and true with really great reviews and ratings. So they all happen to be under 45 bucks. Joining us is Shop All Day contributor Chassis Post. You can find all of these as usual if you scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen. Hi, Chass. Good morning. Hi, Good Hona. morning. Thank you. All fun summer things you've got us yeah. covered from head to toe. We sure do. Let's start with a, one of these great multi use makeup yeah, pieces. Yeah, so this is a lip tint, which okay. is a huge trend. Not only is this a bestseller, it's a TikTok star, 21 okay. million views and under $10. So this is the Lip Airy Velvet Lip Tint from Peri Para. Okay. And this is a hot Korean brand. And what shoppers love is, I mean, it looks like what a little happens? tincture, but it's got this perfect applicator. Yep, yep. It goes on so velvety. And it's a tint and not yes, a ton of color. Yes, and you can build that tint ah. so you can make it bold, but I just love, love it. it. Just is it, beautiful, is it natural. Just for lips? Uh, it's for lips, but you can use it on your cheeks Dab it and on your, your cheeks. eyes, right? And okay. the brand says it lasts, you know, one swipe the entire day. So I under love $10. It. All right, we need a versatile top. We do and this is another customer loved over 10,000 ratings and what they love is it's just the perfect sort of easy you know ah, effortless yeah, yeah. By the way, cool like it. top right yeah. and you know the fans love this fabric it is so soft and it drapes really well mm -hmm. and I gotta say my favorite thing about it what? is it's so flattering on the arm this arm cut it's yeah, sort of an yeah, angle yeah, yeah. I like and it, it looks really great and that you can wear it with everything Untucked, in your closet. tucked in yeah, tucked dress Tie yeah, it up, throw it work. over a bathing suit. Exactly. Anything. Wear it everywhere. So it's okay. around $26. Okay. Okay. Biker shorts are back. They are back in a big way. And this is Amazon's number one bestseller, wow. 86,000 ratings. And here's why. Uh -huh. First of all, it's moisture wicking material. It is breathable. And it's got that medium compression, mm -hmm. so it, it sucks you in, but mm -hmm. it is not too tight. Good. And it is will never ever go, uh, you know, see through on mm -hmm. you. The brand says they're squat proof, which I love. I like that. So they right? but I like the pocket for your phone. I love the pocket, yeah, and I love pocket. the longer length. Mm -hmm. So you know, bike shorts aren't just for the gym anymore. And so so many colors around twenty dollars. Sperry's are back. I know Sperry what? is back, oh. right? And you know, these uh, Sperry, the home of Super Prep, right? Mm -hmm. They did the top cider. Well, now uh, check out these adorable classic kicks. And what I love about them is. You know, there's sort of a slip on design because look at that barrel lacing there. They come okay. pre laced. Cool. I used to could do that. Back, <laughs> no back more. In the day. Now they do How it for these? you. And these are $45, $45 and super cute. This okay. is Hoda, a cool You've got out. to try this. So, you know, okay. we've seen the fanny pack, right? Mm -hmm. This is the next wave. This is called the sling bag. I like it. Doesn't that feel secure? By the way, it feels secure. You can fit your phone. You can tell. Oh my gosh. Even the biggest phones. Yeah. And if yeah. you can see in here, they also like have, you know, great compartments hands for free. your hands-free convenience, great compartments for your uh, credit cards, and I mean, so many great colors. It's lightweight, and I mean, talk about travel. Nobody is taking our passport in right. with hands that. Hands free. I know. All right. Okay. Well, last but not least, tiki tunes. How cute are these? These are rechargeable LED tiki lights that double as wireless Bluetooth speakers. Brilliant. Isn't that great? And they're water resistant, so, so you, you can take them to the pool. So you put them out back. Yeah, you have a picnic. Like they are the pool. flameless, Place, and by right? Way, cute as a button. Isn't All right. that, aren't they cute? Jassy, <laughs> thanks. You can start shopping. Scan the QR code. Head to today.com/shop. And we should mention that today does earn a commission on the purchases made from the segment, which features products available solely on Amazon. We are back with the third and fourth hours of today. But first, a check of your local news and weather. Thank you, Chassie. This is good. This morning on the third hour of today, Miracle at Sea, a man and his dog lost for months, now safe. I have not had food, enough food for a long time. How he says they stayed alive and who finally found them. Plus, TikTok isn't just for kids. Let's see if it's busting or not. Meet the senior stars who are racking up millions of views. Then in our series, Take It Off Today. A Star Today community member revealing her life-changing health transformation and the major milestone she just reached. Then, how often should you clean your dishwasher, scrub your shower, wipe down that filthy phone? The dirty truth that may just inspire you to get cleaning. Today, Tuesday, July 18th, 
2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the third hour of today. You can tell Dylan's back because <laughs> we haven't seen each other in a while. I was just like straight out. out. I'm just kind of, uh, whatever. <laughs> I want to be part of that girl dinner. Exactly. Welcome back. She had a big golf trip to Lake Tahoe. How was it? It was awesome. It's the American Century Championship. Um, Steph Curry was just on the earlier hour. He won the whole thing mm -hmm. on like an eagle on 18, you know, just yeah, kind of like taking one. the lead. He got the hole in one there. Um, I had a, a, a good shot um, that I think actually made TV. I was getting a whole bunch of texts. Oh. Like, people think that I can actually play golf because. Wait, did this um, air? Like, so, you know. <laughs> yes, wow. this actually aired. This was on TV. I made the green on 17. This is like this hole that literally the boats are lined up along the water. Beautiful. And it's like, you just, all you want to do is not hit someone and not yeah, hit that's a good. boat. That's so good. it actually went straight. So I was happy about that. Um, it looks so like, you so look like last a real golfer. You, you I, I finished last. fooled everyone. You, you, you moved so, up. Um, I came in fourth place in the girls' division. Look at that. There were four girls in the tournament. Oh. <laughs> do the math. Okay. Yes. I came in 91st place. The only reason why I didn't come in 92nd place was because Don Cheadle withdrew because he got sick. Wow. Oh, so man. let's show highlights like that. Let's show highlights. Um, but it's also, you know, millions of dollars have been raised by American sure. Century, given to the Stowers Institute for Medical Research. So, yep. I mean, the whole cause is a great cause. I got to play with some incredible you players. Got a lot of sun. Um, there I am yeah. with Demarcus Ware, Kyle Rudolph. I mean, two star football players, and I'm just like the short little thing in the middle. Vice President Dan Quayle, Jay Demarcus from Rascal Flats. Like these are the people Look, I'm playing with. It's just so, so much fun. Look we, at that backdrop. There are boats wow. that you know you can rent out on Lake Tahoe. It's just absolutely Absolutely gorgeous. Brian's my caddy. Um, so that's been Larry the Cable Guy, Steve Young. Um, wow. That was my that was cool. my last group. And Del Curry came up to me and he said, "My wife's a huge fan of the Today Show. Can I take a picture?" Yeah, and I'm like, that's cool. "Okay, my He's day's just, just outside. Been made. There you go. Day. Oh, he he came. Yeah, he Steph? came with Steph. Oh, I didn't know yeah, he was here too. He was here. So yeah. I think you should tell everybody you took fourth. Yes, that's it. Fourth in the women's division. There you go. There you go. Boom. Done. That was great. That it was a lot good. of fun. Well, well awesome. happy to have you back. Happy to be back. Yes. All right. So turning now to what a lot of people. Are buzzing about today. A miracle rescue it has people around the world talking. A man and his dog set sail months ago on the trip of a lifetime, but things went terribly wrong and they've been lost at sea, floating adrift in the middle of the ocean until that moment when they were finally spotted and it was all caught on video. Wait, let me get it. Call it a real life castaway. Australian sailor Tim Shattuck looking gaunt and haggard, but alive. Saved after missing for three months at sea, say his rescuers. This video shot by them and obtained by Nine News Australia. I have not had food, enough food for a long time. The 54-year-old and his dog, Bella, found on their catamaran by a Mexican tuna trawler in the Pacific Ocean. The duo surviving by eating raw fish and drinking rainwater. Their ordeal began back in April when Shattuck and Bella departed from the Baja California Peninsula, bound for French Polynesia, a 3,700 mile journey. But two weeks into the voyage, trouble. A heavy storm taking out their boat's communication systems. The duo drifting for months on the open sea, holding on to hope and each other. Then a miracle. Their stranded boat spotted by a helicopter. The duo soon pulled to safety by fishermen. We've been through a, a very difficult ordeal at sea um, and uh, I'm just needing rest and good food uh, because I've been alone at sea a long time. According to his rescuers, Shattuck had fishing and survival equipment on his boat and avoided sunburns and heat stroke by staying under its canopy. Experts say another key to his survival may have been his dog. It provided companionship. It provided a purpose. It gave Tim something that he had to do each day, something to look after. Shattuck, an IT expert from Sydney and reported stage four cancer survivor, is now doing well and showing normal vital signs, according to the cruise rep. I have very good medicine. I'm being looked after very well. His story of survival, a lesson for us all. Even when the odds seem stacked against you, never give up.
What a story. Mm. So Shattuck and his dog Bella reportedly landed in Mexico last night. He and his rescuers are expected to speak together today. So we hope to learn more about those months at sea and that moment mm. that they found him. I was saying earlier this morning, it sounds like a movie, yeah. but it already it is. is. That's right. At Just least. substitute the soccer ball for the dog. <laughs> exactly. The volleyball, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, I think that companionship he had from his dog actually oh, gosh. got him through Absolutely. it. Because, I mean, to be out there alone, starving, oh having goodness. these crazy thoughts. And I, just, I have questions. I mean, I guess he probably knows how to catch fish, but the fact that he's, yeah. I feel like you'll learn real quick. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's impressive. impressive. All, All right. right. Well, now to some headlines that grabbed our attention this morning. First up, Powerball. Bad news, you didn't win. But the good news is the next drawing is now worth $1 billion, Al Q. $1 billion. <laughs> it's the largest Powerball jackpot of all time. The drawing is tomorrow night. And if you just can't wait, tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $640 million. So that's nothing to, to scoff at there. So it is time. It's your turn. It's it your is turn. my turn. I have the money. I just, it's don't downstairs. Have it on you. I didn't have I don't, it. I don't have pockets. We went to the ATM together. And then I got it I'll followed you? No. No. Our, our oh. teammates. <laughs> that sounds creepy. No. Well, this, Your turn. This morning, we've got a different kind of game that's reminding people of the Wordle play, craze. Have you played the New York Times? I tried it for the first time this morning. I like it. Really? Yeah, I think I it's tough. It's the it new is hard. daily game from the New York Times. So this isn't today's puzzle, so we're not spoiling anything. So they give you 16 words in a grid. You have to narrow them down into groups of four by finding a common connection. But you only get... Uh, the opportunity to make four mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are today's words. Uh, I thought it was tough. Yeah, and uh, we all gave it a shot. Mm -hmm. uh, here's mine. Well, there's always like three that it's like, oh yes, this is right. definitely it. And then you're like, what fourth one can I put so in here? I was able to do nice. Wait, I you got it all in a row. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wait, you, yeah. you didn't even get any wrong? I didn't get any wrong. Oh, wow. Show so off. if you yeah. so solve it, you get these color coded, coded blocks that oh, Wordle fans Oh, that's why recognize. mine looked weird. Yeah, mine was kind exactly. Of, so that was your oh, result. Oh, I see. Not as smooth. Yeah. God. Mine was so, definitely not as smooth. Did, did you do it? I did do it. Okay, here's um, Chanel's results. Thanks to my partner, Dave. Where are you, Dave? <laughs> oh. And you needed help? That last one, man. Oh. That last one was tough. Yeah. So there you have it. Oh, Dave. Yeah, there you go. See, there's yeah. Dave. Yeah. Nice. I was like, hey, I need to phone a friend. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> here's a game of connections for our next story. We're going to show you how these four words are connected. Okay. Baseball, rain, tarp, trap. <laughs> that does Take not a sound look. Good. High step and oh, oh boy, there we go. Made it. Oh, he no. got eaten by the tarp. He's, He's under there. They're not Somebody... even stopping. No pause. Oh, Somebody's no. got to get him out of there. Then for yourself. Yeah. He's doing the, the <laughs> crawl. <laughs> so He's under there somewhere. This is like basic yeah. training. Yeah. Here's my thing. I don't know why he didn't go to the left. Like why go? There are people there. No, but they're on the sides. Don't go straight. I think he got lost. No, he, he wasn't lost going straight. He was going. He was, oh, he was yeah, running, it's like, it's like was, a riptide. I feel like yeah. he should go parallel. He, he was going. There he goes. Oh, it's, it's heavier laughing? than I thought. Oh, yeah. The, you know what? Nick is a groundskeeper uh -huh. at, at uh, City Field, and they have to pull those tarps. And I got to tell you, they have to take on a life of their own. Yeah, yeah that's fair. It, so it, remember that, like, parachute thing you oh, do in Oh, the camp? best thing yeah, exactly. in Yeah. This was anyway. at the Cincinnati Reds game. Yeah. Uh, so that was, in fact, by the way, speaking of groundskeepers and my boy Nick, is 21 years old today. <gasps> 21. Today? That's right. In about, in fact, in about 22 minutes. You remember when he was born? He was born 931. Wow. Do you remember so, when your kids were born? Well, like time? Well, she's got so many of them. Yeah. <laughs> one was like 12, 12. One, I forget. Yeah. Um, what's his <laughs> what's first drink going to be? Um, I probably he'll probably get a margarita. Wait, Ooh, so you're, you guys are going? We're going. We're going out to dinner tonight. Wait, all that's, I like out. that. And he's he always orders a virgin, a uh, mojito. I take it. Okay, mojito. He'll, uh, so he'll probably get a real. <gasps> Mojito. That's awesome. exciting. So. I went to Atlantic City for my 21st birthday. Really? Mm -hmm. With my dad, my brother. Like, it was like a whole thing. Wow. That's awesome. yeah. Went to a strip club? I did not. <laughs> okay, <excuse me. laughs> not with I dad. don't know what they did. I did not. Uh, all right, coming up next, a new trend on TikTok. Meet some of the stars who are proving they can be just as creative as the kids, and they have millions of followers to prove it. Then later in Take It Off Today, one of our Start Today community members, incredible health transformation. Wait until you see her now. We'll be right back.
We're back now with a look at some rising stars on TikTok. Now, if you think the app's just for the younger generation, think again. NBC News Now anchor Savannah Sellers is here to explain. All right. Yes, this is so much fun, <laughs> you guys. That is totally right. So if you find yourself scrolling through your social media to pass the time, you might have started to notice older creators popping up more frequently on your feed. Well, experts say brands are aligning themselves with influencers above the age of 50 in order to stand out on our feeds. And for TikTok creators like Lynn Davis, it is all about authentic self-expression. We're creative too. Mm, it smells great. You may know Lynn Davis from her cooking videos. Or recognize one of her signature catchphrases. Let's see if it's busting or not. <gasps> Initially, the woman behind the wildly entertaining TikTok account at Cooking with Linja didn't understand the social media hype. Do you remember when you first heard about TikTok? I thought it was so crazy. I'm going, why are people so drawn to, you know, people dancing and doing silly things? But when COVID hit, she and her son Tim, a videographer, found themselves with some spare time on their hands. They're not just cooking videos. There's something yeah. really special about what you do in your videos. I think a lot of our appeal is Tim's videography and editing, how entertaining he makes and the special effects. I think people are really drawn to that. It's me, the grilling grandma. The page's signature style has attracted more than 16 million followers in the last three years. Lynn, what's it like to be TikTok famous? Once in a while, I'll get recognized at the grocery store or in the airport. What's it like to get to do this with your son? Oh, it is. Uh, it has made us so close. I think of him as a confidant. It's just been you know, a wonderful and marvelous thing. Lynn is not the only creator working with their children. Fashion influencer Jim Tan started her page at California is Too Casual with her daughter Mia's encouragement. She just said, Oh my God, mom, I love the way you dress. My friends always comment about how stylish your mom is. Why don't you just post an outfit of the day? You can do that in your sleep. Just a year and a half later, she has nearly 250,000 followers and more than 4.1 million likes on TikTok. Okay, go off queen. And at age 62, Jim is getting calls for partnerships with brands marketed towards younger audiences. I wore a dress that maybe people might not think is something a 62 year old would gravitate towards, but there's no clothing tags that say this is only for 25 to 35. <laughs> and she's not alone. According to a New York Times report, the past 18 months have seen an increase in the popularity of older TikTok creators. Here's a woman who's more mature, but her attitude is very youthful. And the reality of the situation is that the older demographic has a lot of money to spend and there's very few brands that are talking to us. And people like Jim and Lynn have been able to make a business out of filling that gap. Why do you think your videos caught on in such a huge way? I don't mind doing crazy zany things. And I think a lot of young people like the idea of a grandma who's like running around the backyard in a turkey costume. And you're getting paid for it. Do you remember the first sponsorship you got? Oh, the first thing we got for free was an air fryer. That air fryer is in a lot of our videos still. He has big googly eyes on him. Lynn doesn't always take on brand partnerships, but one thing she constantly agrees to. When someone asks you for a selfie, what do you think? Oh, I always say yes. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Wow. Lynn was so much fun to talk to. So her name on TikTok, it's cooking with Linja. Well, uh -huh. that comes from an inside joke between Lynn and her four kids when they were little. They were obsessed with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and okay. they started oh. calling her Linja. How That's cute is really that? Cute. Also, it looks like this shift into older creatives is here to stay. Jim, the other woman we spoke with in this story, is part of something that's called the Sephora Squad. So you guys, this is sort of like the Amazon Influencer Program and other affiliate opportunities popping up for people of all ages who want to develop their skills as content creators. So there's just wow. more and more opportunities there also. And, and people are able to monetize it oh, too. Yeah. Big time. And I'm thinking about her, Lynn's son and just how creative he is to yeah. come Absolutely. up like, this with is new his ways job too. to but show a recipe. Spend yeah. time with his mom too. Special. No, and that's Pretty what she said. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's yeah. kind of a whole family affair. Many of the kids are involved, so it's really that's great. great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that yeah absolutely. That's, that's fun. Great. Thanks, guys.
We're back with our series, Take It Off Today. And this morning, we're shining a light on one of our Start Today community members who's undergone an amazing transformation. After at her heaviest, Melissa Paluch says she weighed 275 pounds until one year ago when she took control of her health and changed her life. We're going to meet her in just a moment. But first, here's Melissa's story. I'm Melissa Paluch, a happily married mother of three. For most of my adulthood, I struggled with my weight. I avoided seeing a doctor for years because I didn't want to see the number on the scale. Finally, in June 2022, I got my blood work done and the results were not good. I was diagnosed with diabetes, high blood pressure, severe sleep apnea, and high cholesterol. At 43 years old, I was on more medication than my 83-year-old father. I woke up on July 1st last year and knew I had to make a change. So I switched up my diet and started counting calories. Reading posts on the Start Today Facebook page inspired me to exercise, and I thought, if others can do it, I can too. I started walking with my 18-year-old son, and in eight weeks, I was able to walk a mile without getting winded. Now, one year later, I'm happy to announce I've lost 100 pounds, and I feel incredible. All right, so here's a photo of Melissa on July 1st of last year, and here is Melissa now. Come on out. All right, Melissa. Yay, Melissa. Good morning. Congratulations. Oh, you, you look incredible. Thank you. How are you? Hi, welcome, you. welcome. Thank you. Hugs from afar. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there you go. All Congratulations. Right. You. Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's one thing to set a goal for yourself, yeah. but it's another to all of a sudden notice, hey, I think I'm going to reach this goal. Yes. How are you feeling? I feel amazing. I still sometimes can't even believe that I did it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I can't believe I did this, but I'm like with, I had the motivation, I had the perseverance, I was doing it. And I did it. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Well, we heard you. Look at this picture. Isn't wow. this great? When you see that, what do you think? Oh, I can't even believe it. <laughs> I'm like, I still look to this day. Sometimes I still like look and I'm like, that's me. It's like, I can't even believe right. I did that. Like, you. I learned something from you because oh, I've never heard of an NSV. It means non-scale yes. victories. You celebrate those. Can you share some examples of what, of what that really means? Well, I can cross my legs again. Ah. Wow. <laughs> that's one. Um, I can paint my toes again, mm -hmm. which seems so silly, mm -hmm. but my favorite one is that I'm actually exploring colors. As you can see in the picture, I'm wearing colors. Right. Or before I was always oh, wearing like shades of gray, oh, wow. black, navy blue. How special and now is I'm that? Like, nope, now my, my closet is colorful now. <laughs> and I love this green top you have. Yeah, yeah. another new one. <laughs> well, on this, on this journey, Melissa, I gotta think, everybody who's been on this kind of journey, you, there's a certain point where you, you hit that plateau. Yes. And it can be very frustrating. No matter what you do, you just can't seem to break through. What, what's your advice? How, did you, how do you break those, 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 those moments? Uh, well, I hit two of them so far. And I did get discouraged at first, but then I told myself, I'm like, you know what? You didn't come this far to go backwards again. So the first time I did it, I started drinking some more water. Mm -hmm. I figured, let me try that. That worked. It worked? It worked. As soon as I mm. added some more water to it, I started actually like picking up again just like that. Oh, I was wow. amazed, so that was really good. So I was excited. But in the past, that used to, that would deter me. Like as soon as mm -hmm. I hit a plateau, I'd be like, oh, well, Oh, well. yeah, not working. Right. It's not working anymore. I guess I'm supposed to be this way forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I would stop. Yeah. And I'm like, nope, not anymore. I'm going. like, now I'm like, I have to keep going. I have, if I want to be here, I have to. Yeah. So I'm like, I have no choice. We mentioned the colors in your wardrobe, which I think could be indicative of your mental health through this oh, whole yes. journey. How would you say you're feeling today compared to a year ago? So much happier. Hmm. I was actually saying that my husband told me the other day I have more pep. Hmm. And oh, I did man. before, and I was like, yep, I actually wake up in the morning, and I'm happy to get up in the morning. I'm yeah. not laying in bed because I don't want to get out of bed, mm -hmm. which is huge because I would lay there some days like nope don't even want to get up I'm like no. I just want to stay here now I'm like I want to do things I look forward to getting up and I look forward to walking mm -hmm. and like getting outside and doing things so it's great it's huge you know Al talked about this start today community so long ago right and it's been so rewarding to step back and watch all of you seems like you guys have really bonded in cities all over the country I've made a ton of friends in that mm. group I've never met them but we've become social media friends oh. mm -hmm. and I'm like even today they were all messaging me like good luck oh. we're so happy for you you inspire us and I'm like I feel like they're I honestly most of them feel like they're family to me mm -hmm. now That's like amazing. we've gotten very close so I'm like hopefully one day I can meet them but yeah. you know <laughs> so maybe there's somebody sitting at home right now Melissa who who's you know had that problem and trying to get up and get out and get take those first steps because mm -hmm. you were there yeah what what would you say to that person watching right now 
to just get up and do it. I was walking mm -hmm. a half a mile for like two months, but you mm -hmm. know what? It was a half a mile more than what I was doing. Mm -hmm. That's all you can do. Do it. it. Doesn't matter. Any little bit of movement is important. So as long as you get up and move, yeah, it's better than nothing at all, and it's more than what you were doing the day before that and the day before that. Is mm -hmm. the way I looked at it. And eventually, it's like you're going to get to whatever your goals are. It may take a while, but you'll get there. Yeah. How's it been for your family watching this for you? Good. Very good. They're very mm -hmm. excited. Very, very excited. They're constantly telling me, like, you're a whole new person. We can't believe it. We're so happy for it's you. Incredible. Like, just the health changes alone have been huge. Because yeah. so. you can't be there for your family unless you're there for That's yourself. exactly right. what I told myself. I'm like, I have three kids. Like, if I want to see them get married and maybe have kids one day, I'm like, I have to do something yeah, because it's not getting you, any better. You are such an inspiration. And thank so many you. people sitting at home now can look at you and it's like, okay, I can walk a half a mile today. Yes, yep. that, so thank that's you. all you need to do just yep. to get started. Yeah, not even thank, that. Just yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you so much thank for sharing you. your story. And if you want to learn more about Melissa's story, just head to today.com. And of course, you can become a member of our Start Today community as well. Just scan that QR code to sign up for our newsletter. It's nice to meet you. It was nice to <laughs> meet There's all so many of you. Too. I know we cheer for you guys on the screen. We now do. It's like, oh. awesome. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. Right. thank you. This was so fun. Oh, great great having you, Melissa. now with our series cool for the summer and this morning we are talking beauty products that will literally <laughs> keep you cool all summer long so here to tell us more is Samantha Berry glamorous editor in chief very important woman. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. You gotta keep cool in the city. Or, yes. You know Al you know the weather has been pretty hot. A lot it's a little close out there. It's, it is. <laughs> yeah so you Go ahead. This is pretty cool because it's a fan, and I noticed it has a port there in the back, a USB port. Okay, so we asked the Glamour staff, the first thing we asked them for this segment, what is the thing that keeps it cool? About four of them came straight in and said this fan. Really? Like, really? It's, they're obsessed with it. It's $14, I think, around okay. on Amazon. It is got 24 hour, 21 hours of charge, so you can take it for oh. the beach, you can take Ooh. it out all day. It's just really cooling, and it's quite that cute. Got two speeds. No, it's got, yeah, yeah, do you need the hot speed, nice. right? Ooh, okay. Yeah, and also it's just oh, really, really easy work. to put in your bag. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. back in the day they just didn't have the oomph. Yeah, but that this actually really works. Power to it. Yeah, you've got right. the Beyonce here. I feel like Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thanks right. for bringing them in our skin tones. Right. <laughs> uh, what about this right, ice roller? Next? Here, I'll turn it off. No worries. Okay, so really this nice. is honestly the best seven dollars I've ever spent in my okay. life. Okay. Wow. And I, I totally stand by it. I've been telling all my friends about this every, um, every day. It's the first thing that I use every morning before my skincare. Okay. You just fill this up, seven dollars on. Amazon. With water. With water. You put it in the freezer yeah. and then you ice your face every morning. And ice so your you're, face. Yeah, so you're icing your face right. and it's, what it does is it de -puffs, it minimizes your pores. Mm -hmm. It's just the most, especially in the hot summer, it's the most oh. like therapeutic. Like under your eyes? Yeah. Under your eyes. Listen, the whole if, you've face. Had a, if you've had a big night out, you right. can yeah, yeah, that's great. great. But every just day fill I fill it up with that. water again, Amazing. you'll never run out. Super yeah. cooling. <laughs> okay. okay, we know sunscreen is important, mm -hmm. right? Um, and this is great for people that kind of forget sunscreen at the start That's because me. you can mist it on mm -hmm. after you've done your really? makeup. Oh. Um, it's N39. And it's SPF just 39. Great. I've okay, never heard of 39 before. It's also a good before. refresher during the day, right? So you mm. put your sunscreen on. Every, obviously, over you your totally, makeup you can do it? Oh, you can do it, it over nice. your makeup. You just mist it up. Mm. And it's a good refresher. Wait. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> go on. Go. You got it on. Nice. That is, and it By smells the way, really did nice you know, too. We, 
What? Dylan's gotten so much sun. Reach down again. <laughs> Why are we? You can't so tell which is <laughs> which. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> so I'm like, wow. Dang, Dylan. <laughs> it's just. It was just the sun. My Kansas came out. Dang, Dylan. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> What's this, what's this next yeah. thing you got here? Okay, we, okay, we're staying on the sunscreen vibe because we have to protect ourselves during the sun, but I would just say uh, over and over again, we might be talking about sunscreen during the summer. You should be wearing sunscreen every You're single right. day. You're right. Every single day. I was wearing life. sunscreen, by the every way. Yes. Every day. I just happened to be in Goop, the sun. Super Goop is, it's, it's a, it's, you know, People a big love it. player in yes. the sunscreen market, yeah. right? Yeah. And this one has this kind of whipped, um, Ooh. yeah, it's beautiful, right? Wow, it's great. That. It's got a lot of antioxidants. Oh, that? no, that's not bad. It's so, like crazy foam. Rub it on yeah. your head. Sometimes, you know, um, sunscreen can feel like a chore. This feels yeah. like you're really looking at it. This is really easy. Well, it's not as nice. creamy and goopy. Beautiful. It's just exactly. like, okay. yeah. Ooh, what Even is though this? it's called super goop. Okay. <laughs> so this is one of the areas of your body that can get really badly sunburned. And if you ever got sunburned there, you will never forget it, are your lips. Mm -hmm. So you got to really protect your lips. And this is um, a, a brand K, um, skin by Winnie Harlow, that amazing oh. model. This is her brand. And it's Is it great. tinted? Yeah, it's tinted. Ooh, that's and nice. It's some of them taste like um, brown sugar and vanilla, mm -hmm. and it's got an SPF, which is really important. Whatever you're putting on Dylan's your lips. Dylan's about to use that. You kind of knew it. You can well, it. use it. Exactly. I get it, to keep it. That looks like it's clear. Yeah. Some well, I, have, yeah. I think I have to. Oh, I was supposed to shake. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And then what about, great great idea. what about your scalp? Okay, so we talk about sunscreen. We talk about looking after your oh, skin and your face. Mm -hmm. Your scalp ages six times faster than your face. Oh, wow. Really? That means my, so so my scalp is 180 years old. <laughs> And your scalp, it needs, to, people really neglect their scalp. Actinacre are the scalp specialists, right? Oh. They've done so much amazing um, uh, care in the scalp. And this one is a great, it's a cooling serum, right? How does it work? And you can use it, you just put it on your scalp after a day, you know, before you wash. And what it does is it can cool down after a day on the beach or this, um, you know, running around the city. It's mm -hmm. just so good for your scalp. That's but it cool. also promotes hair growth. Wow. Um, oh. so, yeah, Here, try it out. I better Long take out. two. <laughs> He'll be wearing a ponytail tomorrow. There you go. All right. These are really great. I've, I've been, been dreaming that. about a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> For more on these products, head to today.com slash shop. Uh, coming up, deep thoughts on deep cleaning. We're going to answer how often we should be changing our bedding, cleaning our showers. And have you ever cleaned your luggage? No. Then later in Today Food, we're going to grill up a delicious meal with a recipe from barbecue royalty. Mm. That's right. The third hour of today will be right back. I'm so excited. Yum. So cool. Okay. What do you This morning, we are kicking off an eye-opening series. Have you ever wondered how often you, we need to be washing our dishwasher, or do you even need a washer? How about the shower? What about changing your sheets? Well, we've got <laughs> Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock here to come clean with all the answers. So, Ms. A, here we go. Uh, we're all really kind of fat. We do not have the answers. Good. So, I'm so debate. happy. All right, let's start with the first uh, one, you guys. How often to shower how often, per week? Yes. How many mm. times do you think you should shower per week, according to dermatologists? I bet they're going to say C. 
five C. times. I'm going to say every day, even though I know it's Yeah, I don't C. care what they say. I'm going to say A. <laughs> well, you guys are all wrong. The answer oh. is actually B, two to three uh, times per what? week. There are seven days in the yes, week. Yes, there are seven days in the week. Now, is that for kids or adults? Again, like adults smell. So the consensus is two to three times per week, but it does depend on the person. I'm looking at Al's <laughs> face like, what is this? It depends on the person, your lifestyle, your skin type, your lifestyle, age, your activity level as well. So if you're someone who has a, a laborious job, so you're a teacher or maybe you work in healthcare, you probably are showering more often than the normal person. Mm -hmm. Again, if you work out, you're also showering more often. At the end of the day, it's all personal preference, and I think the reason why... Not if you come in contact with other people. <laughs> no, but I actually believe it. Like, I think for our, for the sake of our skin, if we're talking to dermatologists, right. yes. like, They're take the out the other factors exactly. if you're worried about your skin health. Exactly. So what they say is you have this natural bacteria that lives all over your skin. It's part of your, part of your microbiome, right? So you don't want to compromise that because it does help sort of protect you. And then there's other people who have skin issues, dry skin, mm -hmm. eczema, eczema, rosacea, all these factors come into play. And when you're you know, scrubbing and using soap and harsh detergents. I can't stop looking at Al. Yeah, it just, could get a little shower, bit dicey. Don't like, you two times a day? It's but ridiculous. It, you guys, I shower twice a day. That's yeah. too much. At the end of the day, okay. it's question. all personal preference. Okay. And you guys, there's this trend called the everything shower. Have you guys heard about this? No. Okay, it's taking over TikTok and it's trending like crazy. It's a ritual where you're taking your shower into a spa-like experience. So you're doing everything in the shower. You're washing your hair. Oh, I don't You're like exfoliating that. from head to toe. You're, you're shaving. I did a eucalyptus spray this you could, morning. You could get fancy with it. It. So this is kind of like, you know, if you're doing an everything shower, mm -hmm. you can afford to do it two to three times shower. a week. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, um, since we're also not clean, I feel like this changes my answer to the next question. How often should we be changing our bedding? What do you guys think this is? Well, when, this is mean? replacing the actual oh. bedding that you own, not oh, like changing the sheets. Your sheets. Like the mattress? Oh. Bedding, sheets, pillowcases. Oh, oh I don't change them. Uh, I just want like I go with B. B every year? A. A, well, every your six sheets? months? You Wait, I need to change sheets like I still have my grandmother's sheets. Okay. Dylan, it's time to replace them because you oh, guys are replace. all wrong. Yes, you should be replacing them every 18 to 24 oh, months. Oh, yeah, no. Okay. I have because not sheets. only are those fibers breaking down, but think about, and I know, Al, you like to, to bring this up too, the sweat. The, you your, can't wash that out. It. You wash them, right? But yeah. you, you should wash them every two weeks, but you should also think about replacing them Ooh. every 18 to 24 I'm months. sorry, my grandmother's sheets are like the best sheets Aren't I they own. soft They're, and wonderful? They hold I together. Like, I have you newer know, sheets that don't hold you together can, as well. You can hang on to them, Sentimental. but it is recommended. Yes. One thing that yeah. um, some experts we spoke to brought up is like you do have some people sleep with their pets in the yeah. bed, which yeah. is totally yeah. fine. Yeah. All right. But, then, you know, you should replace them as well. All right, next one. Ooh. The dishwasher. I've okay. never cleaned my dishwasher. Yeah, isn't it clean? It's yeah. a wash. <laughs> I go with A. Every month. Every month. Mr. Roker, you are correct. What? You should be you should be cleaning it every month. And you think about your dishwasher, right? It its job is to is to clean. It's to clean. So you shouldn't have to clean it. But then think about all the stuff you're putting in there. It builds up all the food, the debris, the grime, well, the your soap. Your dishwasher looks like yeah, that. It's so gross. So an easy way to do it every month, you could fill up in a dishwasher safe uh, tub uh, some white vinegar, put it on the top rack. That was all white vinegar. Run a hot mm -hmm. cycle. Okay. Yep. And then afterwards, you could do the same thing with a shorter hot cycle with some baking soda towards the bottom. Okay. You should be doing this not just to clean up all that buildup that's in there, mm -hmm. but also you want you don't want to affect. Um, the efficacy of your dishwasher. Right. It's an appliance ah. that you spend a lot of money on True. and you want it to run well, yeah, so we'll okay. you got to okay. maintain it. Okay, last one. Uh, luggage, travel bags. Once a year after each use. Uh, never. See, I almost do it after each use because I'm uh, I've been, we yeah, had an me, issue. You must we, have grown kids. No, 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 <laughs> I don't have time no, for any We had an stuff. issue with like uh, some bugs oh. in our luggage and then since then. Really? I would have just tossed it. You Sorry. guys, Mr. Roker is correct. It should be after each use. The correct answer is Who B. Who cleans their suitcase? <laughs> so think about the suitcases. Think about how much money you spend on them and how long you've had them. And a lot of people out there are probably thinking, I've never cleaned my how luggage clean or my it? suitcase. You just put it There's in the different... dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you can use a general disinfecting wipe. Look at right. Get the I'm wheels, not doing that. get the handles. It's, it's an easy wipe down. That's like cleaning. I think I have chewing gum in the wheels of my <laughs> I mean, Think <laughs> about suitcases. it. You're, you're, like you got, we all have these wheel luggage. You're wheeling it through everything on the the street on it's the like sidewalk, you're bringing the it in the house. Your shoes. You're bringing it in right. the house, and then if you're like some people, like my husband, who like to plop it on the bed yeah. to sure, pack and unpack. Bed. Oh my yeah. gosh, it makes oh, me cringe. That's Please beige. wipe it down. If you have canvas totes, yeah. um, you can wash okay. them in the washer, but maybe throw them a little bit longer in between. Very interesting. Adriana, thank yeah. you so wow, much. Thank you. Stuff. To Hope read up on something. these hot takes and more, uh, head to today.com slash how often.
This morning on Today Food, we are taking our summer barbecues to the next level with two easy dishes that will impress any cookout crowd. And we've brought in barbecue royalty to help us here. Pitmaster Ryan Mitchell, he co-wrote this new cookbook, Ed Mitchell's Barbecue, with his dad, Ed Mitchell, one of the most famous pitmasters in the South. And Ryan is going to show us what to do. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Good, good morning. Good so, morning. I mean, this cookbook and you and your dad, you're known for like whole hog barbecue. Yes. This can be intimidating. So how do we it get is. these flavors at home? Just a little bit. This is one of our recipes that my grandmother used to make to kind of give us some chopped barbecue, mm. uh, you know, on the inside of the house when she couldn't get the guys to go mm -hmm. outside and, and grab the whole <laughs> hogs, right? So we made it really easy for people who don't have smoker. Mm -hmm. uh, we start with our spice blend mm -hmm. here. We got a little, uh, we got smoked paprika here, mm -hmm. salt, pepper, and the key to this is uh, is the sage. She this ah. is her this is her secret ingredient oh. that she would put in here. Mm -hmm. All right. What was the other thing? A little brown sugar. Uh, like little brown, brown sugar. A okay. little brown sugar. Whisk it together there. Okay. okay. So this is going to be your rub? This is going to be our rub. This is going to be the base of our spice rub. And what, what, shoulder, what yeah. kind of... This is our bone-in pork shoulder here, right? Okay. So one of the most important things we do here is we score the shoulder, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when you score the shoulder, it kind of gives the fat a chance to render up to the top, mm -hmm. and then that way when you put it back in the oven, um, you don't have to, you know, have the broiler so high for the skin to oh, parch, right? okay. So, Fat renders to the top. So we just got cut right through. Curve right through here. As That's such. Like the real deal. As such. And where do you find a piece of meat like this? Yes. Uh, we start at our local farmers market. Uh, okay. We try to we try to su support our small farmers there, but um, you can find a great cut uh, of a bone-in pork shoulder uh, there, and you know between uh, ask your Whole butcher. Foods, no, yeah. Ask your okay. butcher there. Okay. So now the rub. Once now you've the done rub. That, let's Once say you get the magic there, of TV. You've done that. The magic of TV here. We get our rubs going. Okay. And just rub it all over. And how long will you let that stay on? This one's going to stay on uh, in the oven about four and a half to five hours. So okay. this is okay. a at larger pieces of meat uh, at 350. Okay. Okay. Then one of the most important parts here is we're going to take our base here and pour it down at the bottom of the broth. Apple cider vinegar? This is our broth here, right? Oh. Okay. So as it starts to cook, you know, the fat doesn't burn at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Cover, put it back in the oven. Uh, and here we go here. Now it's time to now what do you do pull and part. So <laughs> two things. You can do pull pork or you uh -huh. can do chop, pull, chop sandwiches. So we start shredding here. As you can see, the road maps mm. for yeah. your uh, scoring is already right. done. Shred. Oh, and it just falls right Shred apart. Oh, falls wow. Right apart. Oh, wow. Right apart, right oh. apart. Oh, that looks good. And then you like to mix in some apple cider vinegar. At the right? end okay. of it. Apple cider vinegar is the only way to mm. do Eastern Carolina barbecue. All mm. right, so we start with apple cider vinegar and crushed red pepper. Mm. Oh my gosh, so, it's really so good. good. Wow. Pour that what does that in. do? The apple cider vinegar just gives it a, a different taste. It's also used as a preservative now for, uh, for the, the meat. And kind of cuts right. the fat. Cuts the fat good. down, helps the meat break down okay. a lot easier too. All right. So now yeah. you're going to do a little mac and cheese. All a little right. mac and cheese mm. here. This, oh, is, wow. uh, this is a family favorite here. I'm trying. Oh, wait till you try that. <laughs> that is so I can't bad. wait. Oh, yeah. Macaroni yeah. and cheese here has already been sitting here. Our roux, you know, the roux is going to give it, uh, that's, the, that's the base of how to get the... Uh, the, the, the base of the sure. macaroni mm -hmm. cheese. So what goes it was on. Sorry, I turned it off because it was burning. Yes, that's fine. Right. We got a little heavy cream here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, we got our milk. Mm -hmm. You just dump that right in. Dump that right okay. in there. We got a little garlic powder and a little onion oh, powder. Oh, mm -hmm. my goodness. <laughs> garlic powder <laughs> I here. I guess you tried it. I'm cheating. I just tried it. Okay. Mm. Okay. Now we move over to getting the base of our sauces, okay. right? So the secret... Uh, you know, cheese here is a smoked gouda. That gives it a oh, totally different it. flavor. All right. And also helps when you add it back onto the smoker and what are or the, the other oven. Two kind of cheeses you use? Uh, we have Kobe Jack and uh -huh. cheddar here. Okay. Extra sharp cheddar. And then okay. you've, got, you've got your already cooked cheese sauce is already mm -hmm. made. So that's yep. what you just made. That's what we just made noodles. here. And oh, we have man. one beaten egg. Oh, okay. All right. Does that kind of hold it all together? That holds it all together and gives it a chance to, to really thicken as okay. you put it back in the oven. You put that in your pan, bake it up, top it up with a little cheese. Oh, my God. Mm. And, this is, the... I'm, and by the way, I just want to mention, your dad is right here. Yeah, Ed. he is. Ed, how are you, sir? Good to see you. Mm. <laughs> Did he do good? Pr proud, proud dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very proud. The official right. passing of the torch. Oh, yeah. I, I, love we love I can't it. wait to try this. <laughs> Ryan, is thank you so phenomenal. much. Thank you. That pork is, un mm. I can just oh. eat it right off of that. Mm. Very good. This Very is good. great. Thank you so much. All right, for these recipes, head to today.com slash food. The cookbook, Ed Mitchell's Barbecue, is out right now. And we'll Delicious. be right back. Delicious. Thank you. Your boy did you proud, sir. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you can taste it.
I know. We were so Jones is still eating. Uh, tomorrow on the third hour of today, summer style file, how to wear prints for women and for men. You got what you need? We were talking. You're good? Sorry. Okay. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, the 78-year-old couple whose airport marriage proposal went viral. And by talking, she means eating. No. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>something fun that we're shooting that we're going to reveal a little bit later. I love a little surprise, don't you? Me too. Uh-huh. And you know what I kind of feel like? Huh. Remember when Justin and Brittany wore those jean suits in the oh, early yes. 2000s? Yes, I love those suits. I think this is Brittany's. <laughs> no, it is not. I feel like I borrowed Brittany's <laughs> and I feel good By about it. By the way, it. I loved when they were wearing those twinning, those yes. denim. I can't believe that you remembered that. Well, because who forgot it? was it? iconic. Exactly. Um, how are you? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. I can barely breathe. <laughs> <laughs> to be told, I just have to be honest. I'm wearing a corset. I haven't worn a corset since my wedding day. And well, you usually don't care about any of that stuff, but this is just how this happens. I to love fit. this outfit, but I, I will just say my lungs are. If I if I pass out, it's like Bridgerton when they undip. Pull. If I pass out, undip. I will. And we revive will, we'll me. Take care of you. Don't <laughs> revive me. There was some sad Hollywood news. I too. know. Overnight, couple, couple two celebrity breakups. couples mm -hmm. that we loved mm -hmm. um, are calling it quits. Yeah. Uh, Sophia Vergara and Joe Manganiello, they've split. They were together for seven years, and um, they decided, um, they put out a statement that yeah. basically said, we have respectfully decided to separate, mm -hmm. and we would be, you know, we'd be grateful for your pri for privacy mm -hmm. kind of thing. Exactly. And then, um, you know, seven years. They, I mean, there's a re the seven year itch is something that people talk about because yeah. it's obviously a thing. It I'm is. I'm sure science has studied that to figure out what it is about seven years. I'm, that would be interesting, right? Yeah. To know what it is. It's like, I think it's the honeymoon phase is over. Yeah. And now you're getting into Do you into remember the... your seven-year anniversary? Well, I really wanted to do a seven-year itch party. <laughs> you're so crazy. Um, where everybody wore their wedding dresses. Oh, that would have been fun. Yeah, I know. And then, But, but then... then my mom brought my wedding dress oh. to me. <laughs> and she was like, I don't think this is going to fit. And I was like, no, I, sure. You know, I have like reverse body dysmorphia. <laughs> and it didn't fit. But the, so, but you, how were you feeling about Henry during that time? Do you remember? I, I don't think it was any, anything. anything different than 50. 15 years, but I do mm -hmm. think, you know, it's kind of, it's, you've been in it for a long but time. I still remember this interview that st sticks, that stays with me, and it reminds you of something, but when you first meet someone, you're in that great bliss, and you feel like you know your partner. You know how you, sometimes you say, I know everything about yeah. you, I know everything about you. This, this pastor said, uh, every, he said every five years, I think it is, reintroduce yourself to your spouse. And the reason is because in that time, you're not who you were five years ago. Yeah. You used to like to eat at Houston's or Olive Garden. I mean, I still like Houston. Me so, too. I love know, Houston's. Houston's. You know what I love? Spinach artichoke dip? No, I do the salad with the peanut dressing. Ooh. That No, no. And their barbecue ribs, like you're licking Ooh. your... But, Ooh. however, <laughs> digress. <laughs> But what if you don't like that anymore? And But you always like mashed potatoes yeah. this way. It's like really because now I'm different. I think we all evolve and grow. And if one person's evolving and growing and the other person isn't, yes. then the other person says, well, where's the girl I, ma I met? I know. And you're like, the girl has grown. Yes. The girl's seven years older. The girl is, you know, different. It's all about evolving together. Mm -hmm. And I do. I'm, I always feel 
really lucky because you kind of, I mean, I was so young mm -hmm. and I didn't, I took a bet, you know? I took a bet yeah. on Henry. I yeah. thought like, he's solid, yes. he's all of these things. Right. And, and Maria Shriver says this and mm. it's true. Some of those things that you fall in love with become the things that sometimes irritate you. Annoy you, you yeah. Annoy yeah. you. So he's all, you know, constant. But, yeah. but I knew he would be, he's a good person. Yes. But it's yes. a bet, you know, marriage is like, you, you see something in somebody, but what I feel so yeah. blessed about and thankful for is that he is willing to evolve. Well, you guys both are yeah. on this trip yeah. and you're on it together. I think it's, if one person is like, oh, did you hear about this? Or I'm learning this, or I'm curious about that. And the other person says, but we only watch football yeah. every Friday night, or we yes. only do it this way. It's hard for that to keep yes. um, going. Well, it also becomes not interesting. Like he's willing to do these kind of cool, fun things yes. together that I, I, don't, I don't even know that I would have imagined him being mm. interested in when he was 27 years old, 30 yeah. years old. And yeah. now here we are. Yeah, we don't know anything about Sofia Vergara no. and Joe Manganiello. We're just talking about <laughs> breakups talking. In, in general. Yeah. We and, don't know. And, and, and we also, love them both, by the way. They're both they're both frequent guests yes, on our show and, and they're so delightful. Awesome, both awesome. Um, Ariana Grande and, and her husband, Dalton Gomez, have also reportedly ended their marriage of two years. Yeah, they were together for f a total of four years. Yeah. But sometimes you realize that the person is not the yeah. one. And they a little... do look like brother and sister, however. <laughs> Identical. They look like twins. They look like they could be twins. Identical I think, twins. yes, they do. <laughs> By the way, we're about to have a couple on the show. Is it today? Yes. <gasps> this is so amazing. So you never know when love is going to find you mm -hmm. and when it's gonna hit. And also to realize that after relationships and breakups and things, are you still open? Yeah. We're about to meet a, a couple who are both in their, set, in late, their late, 70s. late 70s who found the real love, not companionship and we'll take more than that. Mm -hmm. Like it's a whole love story and it plays out. Even to watch them mm. at all together, which we've gotten to do a little bit this morning, uh -huh. you will see. It's amazing. It's gonna, but you will cry. Yeah. Um, okay, Kelly Rowland and Beyonce, they've also been in a friendship type mm -hmm. of love for a long mm -hmm. time, friends for decades and decades. And Kelly was recently asked, what was the biggest mistake that she's ever made in an interview? Here's what she said. Oh my God, when I made a mistake and told the sex of beast baby, like when she was pregnant with Blue. That was the worst <laughs> moment ever. The worst moment ever. So I think what's funny, because she loves Beyonce, yes. they're like sisters. Yes. And I'm sure they said, keep it under wraps, keep it under wraps. And that's when you blurt something out, because sometimes you're just so excited. How many times have There's you done no it? Malice. I've done it a million really? times. Really? Not here. Not a here. lot. One time, what? remember one time when, um, I can't remember why I did this, but my grandma lost a toe. <laughs> My grandmother, for some reason, was missing a toe. And I don't know why I felt like that was my business to share it, and I'm resharing it now. <laughs> but I was so scared. She to wasn't that mad. She, she wasn't, wasn't that mad. But she was sort of like, what why did you, you feel like you had to, like, it's just right. such a random. <laughs> why did you? I don't remember. We're it wasn't to... even like a secret to keep. It was just it's like a, a fact. Yeah, a fact, but also <laughs> one that she probably didn't want shared. I would think not. I mean, I don't know. Even though I, <laughs> it's common, I think, for older people to lose a toe here or there, I guess. <laughs> <Is it>? <laughs> <laughs> Are older people losing toes? I think it uh, what, what do you mean? Happen. How? I believe it happens, but because the point is, afterwards, I was like, why did I do, <laughs> do that? that? Do you feel terribly guilty? Uh, yeah. Did you call her, or did you wonder if she saw it and waited? I sort of waited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Waited Sometimes it you think it'll go because, away. Because, you know, people watch our show, and but then not it's central everyone. And Central Time is an hour of more yeah. of agony. Yes, and also sometimes our social media puts out the one The clip one thing you that you wish to to, that it would be buried. Um, but do you remember her words to you? Just why did she you? She was just like, what was well, why, was it, why would you choose to share this information? Uh, oh. And I didn't, didn't have, have an, an answer. answer. Cause sometimes no. things pop but out. But that, okay, but that's one thing. It's another thing when someone says, this is top secret. Do not reveal it under any circumstances because if you do, the whole surprise may not happen. So this happened with <laughs> Harry Styles was thinking about coming on the show. <laughs> Unclear if he was gonna do it. Maybe, maybe not.
So the booking process takes months and months of dealings with agents and all, like it's a whole process. They don't just pop up on the concert, on the concert stage. So then there were rumblings. Remember in the, the talks were in its infancy. No, I think it was in no, its it middle. Was, it was early. And then Jenna, you I'm were so excited, excited. that there to... was a possibility that maybe he might come. I know, and then I did this. Stop. I love all those people, but do you know that Harry Styles is playing on our plaza this summer? Really? Oh, well, that might be a secret. Oops, I, I think let, that might let it be out. A oh, great. Glad. Well, Glad. Well, maybe, could be. I don't know. But the point is, if he is, that's where I'll be watching him, okay? <laughs> now, it seems like if you're watching at home, like, oh, well, okay. but that had reverberations <laughs> all the way to Hollywood and England. I felt he so was. bad I had to text all the bookers. And just, they that's were like. Their, that's their, their job. It's very delicate, these kinds of discussions. I know, don't however, tell me anything. However, it was all done. You see, here's what you do. You have a real open heart. What you say, you never say anything. Whenever you hurt someone's feelings, you're like, uh, did I? Did yeah, you think I didn't mean, you didn't mean to. to. You didn't mean to. She didn't mean to. And she I didn't, didn't mean, mean to, to about the toe either. The toe. I feel bad why, did you, why did we repeat the toe? Dead toe. I don't know. Dead toe? Well, it died and it got okay. removed. Okay, okay, okay. 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 <laughs> All right, should we move on? Coming yeah. up next, you and your work friend are going for the same promotion. Here's the question. Should you step aside Ooh. if she asks you to? What? <gasps> okay, find out if that violates girl code right after this. Who does that? Is that time when we help our female viewers out with their friendship dilemmas in a segment we like to call Girl Code. Okay, first one. My friend and I are trying for the same promotion at work. We both want it equally. She's had a tough year and asked me to give her this one. Ooh. Do I have to? No. Sorry, you, you don't. You can't. You can and you don't. And by the way, do you know what's breaking girl code? Asking. asking your friend to yeah. step aside. Yes. That's breaking it because you, you're not owed something because we've all had the worst years ever. Yes. But it doesn't mean that this, can you give me a break and give me this one? Well, especially I think in career stuff, yeah. you know, it's like that's the point. You can go, both go out for it and whoever's the best person for the job, you hope whoever's Just choosing. It. Right. Will choose, yeah. you know, but yeah, asking somebody puts them in a really tough position. Yeah, I think that that's I think that's difficult, and I also think it's very friendship defining because once you do that, your yes. friendship is altered forever. Yes. Like that, no matter what happens from that point on. But I think you should just say to her, "Listen, I am so sorry you've had a tough year, yeah. but but I w want this promotion too." You know, I think if you don't want the best for your friend, yeah, regardless of what it is. Regardless of, regardless of it's something even you want. If you don't want the best for them, whether it's them getting married or yeah. having a baby or yes. getting the promote, whatever the thing is, I think you have to like take a beat and re-examine it. The friendship. Don't you think? Yeah. I do. Okay. okay, here's the next one. My best friend is a maid of honor at a wedding. I'm a bridesmaid. She asked to read me her speech. Oh, jeez. It was not great. <laughs> Should I be honest? <laughs> you, I, here's, here's what I think because I, I read a lot of people's speeches, I think you can say, hey, do you want me to like, help you with this out loud? Do you want me to help you with what it she over said the I thought telephone? it was good. Well, I thought just, you liked okay, it. Okay, I'll be the one girl. Okay, okay. Hey, um, okay, this is- Hi, did you like it? I, I so did. Do you wanna, oh my God. Do you wanna practice it with me over the phone? Oh, okay. 
Okay. All right. Let's do it. So start okay. off. Okay. Why? Well, okay. Let me tell you. So you, to my very dearest friend, thank you for picking me to be your bridesmaid. You're a lovely couple and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So are you trying? Is that supposed to be funny right there? Because if it is. Oh. Girl code. Girl code <laughs> violation. By the way, it let me, let me explain something to you. Are. Let me explain something to you. If she's the bridesmaid. She's the maid of honor. She, I mean, if she's the maid of honor, yeah. she's the bestie to the bride. I know, but maybe you're a better speech writer. But it's not about the speech writing Sometimes part. it is, because we all know those bridesmaid toasts that are not good, right? <laughs> maybe you can just, if she had her read it, she wants your opinion, right? Don't ask for the opinion if you don't I want think, the truth. No, of course, sometimes you say, do you like it? Sometimes you want to, yeah, I like it. Well, yeah. I think I think that if you ask her to read it and just say, now, what do you think now that you've heard it out yeah. loud? Let her come to the conclusion. Okay. If you're like, did you, was that supposed to be funny? Well, that sounds Once you rude. say that, it's And I over. didn't mean it that way, but I did just help my best friend write her eulogy for her mom's oh, funeral. Gosh. And she asked me well, that, to yeah. edit it because she wanted no, the truth. That. I understand So maybe that. she wants that too, you oh, know? God. Now we're comparing. I okay. Know. All right, last one. Susie's really into my friend Paul and keeps asking me to fix her up. Are we talking real the people here? Is Susie and Paul. Paul is not attracted to Susie. Do I tell her the truth? Y'all, yeah, these are so hard. No, I think you just say to, to Susie, is Susie a real person? And yes. Paul? Yeah. I think They're, they, we've changed the names to protect I think you the just innocent. say Susie, I, Paul, Paul is not ready to be set up with somebody. Why? Does that matter? Is that any different than saying Paul just ain't that into you? Susie, yeah, got well, need to hear just that. set it up and then get out of the way. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Oh, that's a good idea. I mean, they'll decide. How do you know? Well, Paul might say, no, I don't want to be set up well, with Susie. Well, then that's Paul's problem. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a girl code question, tell us all about it. Hodenjenna.com. Hit the connect button. Okay, coming up next, they met in high school, y'all. Reconnected 60 years later, and now they're engaged. Okay, you're going to love this sweet couple behind this viral love story. An airport proposal after this. Oh. for a story that's gone viral for all the right reasons. And it centers around this couple, this lovely couple <laughs> sitting with Jenna and I right now, 78-year-old lovebirds, Dr. Tom McMeekin and Nancy Gamble. And the two recently reconnected ahead of their 60th high school reunion, <laughs> and their whirlwind romance has taken TikTok and the world by storm. Take a look. I want to spend the rest of my life with you to cherish every moment we will have together to make every day an exciting new adventure and to grow old with you and marry me. Oh, yes! <laughs> it's a love story for the ages. Just a couple of kids head over heels and a marriage proposal viewed over three million times on TikTok. Well, i just been bouncing around like a 25-year-old. Having all the stars line up to help it happen, it sort of gets shoved into the miracle category. Tom and Nancy's story is more than 60 years in the making. The two met at a small high school in Quincy, California, back in 1960. She was drop-dead gorgeous cheerleader. And so I admired her from a distance. He was just cute and nice and crew cut and jockey and still is cute. 
we did have a one or two dates. I went abroad for six months. Uh, I ended up falling in love and getting married to my first wife, where I was married 30 years. And I didn't run into Nancy again until 10 years ago when I went to my 50th high school reunion. I mean, we were each preoccupied with another relationship. But when their 60th reunion rolled around this year, the stars aligned. When I sent my note in, when I booked my flights, uh, Nancy responded with, well, maybe we could get together. And then we called, we talked for hours, hours, every day. From June 10th until now, we fell in love again. It was a whirlwind few weeks. I did want something like this to happen. And I think part of why it happened was because I asked for it to happen. I asked the universe. And then an invitation to visit Tom in Florida turned into a fairy tale at the terminal. I couldn't wait. I, I surprised her. And she arrived at the airport and she didn't know what was happening. I dropped down on the two knees and I read my proposal. We we're both crying. I love you more than words can express and more than you can ever comprehend. I want to spend the rest of my life proving that to you and making you the happiest woman in the world. And then then I said, will you marry me? And she said, yes. Marry me. Oh, yes. <laughs> My reaction to being proposed to was shock. Expecting to find this kind of love anytime is kind of hard to imagine, but especially in this last few chapters that we have. You were both almost octogenarians and we're finding love, true love, and you can't give up hope. Oh, how beautiful is that? I mean, first of all, it, to witness this love story, to be part of it, is really special. To rewatch yeah. that, oh, Nancy. every time I see it, it's so beautiful to see again. And it went viral. Well. No kidding, and I get why. It just takes one look at that, and you know everybody's sharing it. You know what I love about, there's so many things to love about this story, but to me, it's like believing in love, no matter when, no matter where. I mean, did you think that you would be able to fall in love? A lot of people go through a relationship and say, you know, never again, that was that. What made you think that there was more to this story? All the prior relationships and marriages have taught me lessons. And I, for four years, was searching for something. Mm -hmm. And happiness is to love and to be loved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what I hope for. Wow. Oh my gosh, Nancy. I Nancy, three million views. <laughs> did y'all, on TikTok? Yes. Are y'all on, like, or but did you even know what TikTok and all of that no, was? No, <laughs> no. I mean, I'm in this little tiny town and um, all of a sudden, somebody said, you're going viral. And, I, you know, you start to wonder if you've got a disease. <laughs> <laughs> so we just sort of started on this wave, and it just kept building. And it's been, it's been amazing. You said something really important, Nancy. You said that you asked for this. Mm, I did. Because people sit and wonder, why not me? But you literally said, you, you reached out. You didn't sit with your arms folded. Is that no, how you? I would see, I'd been in relationships and, and I, I wanted to have a beautiful companionship and love relationship in my life. And, and I'd see people doing something like that proposal, and I'd go, oh, I want that. Mm -hmm. Or I'd see people walking hand in hand, mm. and I'd go, oh, I want that. So I just kept asking for what I should have. Wow. And now you have it. <laughs> and now I have it. OK, do you have wedding plans? Any wedding plans yet? We're working on that. Yeah. I still have a practice to serve out my days and sell a house, and I'm moving in with her for the rest of my life, uh -huh. back to where I had roots in California. Oh. We're going to get married in her backyard in her little pergola. Uh. Her best friend is going to marry us, and I think it'll be October. We're working oh. on a date. Wow, how beautiful This is so is inspiring that? and lovely. Yeah, it shows you that love comes right on time. Yes, it does. It does. It does. Right on time. Uh -huh. Okay, well, we're thinking a romantic getaway could be nice for yeah. you all. What do you all think? 
Why not? Okay, Why not? well, Apple Vacations is sending you on a honeymoon. Yeah. Really? Whenever yeah. your time comes right, you're headed to Unico 2087 Hotel, Riviera Maya, a high-end adults-only hotel oh my God. in Mexico for six Beautiful. days. Five nights of relaxed luxury. <laughs> Ocean views, y'all, and you can enjoy fine dining, casual beachside buffets, round fair air trip. It's, it's a honeymoon. Oh, we couldn't have asked for it. Well, you guys have been such a delight. Oh, thank you for what you brought you. today. We love thank you all you. very much. Thank you. Wow. Way to go. Yes. I love We're love. So very moved. Oh. All right. Coming up next, let's get ready to shop. <laughs> to some great products that are worth the splurge and some if you're looking to save right after Oh, uh, yeah. If you could use a summer pick-me-up, you've come to the right place. It is time for splurges and saves with our lifestyle expert, Chassie Post. Okay, some of these products are worth the extra money, and some are less expensive alternatives to help you save a few bucks. Chassie, you always have the best uh -huh. ones. Thank you. So our first category is charm necklaces. Mm -hmm. I love the charm necklaces mm -hmm. that you, you guys have. Is this wear? one of them? It's yeah, so this is one, but not the same. Yes, this is I a different brand. One, and so I fell in love with this brand called mm -hmm. Oak and Luna. This Beautiful. is our splurge. And how stunning are these? You can customize with initials. Here we have your children's initials here. You can all do also do symbols, and you can upgrade with a diamond. They're one of a kind made. Look, gorgeous. I know. Aren't they this beautiful? This one says T for Tata. Right. Oh, my God, my mom. I can't it's believe you so said T. You can't give it. It's a splurge. What's right. the splurge it's price? <laughs> so they start at $200 for this special cast process, but they also have engraved ones Beautiful. that start at $128. And guess what? Mm. They're giving us a discount. Oh. Oak and Luna is 15% off oh, for wow. the next 24 oh, hours. So if you're going to splurge, Course, now's beautiful. the time. And I like so the for save, our too. save, these mm -hmm. are really fun, too. So these are from Amazon, and they're initial necklaces. Wow. So they're not customizable, but, you know, you get a fun look, and they come with two or three in a pack. So you get that layered look, which is also a really big trend. And these start at just $14.99 for oh the same. Oh my God, how Mila and Poppy, oh, they just you for not forgetting how. Oh, never. And All so right. these are so fun. Okay. Sneakers. Everybody Sneakers. wears these. Yes. This is the Hoka Clifton 9. It is the hottest running Why is shoe it so of the hot? summer. Tell me. The comfort, Hoda. Yeah. It is like walking on air. And it's so light. So this is the ninth iteration. Oh, my God. And they God. made it lighter, light. but added three millimeters to that stack. So it is incredibly and is comfortable. And this for good, I mean, so for, for walking any, and running? Yes, for walking, running. And mm -hmm. these are super popular. And these are $145. So there are splurge. But divide that by 365 days of the mm -hmm. year. I mean, because you're going to want to wear them every yeah. day. Okay. okay, another super comfy option. These are from Hush Puppies. And these are the Charlie Court sneaker. And I think they these have this cute. really cute cool retro be. vibe. Rainbow? Yeah, yeah, right? But they've got that Hush Puppy comfort mm -hmm. technology. And I mean, these are just the cup sole. Feel that. It's so. I feel like Davy could wear this shoe. I yeah, do too. These are Davey, this is the shoe for you. Yes. Right? <laughs> Davy's cool. That looks Davey's cool, right? right? This cool. is a cool. All right. So cool. And these are our save $69.95, but guess what? Right. Another discount. 25% off with code TODAY25. Amazing. Okay, hair tools. So this is the ultimate. It is from Beach Waver. It is the four-in-one um, uh, blow, yeah, blow brush, and it's got four different attachments on one. And here, 
beautiful producer, Katrina. She's using the diffuser oh, there. Oh, making her hair curly. Yeah, $189, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. can switch out through all four. But How nice. I know, but guess what? Another set? discount, 20% off. Mm -hmm. This little, look how tiny this Cutest little set little thing is. In the world. This was inspired, you know that little hair dryer backstage uh -huh. that was minuscule? Yeah. Oh, we use those for our armpits. armpits. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> right? Well, this is a travel set, so you've got the little um, ceramic oh, flat yeah, iron we, and we the little uh, hair dryer. You just have a few seconds. Okay, okay last so. but not least, Coffee. So this is the newest wow. release from Cuisinart. It is the four. Gorgeous. It's called the Coffee Center Four and One um, Barista Bar, and you can do everything. You can brew coffee. You can do a single serve pod. You can also do, uh, uh, you know, espresso. And it's got a milk frother. Look. This is oh, so cool, right? So you can do it all right here. It's like bringing the cafe home. Love so it. this is okay. our splurge. Awesome. And it's so amazing. Two ninety nine ninety five. And our save for the cold brew fans. This is so cool from Uncommon. And goods. It's $50, and you can brew your cold brew, and then overnight, when you're done, you just put it oh. in the carafe. This oh. stainless steel carafe right, will I keep that. That's a great gift that's for 24 hours. Yeah, that's so you wonderful. can roll and you know have your cold brew, and it's that's really good. That's just so friends. smart, so cute. Thank, Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. <laughs> you check out these products head today.com/shop. Coming up next, Tom Cruise, Ryan Gosling, Matt Damon, and more. Joelle Gargiulio is on the scene with Hollywood's biggest stars. Coming up right after this. Good one. <laughs> Hollywood's biggest stars are on the scene. So is our gal. Yeah, New York Live entertainment correspondent, Joelle Gargiulo. Hi, Joelle. Oh, hi, Joelle. Hi, ladies. How, How are, you? are you? Good, good. I good. feel like we're playing footsies. I know. I'm not, I'm not mad at it. No. <laughs> All right, listen, if there was ever a reason to buy a movie ticket this weekend, I'm about to give you three. Huge movies with huge A-listers. And before the actors went on strike, I caught up with them for New York Live and put together a little something special for you. Take a look. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Clear your calendars, pass the popcorn, and take your pick. The summer blockbuster is officially back. So cool. And thanks to a legendary doll, a theoretical physicist, and a secret agent, audiences have an impossible mission. The choice is now yours. Which movie to see first? The first one. Do it again. Will it be Barbie or Oppenheimer? I don't know. Or Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. I'm actually not sure. You've got three mega films with mega stars. Is this where we run? No, 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 no. Probably. And I sat down with them all. <laughs> Hi! Hi. How are you? Nice, nice to see you. First up, the enchanting and very pink world of Barbie, starring Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. Looking at one another, can you tell me, why does Ryan make the ultimate Ken, and why is Margot the perfect Barbie for this movie? I mean... Because I'm a huge Margot Robbie fan, and Ken's Barbie's biggest fan. <laughs> so she was like, he'll do. I am just curious, the fact that you are Ken, does this give you dad street credit? What's it like in your it's house funny, now? It's funny, I asked, um, I asked them last night. I was wondering, like, what what did you think when I said I was playing Ken? And my oldest went, I wasn't surprised. <laughs> it's incredible. 
incredible. They could say so much with yeah. so little. Yeah. Finish this line for me. The Barbie movie is everything. From Barbie to a film that couldn't be any more different. But what's happening here? Oppenheimer tells the origin story of the deadliest weapon in history. Among its star-studded cast, Matt Damon and Emily Blunt. You always play dimensional characters, no matter what. And what I loved about your kitty, we see she's she's not just a wife, right? She's really Oppenheimer's sounding board. Yeah. Sure. So professionally, who's that person for you? John. He'll give it to you. Oh, John. John. There's a secret language. I, I don't even have to finish the sentence. I'm really lucky. I've got a few. I've got Lucy. But, you know, I've got Ben, who I, mm -hmm. you know, since we were kids. Also wrote down like a million movie lines while I was watching this because I was thinking about it. Movie lines, they play a really big role in my family. They bond me with my dad. Yeah. Because I had been yeah. my grandparents. I'm curious in your families, are there movie lines or scenes personal to you in that respect? Tons yeah. of them, yeah, tons yeah. of them. There was a, there was a, a, a great movie on our family that my, my father and brother and I went to together called The Three Amigos. And there's a point where Steve Martin gets shot where the, the, the three amigos think it's all fake. And then he realizes that, that these bandits are gonna kill him and he walks back to the other guys and he goes, it's real, <laughs> it's real. My father, in 2017, when he was, he was dying, um, he had terminal cancer and uh, we were sitting there and he just turned to me and goes, Matthew and I go, yeah, and he goes, it's real. <laughs> and we were just, my brother and I were laughing with him and we're crying, but we're laughing, but it was just the fact that he referenced the three mm, amigos like, at the that moment. Is it was so incredible. incredible. Yeah, That's and beautiful. so, like in your family, like movies are, you know, those. They're life. They're life. life. Movies yeah. are life. And finally, rounding out the bunch in its second weekend, Tom Cruise is back for a seventh Mission Impossible, taking the stakes and stunts to a whole new level, like that moment where Tom actually rides a motorcycle off a cliff. A moment I had to ask him about. What did your mom say? <laughs> like, what did your mother say when she saw that? Oh, she was always very happy that I never told her I was doing these things. But she's, you know, I grew up, there's things as a little kid. I was a little kid on, crawling on the roof, you know, and going up to the attic at three years old to look at the stars, and that was just me. Lucky for audiences, it looks like some things never change. Did you make it? Are you okay? Pull it. Pull it. Pull it. Oh, my God. He did that in real life. Wait, like, Joelle, he's doing that. pause on that. Great interviews Beyond. with all Thank three you. casts. Thank so you. interesting. That was a great job. Those are the best. Thank you. Thank wow. you, Joelle. I suggest seeing all three. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, all three. we're mm -hmm. going to the movies. Coming up next, we're going to play that fun game. Okay, you know the one with the host, who's also our one of our associate what, producers. What's the name of that game again? I don't know, but we're playing it right after this. Okay, you know when you have the name of a celebrity mm -hmm. or a show, it's right on the tip of your tongue, but you can't quite remember? All right, we turned that into a pastime, that pastime into one of our favorite <laughs> games. It's called, What's the Name of This Game Again? And back is host, the most forgettable man in show business, our associate producer, Sean. First of all, that said most forgetful, not oh, forgettable. I know, forgettable. <laughs> For, did you just call him forgettable? Yeah. Okay, anyway. He wrote the script. I wrote the script and you read it wrong. Um, <laughs> Here's how the game will work. Uh, I will read. Allegedly. Allegedly. We'll let you know. Um, 
I will read a rambling assortment of vaguely uh -huh. informed clues uh -huh. about a celebrity, a TV show, whatever, <laughs> as if I've forgotten the name of them. If you think I know, you know what the hell I'm talking about, buzz in and guess. If you don't, keep guessing, whatever. Sorry, I'm Did you still curse? stuck no. in the fact that she called you forgettable. Listen, it's the end of the show. It's a long day. We're tired. Okay. All right, okay. hit it. Let's start. Who is that actress? She was in that show where she either played the president or she dated the president. Oh, played the president. Carrie Washington! Carrie Washington. Jenna got it. Yeah, Point she sure Jenna. did. Good for you. Next up. I was always a little weirded out by that, you know. Excuse me. Yeah, I bet you were. Forgettable yeah. person over here. Okay. Who's that director with the eyebrows? And I think glasses. Martin Scorsese. Yeah, good yes. job. You got it from the eyebrows. Thank you. Eyebrows okay. will do it. <laughs> How about, what's that song? It starts with like da 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 Oh, and then it's like three guys singing, and then it goes like Hey, Marco Reyna, uh huh. No, keep going. And then it's like Enemy, Enemy, and the sync, in sync. No, to find. Boys the men, boys the men, boys the men. Yeah, my sister, sister. Yes, but what is it? Not poison. Bye. That girl is poison. Uh, uh. You, you guys are good dancers. You for should... some reason, when you go like this, uh, it made it seem like the margarina. No. Well, well, thank you for thinking that and not other things. <laughs> but I'm glad you like my dancing. I think I should apply for that show. Um, what's that show? That that reality show? That so you think you can dance? Yes. Wow. wow. Whoa, that you know what? information. That was... said dancing, I know. Yeah. Come on, that's... Why didn't you think was it was Dancing one. with the Stars? No, because there was something about how he did it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, what was that other show? It's a scripted show. The guy, he was um, Paul Blart Mall Cop. And then Jerry Stiller lives in the basement. And Leah, um, not Leah Michelle, we love her. Leah Remini, Remini was in it. What's the name of that show? Oh, oh, the guy. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 shh. It's the, it's the show. Yes, yeah, the show. With the big with guy. The Leo, yes. I love oh, that show. Oh, oh, you know it. Oh. It's, oh. A, it's in New York. It's King a, of the Hill? No, oh. Queen. 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 King of Queens. King of King Queens. King of Queens. Hoda got it. I know that. I that love one, that show. That is a funny. All right. One more. Jenny, you could tie this up. But maybe. Who's that woman? I always get her mixed up with Marissa Tomei, but it's not Marissa Tomei. And for some reason, I know that her last Rosie name... Rosie Perez? No. Oh, geez. I know that her last name is like a cookie, but I can never remember what kind of cookie. And was she on Who's the Boss? Is that possible? She was, I think, the daughter on Who's the Boss? Cookie? Yeah, like, it's not like a Pecan? like a Pepperidge Farm kind of cookie. Mo Alyssa Milano. Yes. Oh, Milano. I, I got Mitt Milano. Mitt Milano. Do we have time for a tiebreaker? <laughs> yes, we okay. do. All right. Oh, Milano. That, by the way, excellent clue. Yeah, because I love a Mitt Milano. There you go. Yeah, who doesn't? All right, tiebreaker. What's that girl group? It's with like all the great dancers, and they have that one song about like, don't you wish your girl was a freak like I am? Like and me. then the other song is like, freak like me. TLC? Up. No. The other song is like, loosen up my buttons, baby. Oh, oh, I love that and then, song! And then the lead <laughs> singer is like, Nicole... Uh, oh, Schwarzenegger! Oh, oh, oh! oh, oh yeah. 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 wins! Oh, my goodness. All right, well, we have a prize for you, Jenna. Can we bring it out? You've won the home version of What's the Name of That Game Again, which is a phone call from your mother while she's watching an award show. <laughs> she's barely but she needs to know their names immediately. Oh By the way, gosh. Sean, well done. Sean, I think you've done you're yourself. not forgettable. You are definitely not forgettable. Oh, thank you. All right, we'll be back right <laughs> after this. Don't Did you wish your girl was...
<laughs> tomorrow, somebody who always inspires us, our pal Allie Love, reveals the person who is inspiring her. Oh, don't you love that? Mm -hmm. Plus, Hoda and I are going to learn how to belly dance. Well, this is the first time we're hearing about that. We don't know about that. I'll first also, time. Very first. Okay, anyway, we'll see you Wednesday. Yeah, today's Tuesday. Tomorrow's the day we learn how to belly dance. We are so excited to get started with cooking and today food. But before we do, before we do that, we're just going to take one second and shout out our new executive yes. producer. Talia is in the house. We just want to say, hey, welcome Happy to today. Happy first day. It's her first day of school. Go, Talia. We're so happy thrilled. you're here. She's here. And you know who else we're so happy to have? Oh. If, well, she's not at the ranch hanging out yeah. with her family or filming <laughs> episodes of her hit Food Network show. Reed Drummond is busy coming up with easy and delicious meals for you and your family. Reed's the star of The Pioneer Woman and a best-selling author of seven cookbooks. Her latest is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks Super Easy. It's 120 shortcut recipes for dinners, desserts, and more. We've missed yes, you. Hi, we're so missed happy you you're guys. here. It is so, I just feel like I'm seeing old friends, and it's just so happy. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I love it. We, okay, first of all, we have to say congratulations. Yes. Your, your daughter got married. Oh my gosh, oh, thank sweet. you. How I was know. that? It was so much fun. I mean, oh. it, it was. We did it on the ranch, which was a crazy idea. We <laughs> sort of built this huge tent out there, but. It was fun, and the di the great thing is, it was a lot of work. But the day of, we were just able to let the process happen and enjoy it. It wasn't stressful. Did you and do any? Did, you didn't do any cooking for it, did you? No. Good. You just no, relaxed. No, no, no. I know. Sure. I was going to say, who does sure. rehire as the no, That's why I was able to relax and have fun. Yeah, and right. to so. watch your husband walk her down the aisle. Oh, we yes. know he's been recovering yeah. from an accident. It yeah. must have been special. It, it was wonderful. I mean, it was a blessing. We, it, that's my favorite picture of the two oh, of them. Um, he was a little stiff then. He's he's doing much better. He's on his horse today, so everything okay, is great. Back We're on the horse. Very, very lucky. All right. What are we going to cook? Oh, my gosh. Okay. So now that Hoda has eaten a whole chocolate I know. cake you know today, what? Um, it's really good. Why is everybody making fun of you? I don't, I don't appreciate that. I don't, thank you, Jen. If I think I you would have supported would have me. It was really quiet, and then all of a sudden, the cake was gone. And <laughs> But you I, should see what she does to chips. Oh, I, well, you know, <laughs> you know it's morning. What? It's happening again. You have the rest of the day to work it off, right? Exactly. So you will. after the cake, I thought it'd be great to make some vegetables. So I'm going to do a sheet pan gnocchi Yummy. dinner. And okay. what I love about it, my cookbook, really, I'm not afraid to use shortcut ingredients. So. My favorite ingredient is this is store bought gnocchi. Oh, so and is this frozen or you just no, get it? No, it's actually shelf stable, believe oh. it or not. So you can uh, you just buy wait, it. throw it in there? Wait, yeah. are you, is this a joke? <laughs> what you just did? Out. You just dumped everything on the sheet everything pan? Everything on the sheet I pan. I thought you had to boil oh, it. Oh, no, 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 because we're going to roast it. Oh. So then What's I've got. That pesto? Yes, pesto. <gasps> I'm going to mix it with olive oil. Oh. Did I'm you trying not to get pesto on you, so I moved it away from your beautiful. Marie, can you buy the pesto or did you make that? No, bought the pesto. See, I like everything. So yeah, she's speaking happening. our language. Yeah, I mean, during the pandemic, you know, mm -hmm. I I mm -hmm. kind of burned out on cooking a little bit because there were Didn't so we many all? kids around. Is that it? Yeah. So they, that's it because pesto is so flavorful. It has garlic and and you know. And do you of need to oil the, the pan? Did you already oil it? You don't it? have to because there's oh. plenty of olive oil in the pesto mixture. So you basically, just mix it all around mix like it all that. Around, and then look how Wait. beautiful it looks. Oh my gosh! Jenna. So we have to pull taste. it out of the oven. So. I like to do a little balsamic Do you want us to help oh, you? Yes, glaze. Yes, help me and grab some go. Parmesan shavings. So do you just, that? I love balsamic glaze. Yes. I do everything I do. on anything. And you know what? I used to make my own by just reducing balsamic mm, for yeah. hours and the house would smell like vinegar and my kids would be like, what, what is that doing? smell? This is so, kind of crispy. It's delicious, isn't it? And see how all the oh veggies got beautiful color. Mm. Mm. But it's such We're, an easy meal and I would totally just eat this. But wait. We could do this 
too, which is huge. Look at what we just in did. In one second. Put it in the oven, is dress this basil? it. basil? What did you, what I is that? I tore basil. Oh, just, tore basil. Yep, and I, I'm so lazy, I don't even want to chop basil anymore. You just chop it. By the way, I like it on exactly. oh, Should we go around the back? Yeah, we have another recipe. Okay, okay great. Right. Honestly, so mm -hmm. sheet pans are kind of my thing. I okay. love them. They're, they're just, I, I get nervous if I don't have 20 ready to go at mm -hmm. all times. So this is a sheet pan salad, and I love this concept mm. because you basically roast any veggie you want, it's it's the squash time of year. Oh, so yes. this is a mixture of cubed butternut squash Yum. and delicata squash. I love delicata what squash. What is that? I'm what obsessed is it? with it. Me too. Do you ever so put it on it? toast? Oh, Wait. yeah. Mash, mash yes. it. Yes. What are you talking it's about? It's just so a squash. At, this is what it looks like. And oh, it's and basically store? kind oh. of an heirloom type okay. of squash. But the great thing is you can eat the skin. It gets really tender. So ah. butternut, it can be a little bit tough, Should not I do, very tasty. Should I add yes. Some? Drizzle and then we're salt gonna do another roasted vegetable situation, salt and pepper, Italian seasoning. This is so brilliant. This and then is just so toss. brilliant. But here's what's fun about what? it. So roast it and it's like 450, 25, 30 minutes. Okay. And look how gorgeous. So that's delicious on its own, but I build a salad oh, out of this. Thank you. So basically, you make your own dressing too, don't you? Well, sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes I doctor up bottle dressing. So but I'm using the roasted vegetables as a base for mm, a salad. That's delicious. Mm. Isn't it good? Yes. And the dressing mm. is tahini, mm. mustard, lemon juice, olive oil, honey. Okay. And this then, is isn't it pretty? Ten okay. plus. Ten plus plus. Pomegranate seeds. seeds. Yep. Mm. yep. Pistachios. Pistachios, pomegranate seeds. Mm. So I love pomegranates. Is, it's pretty at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then goat cheese, which Hoda Great. doesn't love. We, thank you. Well, Hoda well, likes it. It, it just doesn't love her. Yeah. Okay. There's a thank lot of you TMI so in much. this segment. <laughs> There's a lot about Hoda. <laughs> anyway. Bree, thank you so much for these recipes. Head today.com slash food. And for Bree's new book, it has recipes just like this one. Head today.com slash shop. I predict a bestseller. Me too. Okay. <laughs>
So, yeah, Ch ahead. it starts with chicken. Yep. Yes, so I'm going to make tachos. Now, do you know what tachos are, Carson? No, no idea. You need to know. So, like to know. tachos are just like nachos, but they're made with tots. Oh, Yum. So, oh. I, baked, I baked some tots with a little we cumin and eating chili already. powder, oh, cooked some chicken, add some celery. So, these are buffalo chicken tachos. Yum. Celery, garlic, and green onions. Did you make then, up tachos or is that a thing? I never heard of tachos. It's kind of a thing, but it hasn't okay. swept the nation yet. Yeah, it's going now to. Will. I'm yeah. kind of hoping, uh, It'll but be anything trending by the end of the segment. put on nachos, you can put on tots okay. and call them tachos. So Love it. Then, of course, buffalo sauce, and then you just let oh. this simmer. Mm. I started Delicious. with raw no. chicken, but you can do rotisserie chicken to okay. make it easier. Yeah. Mm. So simmer that until it's luscious Have you and changed saucy. what you cook now because of your sort of wellness journey? Is it, is it put you no. on a different path? Or you <laughs> <laughs> No, and you know the thing is, is I have, I have teenage boys, college students, uh, lad, right. a, mm -hmm. ranchers, you know, yeah, cowboy, and so I have to make food that everybody loves. Right. And yeah. I don't, I'm not good when I deny myself, yeah. you know, whole Butter categories of food. So mm -hmm. I'm just kind of learning to eat. I like to say I, I eat a Rhode Island sized piece of cake instead of a Texas sized piece <laughs> right. of cake. That's the best way you get the flavors in the taste. It's How does that just taste? It's delicious. Really good. So Everything's good. So, yeah. good. so yeah. You, you pull the tots out of the oven. Mm -hmm. They're seasoned, so, so. so they're a little bit elevated. I mm -hmm. kind of push them into a pile. Yeah. Pepper jack cheese yeah. all over. I okay. mean, this this is what life's all about right Oh, here. right here, yeah. And then you spoon the saucy chicken all oh, yeah. over. Mm -hmm. And so you can do ground beef that? and got some hit, you know right? black beans and do sort of. Is a the chicken mix. gonna because it's hot melt that cheese or are you putting this back in the no, oven? No, it's going back in the oven. Okay, yeah. I so because okay. you want to melt the cheese like uh, nachos. So mm. all the cheese you want, melt it. Mine? Oh, here we go. That's oh, delicious. Okay. Yeah. Cheese. Actually, Pepper jack cheese, the buffalo yeah. sauce. Mm. It's, it's hearty. It's, it's got a kick, huh. but oh jeez! Did you know redheads can tolerate uh, spicy food more than anybody really? else? Really? Is that true? Yeah. True? yeah so this is good. Is that true? You love it? That's we'll delve good. into what? the genealogy of that some other time. But, wow. but basically, you garnish with. Uh, Blue cheese, mm -hmm. and to make blue cheese dressing, I just take ranch dressing mm -hmm. and add blue cheese to it. Oh, oh and clever. It's Another very shortcut. easy. You can oh, do yeah. bottled ranch, or you can make your own, but Brilliant. nice little shortcut. Mm -hmm. So this is what, uh, this is why my teenage boys love me. Oh, I can see I why. Mean, that is delicious. Hey, Carson. Really, yeah. really good. Hey, this is gone. I mean, just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wham. What happened? Oda. Oda's eating a whole bunt cake already. Oda, we have wow. not started the cake at... segment yet. Hey, take a breath. No one's missed these eating segments more than Hodes. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Remember, Rhode Island, not Texas. <laughs> <laughs> She's going state by state. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that does bring us to our chocolate cake. Now, this is your secret recipe, right? Okay, yes. Yeah. So, confession, my, my top secret ingredient in my top secret cake is dark chocolate cake mix. Oh, okay. And what? listen, I had my house full of humans during the pandemic yeah. and large six, you know, six foot five humans yeah. and football players. And I had... I was making so much food that I was about to lose my religion. I mean, <laughs> every day I was just like, I can't do it anymore. So I'm not afraid to whip out the chocolate cake. I doctored it with, uh, you know, bittersweet chocolate chips just to make it a little bit more uh, rich. Wow. But the thing is, this is the secret. It's a box cake. Well, it's what, oh, yeah. Okay. But the thing is, I'm topping it with ganache, oh, which is Ooh. heavy cream wow. and good oh, well, quality go. chips. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. all, two ingredients. Yes. And then it turns into this Here. luscious. Ooh. And are these oh, inside food, yeah. or is this like a topping this thing becomes, situation? So, well, you can just eat one if you like. So you just made, okay, yeah. So you made the, the we cake. We gotta go. Oh, we're out of time. Okay, yeah. I really want to understand this. And then drizzle. Drizzle. Uh, I do sprinkles on top, <laughs> but after Halloween, you can take Beautiful leftover cake. candy, chop it, it up, on and top. put it on top. So hold up. Hold oh, my God. Happy plate. Wait a minute. Plate. Hold on. Show it. Clean Literally. plate club. Clean plate club. Clean plate Done. club. There's, you left a and she's going to eat owls. And also, she's going to move in with you. And she's she's giggling. She's giggling a lot over there. Congratulations on everything. Congrats. Love your show. Thank yes, you great. guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, of course, you can find all these recipes at today.com slash food and pick up a copy of Super Easy at today.com slash shop. This morning on Today Food, lasagna two ways with layers of pasta, meat sauce, and creamy cheese. Lasagna is one of the ultimate comfort foods. But get ready for something a little new this morning. Read Drummond a.k.a. The Pioneer Woman, has created two recipes. They're going to become your favorites. Her latest book is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks, 
the new frontier. Wait, good morning. Hi, Savannah. It's good to see you. Now, I, I can, you're doing something really different with lasagna, which is risky. Well, it's a little risky, but when you see these recipes, you will totally understand. I like to mash things up, and yeah. you know, you don't want to make lasagna over and over and over. So, we are going to make shrimp scampi lasagna roll-ups. I like it. Which mm -hmm. are as good as they sound. So, okay. I cooked some shrimp in butter, onion, garlic, a little thyme, and. Um, Chopped it up. Okay. So I'm going to make a sort of a shrimpy, cheesy filling, and this is cream cheese, ricotta, egg, and parmesan. I mean, what could you, what could possibly go wrong? I know. So I mean, good. it's all right. Sign me up. Yes. So I'll let you stir this together, okay. and I'm going to start on the white sauce. Um, my new cookbook has lots of fun recipes like this. Yeah, where, I like that it's different. Yeah, and buffalo chicken quesadillas, for instance. Mm -hmm. I have two teenage boys at home. Yeah. Um, my girls grew up and left me. <laughs> so so you've got those brutes at home. So feed. rude of them. You still got Charlie the dog? Well, Charlie's not with us anymore, oh, but I have I have Walter. Okay. Oh, Walter. And I have a couple of other little bassets running around. Look so. at the whole crew over there. It's like, Savannah, oh my how could you ask Hi. that? But, oh, no, it's okay. Charlie lives on in his books. Yes, and, he does. We read his book all the time. Oh, I love hearing that. Okay, so I, I stirred it. So that's all stirred together, and I am making just a beautiful white sauce, and okay. it's... I started with the roux, and it has cream and milk. Mm -hmm. And so you cook and cook and cook until you're this You're trying to thick. thicken it up, right? Thicken it up. Is that thick enough pepper. or not really? This looks great. Okay. This isn't quite there, but right. I have, I have some already television. finished. Yes. So I'm going to have you help me build a oh, roll-up. Okay. So this is the filling you just stirred together. Mm -hmm. Take about a generous third a cup. Okay. And put it on the end of the... Oh, this has the... Okay, the whole thing is in here. Our yeah. shrimp, our everything. And these are cooked lasagna noodles. Mm -hmm. I cooked them about half the time mm -hmm. that the package says. Right. Oh. And then just roll it up. Yep. That's the name, lasagna oh roll-ups. They're so cute and pretty. What they are so cute. Oh Amazing. God. Are you dying? Oh, yeah, my goodness. Not. Between bisque and a lasagna. Oh. I, good oh. point. That's exactly what it is. Oh. And then I always put the seam side down. Yeah, of course, to make it look pretty. I poured the white sauce in the bottom of the dish. Oh. And then I'll let you pour and the then rest gonna, of it. Am I pouring over. or am I drizzling? No, pour. Okay, pour, pour that sucker. Get in there. Okay, yeah. Why not? Look at that creamy yummy. It is Isn't so that gorgeous. Good. Yes. And then top it with mozzarella. Mm -hmm. And you can see the finished dish right here with parsley on top. That doesn't look crazy difficult either. No, it's not. And my daughter who lives in Dallas now uh, saw my new cookbook and she said, when I come home, will you make me the shrimp oh. scampi lasagna roll-up? So I mean, why not? Look at it. It's okay. gorgeous. I want to taste that. So that's lasagna one way. And now the this shocked way, me. Lasagna soup. I mean, it's it's really earth-shattering. Okay, it's, tell me, tell me. I'm gonna have a bite. It's beautiful. Here. So started with ground beef, mm -hmm. sausage, uh, onion, oh. garlic, yeah. thyme, oregano, and I just cooked it, and then added. Mm. Oh my God! Try it. Let's try that. Savannah, just take your Delayed time. reaction. So good. <laughs> take okay. Your time. And just turned it into a really delicious uh, whole tomatoes, tomato paste, mm -hmm. uh, parsley, and you can see the whole tomatoes. I actually like to let them cook down a little bit. Yeah. And then break them up because oh. they're a little softer. Mm -hmm. Anytime I try to squeeze them with my hand, it winds up in my eye. Yeah. Or, <laughs> That's not fun. Or on my shirt, which is even worse. Even worse, exactly. <laughs> so you just kind of, you ground up the the uh, beef and then. Oh. Yes. Then you put in the drain tomato. the excess fat and then turn it into a beautiful soup. Mm -hmm. And then I cooked some broken up lasagna noodles. Oh. So this is fat and they're down at the bottom. Lasagna it's like a hug. In. It is. Oh, that's <laughs> so a really wait, what good about point. the cheese? Where's the cheese? Okay, so okay. once you simmer away the soup yes. and the noodles are perfect, I make this little ricotta dumpling mixture. Oh wow! And all it is is ricotta, parmesan, salt, pepper, basil, and oh, parsley. Mm -hmm. Stir it together. Mm -hmm. mm. And then when you serve up the soup, you just put little dollops right in the middle. Oh and God. it's just, mm -hmm. if the soup is really piping hot, the yep. ricotta dumpling Starts just kind of melts Can I into come it. over to your house, mm -hmm. Reed? Yes, Is this yes. what we make there? Because it sounds fab. <laughs> Bring your kids and uh, Lad will put them to work on the ranch. <laughs> yeah, I would love it. I love it. Thank you so much. We, how do you like Fantastic. the soup? It's amazing. amazing. Which one do you like I better? Love, I love the oh. soup. Yeah. It's crazy. We, we're torn. Can you yeah. tell? I, I like vote for soup and. Uh -huh. Well, you know what though, and then you get a piece of shrimp on this yeah. one. That's the thing, oh. and all that shrimp scampi oh. flavor is in there. You really redesigned lasagna. Yeah, that's, that's next level. Yeah, my wife <laughs> loves your shrimp. I get bored really easily, <laughs> so I, I have to have some fun in the kitchen. Thank, Thank you so Rhea. much, Rhea. I know you're coming back for the fourth yes. hour. More food. You can find all of these recipes at today.com/food. And for more on Rhea's book, go to today.com/shop. You can buy it there. Thank you, honey. <laughs>
Reed Drummond is busier than ever. Not only is she a mom of four, she's a New York Times bestselling author. She has three million Instagram followers, and she's a star of the hugely popular Food Network show. It's called The Pioneer Woman. And somehow she's also managed to find time to put together a new cookbook called The Pioneer Woman Cooks the New Frontier, which features a couple of recipes that we're going to be making today. And she took all the photos for the book. Of course, she you does everything. Too? She did that too. My Please. camera's a mess. My camera's sticky. <laughs> I all over it. So she's got roast chicken for us. Look at this. Yes, I, I'm so happy to cook we're, with you both. So I'm a big happy. fan of both of you. We so love thank you. you for having me. So I wait, can't cook. Yeah, me either. But wait, you're based in Oklahoma and you just do your sh everything from your home? Is that Pretty much. We, we film the show at our guest lodge, so yeah. at least they don't have to trip over my teenager's laundry, <laughs> yeah. you know, dirty socks in our real I house. I was telling but. her that my daughter, Christina, is like, she is the most incredible woman. I Her oh, voice puts me to sleep. I watch her. Her life is oh, idyllic. Yeah. My voice puts my husband to sleep, too. <laughs> All right, so we're making chicken today. Yes, I just want to show you my favorite way to roast chicken. Okay. Uh, I'm wearing gloves just for the spatchcocking. Yeah. So do you know what spatchcocking no, a chicken is? No, no, so no. it's super no. easy. Basically, okay. you have to put on gloves, cut okay. the backbone out, which is just snip on either side. Okay. That's the unpleasant part. And splay part. it out. But then you splay it out, and the whole point is to kind of... <laughs> Oh. The whole point is right. to get it as flat as possible. You can use your palm and uh -huh. kind of push, mm -hmm. but that way a chicken that would normally take um, a lot longer to roast yes. just takes uh, really a fraction of the time. So then you wind up with uh, a beautiful roasted chicken. So what I like to do is make sort of an herb dressing, Ooh, and it's just uh, simple olive oil mm -hmm. herbs, cut some baby gold potatoes in half and just toss them in the herb mixture. How long does this take you to make? You want to help me oh, just sure, kind of sure. scatter them around and then you would brush the same mixture on the chicken. Now is this Good a job. greased pan or is this not? It doesn't have doesn't to be have because to be. the chicken has so much, so much uh, beautiful grease as it cooks. Okay. So just really about 30 minutes total. You start with a high heat and then lower it and then look what you wind up with. <laughs> wow. Halfway through I add cherry tomatoes mm. and zucchini and then put it back in and finish it up. And you have this beautiful roasted chicken, which I like to serve as roasted chicken, mm -hmm. but I also like leftover roasted Can chicken. Can we try this? Yes, of Maria, course. that's like your perfect meal, by the way. That's right, that have is. Have a yeah. chicken. I mean, I like French fries, but yes. that we're not having that. But I'm sorry, Maria. No. <laughs> I should have made no, we're fries. Not, we're not allowed to eat that. I either. think roasted chicken is the perfect mm. food. And that is yummy. It's good for weeknight family mm -hmm. meals. But Are you mm -hmm. surprised at how your cooking, your passion, has turned into this incredible success? Well, you know, I think you nailed it. Just passion. If you if you are passionate about what you do, mm -hmm. it can you take you in directions you never thought you you'd go in. And that's um, I've had so much fun with Pioneer Woman because it started as mm -hmm. blogging. Mm -hmm. So come around. Oh, yeah. um, and I want to show you what you can do with the chicken okay. if you don't want to slice it up and right. serve it as roast chicken. So you can shred it, mm -hmm. which is my favorite thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a beautiful chicken and wild rice soup. Soup? Oh, Onion, yum. celery, and carrots. Okay. And then I'm going to deglaze with some white wine, which okay. I love in any soup. It just adds mm. beautiful flavor. And it's okay. getting to be soup weather out there. It's, yeah, it's getting to be. Finally, did you have a hot summer here well, like we did? We had, we had a scorcher. <laughs> it seemed to go on forever. And then add some flour just to thicken it okay. up. And then you'll cook this for a bit. Do all and your then, kids cook? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sadly, no. My daughter Paige loves to cook and she's a great cook. The rest mm. of my kids love to eat. So, uh, welcome to my plight. But I love to cook and so it's, it's, uh, What's it's that? chicken stock. Chicken stock okay. and then water. Mm -hmm. And this is so easy is wild that? rice. It's, oh, I didn't know it was that color. Yeah, it's not the mix that you buy in a box, oh. it's real wild rice. Um, Minnesota has, has wild rice okay. that kind of comes from Minnesota. And then you basically cook it until the rice is done. And mm -hmm. look how beautiful it That's looks. That's gorgeous. Oh. And then you add the chicken in, obviously. Um, and I like to kind of cream a it up a little cream. bit. Yeah, you got I to. Mean, I mean, I can't think of many dishes that I make that aren't made better with a little cream. <laughs> exactly. So you can add a little or a lot and then let it simmer some more mm -hmm. with some aromatics, sage, and rosemary and thyme. Yes. And then I love to add Ooh. kale also. To at the, the soup? To the soup, oh, yeah. At the end, is that kind of the Kind last of at touch? the end, you yeah. just let it uh, simmer in the last few minutes. Tell us what this pasta situation yeah. is. 
Okay, so again, what you can do with the leftover chicken yeah. is make a chicken spaghetti casserole. And it's, I think casseroles are just the ultimate comfort food. And mm. this has mushrooms and mm. a little bit of wine, mm. of course. So mm. if you can spatchcock a chicken, you can do anything in life. <laughs> you can spatch cock a chicken. We need a t-shirt that says that. Yeah. But really, you can make soup and casseroles, enchiladas. Reed, so. this was, these were all delicious, awesome meals. I mean, they seem easy enough, too. Very easy. Thank if you. it's not easy, I won't do it. Awesome. Oh, that's good. For these recipes, head to today.com slash food. And for more about Reese's Cookbook, go to today.com slash shop. <laughs> Welcome back. We're back with Today Food. This morning's guest, you know her, you love her, Reed Drummond. She is known as the pioneer woman, and today she's showing us two easy recipes for a family feast. You've got a, a simple, easy pasta recipe. What are we cooking? Yes, so I am so into shortcut homemade ravioli. And what makes it shortcut is that I use wonton wrappers. So these are just in the store. And I made a little mixture of ricotta, parmesan, salt, pepper, lemon zest. Wow. And I just put a little, I mm. can't get too close to you guys, but put a little dollop in the middle of the wonton wrapper. And then I just take my clean finger mm -hmm. <laughs> and rub a little egg wash around the edge. Oh. And then take a second wonton wrapper and put it on top, line up the edges. And then you just want to press it together. Oops, I grabbed three. That's okay. It's, I'm doing this on the fly. And then just force all the air out. And honestly, if you can't make, make homemade pasta dough or you don't have time, this is such a great shortcut. I like that. And then you just can get an assembly line with your kids, make as many of these as you want, and then just drop them into salted water one by one. And look. All right, I love those. Little pieces of ravioli. Just Delicious. Fresh hey, and ready to go. Hey, Reed, can we, we only have a minute, but we want to get to that dessert, that, what is it? Ice it's box, a, ice box yeah. cake. Oh, yeah. Blackberry ice box cake. So the frozen pound cakes that we all know and love, I shave the top off, crumble it into crumbs, pour in butter. Very easy. And then just put this on the stove top, toast the crumbs. Mm. And then the cake that's left, you slice the cake into three slices lengthwise. I already started a layer and it's cake, a mixture of jam, blackberries, and lemon juice, Yum. and lemon zest. Huh. It's so fun to use a frozen pound cake because then you cut that whole well, step. Oh my gosh, uh, you it know, doesn't even look hard to re, re, it looks delicious. Something Savannah so, and I could make, we're happy. Yeah. All right. We you just layer it kind of like lasagna. All right. Cake, jam, cream, re, and then you wind we up. We love you. We love you. We can't wait for your book to come out. Thank you for cooking for us. Uh, you can check out Thank her you, recipes girls. at today.com slash food. this, Jeffrey, that your two young girls are authors at ages 13 and 11? 
Uh, yeah, I just want to say the picture of the cookbook is probably like a year ago, kind of. So they're like growing every day like apples. And yes, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It's incredible. I'm, I'm blessed and I'm so proud of them. Well, Madeline and Anna, what are your favorite things about cooking with your dad? Um, I love family time and I would just love cooking with you because it's so fun. I let, just love cooking. Does he let I, you do things yeah. or d does he kind of take over and say, honey, like this, do it like that? It, yeah, it's sort of like do, if I'm just in the kitchen, I can do it, but sometimes he has OCD in the kitchen. So. <laughs> Anna, what do you think about cooking with the big man? He, it's really fun. He teaches me a lot of like new trip, tricks and like tips with Aww. everything. Well, okay, so we want to hear, you guys are making an apple crumble. Do y'all ever go to the orchards yeah. and pick apples? Every yes, year. all the time. We love it. And there are so many apples out there. And today we are going to use uh, Cortland's to make an apple crumble. And it's very simple. This is a sort of a foolproof method. If you mess it up, the peeling or whatever it is, don't worry about it. So I'm just taking a Cortland apple. I'm going to show you how to peel it just top down like that. Very simple. Top down. And, okay. Uh, and if you want to do this ahead of time, what I recommend is you take a bowl of water and put some lemon in it and just drop the apples yes. in that. What's that way it keeps it from browning. Very oh. easy tip. And I'm going to show you that it doesn't matter if I leave a little on, it's fine. Another tip I like to show is how to core. Now, a lot of people take that core and dig and all that. That's way too much work. I just put it right on top end. You can go down like three or four times. Yeah, just cut right? around it. Just like that. And voila. Boom. Okay, that's done. All then right. I'm going to cut it in some slices and give it over to my girls, and they're going to show you the rest. Okay. Okay. So What's this is next, like a guys? little moving factory we got going on here. We okay, like so it. Here you go. Here you go, Anna. Want to pass that down? Yes. Put the rest. Okay, I think that's good. So I have some apples here, and I have buttered a baking pan. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to add some cinnamon, mm -hmm. some sugar, mm. of course. And you're just gonna mix that up, yeah. try and not spill it everywhere. And Madeline, could you use brown sugar if you'd prefer it for the crumble? Yes, you could absolutely use brown sugar. Okay, good yeah. to know. <laughs> okay, and, and then, then uh -huh. I am going to pour it in, and I'm gonna fill about three fourths of the way. I, I'm gonna, I, there's, I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that looks yeah. beautiful. So now we're gonna start with our crumble. This is the topping of the apple crumble. So we have flour dried oats, brown sugar, cinnamon, mm. salt, and then this butter, you want to chill your butter before so you can um, cut it into small cubes. Yeah. So yep. I've already added everything in, and then you can just mix it with your hands oh, with like your that. your fingers, yes. just crumble that up. Uh, you have kids, this would be great for the kids. Yeah, it's <laughs> really something good. we could do. By it the way, it does look foolproof. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty surprised that this is, all we, this is all we need. Okay, now what do you do, guys? You want it to be so, sort of like a sandy consistency in these Butter Things pebbles. of butter pebbles yeah. are really good. Yes, yeah, they are. So we're just going to add Oh, this looks top. so good. I cannot wait to eat this. We Unlike can... a pie, this takes a lot less Thank work. You. Unlike now, Jeffrey, a pie. Jeffrey, th though, let's just get, settle one thing. Wouldn't you say that a crumble and no, a pie... No, do not wait. Do not, do not tilt the scales. Jeffrey, is a crumble the same thing as a pie? I said, is a crumble related to a pie? <laughs> like brothers and sisters. You know, I know, it's it's I, it, I think it has its own sort of strata because what this is is pretty much the same ingredients. You have flour and all that stuff. Thank you, you might have some more things. In. But this is much simpler. You don't have to roll it and toast it and uh, you just pop it in the oven. Watch, they're going to hand this to me and like in about four minutes, we've done it, right? It's a pie that's takes it? More time. So four 350 minutes? degrees, one hour, take it out. Let it cool a bit because it's got to stop bubbling and get all nice and perfectly set. Okay. Sort of like lasagna. Ooh. So look at that, let's how see, delicious that gorgeous. is. So we're going to cut that and go in deep and try. Oh, girl. Because it is apple season and the big apple. Yeah. Oh, so now tell me, do you Wait, add a little ice cream? You got to add, add a little ice cream. a little ala mode to that, Madeline, Anna? Yes. yes. It's so uh, good. You could always do add anything you'd like to do. Yeah. Yeah. Even is in it the morning, so good? you could add ice cream. Oh, so good. Yeah. Cool. Oh, this I wish like we could have some. Yeah, this is sad. <laughs> this is real sad, y'all. All right, well, you've inspired us. We'll be us. back soon. All right. Thank you, guys. Girls, you all are great. We wish you a long... We can't wait till you can come to our studio and, cook and with talk us. about yeah. your book and cook with us. And, Jeffrey, you can come, too. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
how fortunate I am to be joined by not one master chef, but two oh, master yes. chefs oh, here heard. in the kitchen. First, it's celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian. He's the host of the new Food Network show, Big Restaurant Bed, and of course, Savannah, who has her own cooking show <laughs> called Don't Eat That. No, you will get stop sick. it. <laughs> no, don't eat that unless you, know you have Pepto. I want you to support me on my cooking don't journey. Don't eat like, that. Like oh, GZ does. Yeah, so unless would, a bathroom is nearby. Oh, stop anyway, it. Anyway, Jeffrey, we're so Hi. happy you're Thank here. You. Nice to be here. Are Thanks. you happy to be in, among the so midst happy. of a chef? I, I love the show, what you're doing, and it's really incredible because it's really hard to teach someone. Like without like getting in there, like hold I know, your... but the only way to learn is to actually. That's right. Do, do you think she could do? Um, could we cook this? Absolutely. You ready? We're gonna yeah, do I'm a ready. spring mushroom How do you... pea pasta. Okay. Careful. So slice, be careful. With that. She's she's first pointing of all. a knife at me. Don't, well, that's don't gesticulate with okay. a knife. That's first thing. Okay. Slice. Okay, slice. Okay, I'm gonna put some shallots in here with garlic. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple pasta, and I'm making it real time. What do I have first? Pasta is down in the water and it's very salted. So okay. when you want to salt pasta, you want to, it, the water should taste what? like the ocean. Remember, very it's good. Okay. Like okay. Water should taste. I'm going to move a little mushroom. closer. The to mushrooms are going in here. Okay. Can I okay. help you, Jeffrey? Okay. We'll put those in here. So our mushrooms, shallot, garlic, very simple. Okay. Let them soften. You don't have to be crazy. Just leave it there. Medium How's my heat. slicing. Fantastic. Oh, oh, Savannah. So you want to make sure that they're evenly sliced so they cook and they look like this. Look how oh, I would eat that alone. Okay, right so here. we're going to add to this some white wine. Go. Mm. And a little I'm bit of with white wine. pasta water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not all of it, just a little bit. And why a pasta water? Because pasta water has all the starch from the pasta. Mm. And guess what? It and helps. You know that silky? Yeah. That silky pasta you get at a restaurant, you don't know why is it so silky. It's yeah. not like that. And that's why. So Can we're going to reduce it. it. Not quite yet because we don't want those to go brown. So these are peas. You could do frozen peas or fresh peas. Okay. If fresh, you could blanch them for a second. But honestly, take them right out of the, right out of the freezer. freezer. It's not? fine. Yeah. Just put them in. Okay. We have our pasta right here, boiling salted water. Mm -hmm. This is the sauce. And people don't understand. So the pasta next to the sauce. And all we do is we take the tongs, we don't throw... Now, I, let me just guess, and, and I'm not a master chef, but this is al dente. Al dente, to the bite, to the bite. Mm. So it's about a minute away from being fully cooked, and we're going to put it in here and just finish oh. it how beautiful. in here. And that's how you fit every pasta that you have in a restaurant that you like. Is in the This is how it's done. Yes, it must. So you're it just going to give it a little toss. Yes. Give it, can you do a little toss? Yeah, Be some, okay, okay. You know how to do it. Oh, okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Oops. Okay. Sorry, oh y'all. It's all right. Sorry. sorry. Oh, no. Uh, sorry. I'm going to fix it. Watch this. See this? I'm not going to take it off the pasta. Just like this. One, two, three, four. I'm Maybe sorry. you need to cook Then the comes the peas. <laughs> then comes... I didn't mean to make such a it's mess. It's okay. A little cheese. A little this. cheese. <laughs> and because it's a little dry <laughs> and we're missing some, yeah. we're going to add a little bit more exactly. pasta water. Watch this. Just like this. See, you right. even spill a little, and Just you're a minute. master chef. And then at the very end, a little. some chili. I love oh gosh, chili. Very so finely good. minced chili. And we're ready to go. We're going to add a little basil to it, all okay. right? And you're going to come over here and taste. Your oh. knife skills are excellent. Well, thank you so much. We're going to chiffonade. That's what that's called. And oh. there you have it. We are done. A oh, beautiful gosh. spring pasta. Be careful. Spring okay, pasta. you try to flip it. Let's see you flip it's it. Hard. And I want to see you some really, air. What you're doing is you're, not, you're really air. not flipping. You're really just... Folding, so yes. you Folding. just no, no. very small, very okay. small. Okay, why are you giving her tips? Okay, go flip. There you go, much better. <laughs> Excellent. Wow. Thank you. I right. learned so much. I'm we actually going to say that was great. Come on, I'm going to make it rain some okay. Pecorino <laughs> Romano, and this is yeah, your. Would you like a bite? Mm. Yeah, I would. Here you go. Yum. Right. That looks delicious. What kind of pasta do you use? Uh, fettuccine, mm. uh, it's yeah. a flat pasta, tagliatelle. Okay. Bon appetit. Do you Thank feel like you, you have so to much. make your pasta or no? You don't. Okay. Uh, you can make it, but you really don't have to oh, make okay. it. Possible. Okay, well, don't eat it. You have to read this tag. For this recipe and more, go to today.com slash food. Mm. Back now, 8.50 with Today Food. And this morning, not one, but two easy weeknight recipes that you can make on a budget. We've got a classic ratatouille, and we also have a special technique for roasted chicken. Celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian here to show us how it's done. He, of course, is the... The host of the new Food Network show, Big Restaurant Bet, GZ, welcome back. Thank you so much. Nice to be back. Before we get into it, Chef, we, we, I, we've got to weigh into this debate here. Uh-oh. Um, I don't know if you saw this tweet from Stephen King earlier. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Apparently, Stephen... The Stephen King? The Stephen <laughs> King. He is taking Renowned salmon. Renowned Horrifying, GZ. Get ready. He's taking salmon. He's wrapping it in a paper towel and, and microwaving it for three minutes. What say you to that? Absolutely. What? What? Yes. Why not? 
It's a it, really gentle way of cooking. Because it's salmon. a 1982 device. <laughs> no, it really works. I cook fish in the microwave all the time because you don't have to put any butter. It doesn't. You don't have to use so, a utensil. I'm shocked. I know. No, it works. Well. Really and it works. Doesn't smell. No, well, well, it might, but it might, fish. but it, yeah. it, it okay. is fish. <laughs> All right, well, Chef is apparently team It's very good. All right. Vegetables, too. Asparagus is great. Spinach is great in the microwave. Yeah, what? spinach is where I All the nutrients yeah. stay. There's no water wow. loss. You dump it in water. All the nutrients go in the water. All right. There you go. Well, let's get into All a right. more, more traditional way of food preparation. Okay. Here. So, spatchcock. We're going to make spot. What does that mean? <laughs> it's a fancy name for a flattened chicken. Oh. Uh, we're going to do it. So, we take a regular chicken. I'm using gloves, so it's more sanitary. I'm just going to go down the back. Yeah. And that's the, that's the back of the chicken. And you can go either way. You can use a knife, but I've decided to use oh, some yeah. kitchen shears. Yeah. Okay. And what I'm going to do. Just like this. Oh, wow. Very easy. That's it. This is safe for the stock of chicken okay. stock. We don't throw anything away. Right. And uh, then you just put it like this. Oh, you, oh wow. You yeah. hear that? Wow. Hey, I know. I know it's like hard. Chicken, I, I, know. Oh. I know it's hard. So, so we, what's the benefit of cooking chicken that way? <laughs> well, it so cooks speaking in. Speaking of a Stephen King horror. <laughs> <laughs> You're worried about salmon oh, in the microwave. I'm, I'm cracking chicken over here. Jeez. Okay, salt and pepper. Oh, mercy. Uh, great question. Really, really easy because what happens is you get half the time. So a normal chicken like this would take about uh, 45 to an hour. It's about a three and a half pound bird. Yeah. You want to season with authority. You really have to. And it takes half the time. So oh, for this wow. to get up to 155, 160 eternal will be about 30 minutes, 35 oh, wow. minutes. Now, very important, hot cast iron pan. Skin side down, okay? And let's go over here. You can see what we're doing. We have this going. Beautiful, now we're gonna turn it over. And you wanna help me with this? Be careful. That's right. Watch out. We'll get a jumper. <laughs> okay. And put some, put the lemon. I like to put the lemon skin, uh, flesh side right there. Just put it in whole. Yeah, and what okay. happens, it gets nice and caramelized. Mm -hmm. You have a beautiful caramelized lemon. Let's stuff, there's no rules. Okay. If you have thyme and rosemary, fine. Whatever if you, you don't. Get, just throw anything it in there. that's a hard herb, like, you know, savory or, or sage or bay leaves or stuff like this, I love this. And then you just, Cook it till 165, very gently. Okay. What's the verdict over there? It's so juicy. incredible. It's so oh, so good, right? So, how is, how, what's the relationship between like quality chicken and technique in which you cook chicken? The relationship. Oh, that is good. Like, is this a fancy chicken that no one no. at home can get? No. So you want to cook the chicken to 155, 160. If you can do that and use a digital thermometer, it's pretty hard to me mess, up mess up a bird, okay? That's good it might cook a little longer, a little less, but you, you pretty much, so pretty much, it's so juicy. Yeah, yeah, you can go in the oven or sit oh. here, but I put it in the oven. Well, you let's ready? get down to this ratatouille. Let's cut it down like this, and there we go. Right. There you have it. Okay, ratatouille, one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite things <laughs> to do. <laughs> okay, so basically, this is great with vegetables that are, aren't at their prime, they're a little over. Oh. And that's, I got this from my mom and from when I worked in France. They don't throw away anything. And if you have a you couple of. You mean they're not in season or you they're mean they're in season, gone but they might be a little or wilted or like, yeah, not yeah. stale, okay. right. but a little wilted, not their anyway. best. Starting. This is a great relation. This is a great vegetarian dish. So we're taking eggplant, pepper, zucchini, yep. onion. And what I like to do is heat them in a cast iron pan separately. Why separately? Because when you put them all together, it's mush. So what we oh. do is we season it. We don't season, we just put them in there and then we sear them off. Separately. So, so you cook each vegetable yeah. oh, but it, wow. in the same pan, okay. and then we sear the, uh, the eggplant, the onion, the pepper, and here we have all of them right now, all together, mm -hmm. already seared. And we're going to just add our last ingredients. And so this is such a fantastic dish. Onions. Onions. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pepper. Peppers. Yeah. Oh. As they say in my town, Boston, garlic. <laughs> garlic. <laughs> garlic. Okay, stir that around. Thyme, bay leaf, tomatoes. Now, a lot of people would put stock or water in this. You so no, no. You're gonna see it looks dry, yeah. but once you bake it, once you bake it, all the water in the vegetable, wow. which are mostly really vegetables good. are mostly water, comes out. And look what That's you have. So this gorgeous. How long do you bake it? This is about an hour. About an hour, okay. hour and ten minutes. But you want it to look kind of like it's Beautiful. a little over. Mm -hmm. And I like to serve this room temperature to warm. And when you grate this, you can put some Parmesan That's cheese on it. Mm. She, let, me, let me make it rain for you. Oh, uh, <laughs> rain. I love, it. I love it when they and rain. Maybe a little olive oil. Thank you, sir. It's Chef, a fantastic you. dish. Jeffrey, really thank delicious. you for the, wow. this recipe and more. Yeah. It's today.com slash food. Stick around. Jeffrey's going to be back in the fourth yes. hour with a healthy and hearty pasta dish. Pasta. Thumbs up. Healthy. Uh -oh. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Oh, thank you.
You know the saying, mm. chicken soup is good for the soul, especially in the cold months. And someone who loves chicken soup so much he makes it for his family all the time is celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian. He's the co-host of the Food Network's The Kitchen. Right now he's in his kitchen. He's at home in Florida. Hey, Jeffrey. Hi, I'm sorry I'm in Florida. It's 50 here, but I, I know it's really cold there. You know, that's know. just We uh, didn't know you lived in Florida, and now we're kind of angry. And You're jealous. tan. Look at your tan. No, I, I'm tan all the time. You know that. Anyway, <laughs> everybody loves a good chicken soup, and what I'm doing here is I'm going to do a mashup, right? I'm doing a chicken noodle ramen mashup, mm. and the reason why I like it is you talk about healthy eating, New Year, really delicious, but also yummy. I mean, food has to be yummy. I don't know about you guys, but yes. if it's not yummy, I don't want it. But look at this. Look at all these gorgeous vegetables. Mm. That's right from the market. Beautiful. There's nothing fancy here. Carrots, parsnips, some onions, some leeks, some great herbs and ginger. And it's very simple. So let's start with our vegetables, okay? So we're going to make sure our vegetables are cut evenly. Why? Because they cook evenly. Really important. Oh, but all a soup the same size. Is that makes sense. All yes. the same size. A soup is so easy. Just follow these techniques and you're going to be very, very happy. And the addition to making this soup is you get leftover stock that you can freeze. Okay, we're gonna take our celery, our carrots, we're gonna just cut them on the bias like this, very simply, and it's very easy once they're lined up together to make sure they're, they're the same, same size, really yeah. easy. So we've taken our leek and um, what you make sure you cut it open and you wash it because there is dirt in there mm -hmm. and just follow the same yeah. methodology. Just a nice, probably this is quarter inch, I'm just guessing quarter inch, but everything's gonna be ready at the same time. So it shouldn't take that long to cook a proper soup. The stock takes the most time. It's like cooking the chicken takes about like an hour. Now parsnips, I love parsnips, guys, because they have a sweetness that is just uh -huh. yeah, remarkable. So, hey, hey Jeffrey, crispy and Jeffrey, yummy. Why, why leeks instead of like another kind of onion? Here's a tip. Leeks have less sulfur than onion, so your stock stays lighter. It doesn't darken. You know, sometimes it oh. turns really brown, and I use leeks. It's a little secret of a chef. Okay. All right. So, are you ready for the big ready. deal? Yes, let's, let's cook, cook a chicken. chicken. Yes, sir. Very easy. We have our veggies. We're going to go over by, by the, my beautiful wife is holding the camera. She's the camera person today. So, we have a pot, a very big pot, and we're going to put it on high. And we're using a four-pound chicken just like this. Use a tong so you don't have to touch the chicken. And just put that right in there. All right? And then, another secret, guys, chicken wings. Oh, tons of gelatin and tons of meat. There's tons of meat on chicken wings. We're going to put those wait, in. Oh, wait, and then, okay, sorry. You we, had us until we, you said we, the word gelatin. For a second. What does gelatin. that mean? Gelatin. Gelatin is that stuff that umami you taste when you smell soup that your uh, mom's oh. cooking or your grandmother cooked. And the schmaltz is the chicken fat. So all that together okay. is loaded in those chicken wings. And then chicken word. stock. Now, you just cover this. Notice, no water, no salt, no pepper, nothing at all, just chicken stock. Mm. You could use water, but I like to get it up just a bit, just jab it a bit. And I put a touch of white wine vinegar or Ooh. wine. You don't have mm -hmm. to, just a little acid. Now, we're gonna let that chicken go for about an hour. Once it comes out, we're gonna put it on a rack, let it cool, and then we're gonna take all this delicious yes, chicken off. peel it off. So, you take the bones out, or you, yeah. I right. take the bones out, everything, okay. and then we have our beautiful stock. And remember those veggies we cut perfectly? Yes. I know you know how to do that now. Yeah. All right. We're just going to slide that slide in there. Away. And magic, a couple of peas. You take frozen peas. Oh. I think this is going to probably take 10 minutes. You have all the flavor there. The miso is really special. The miso is soybean paste. It gives a little saltiness. It's really, really delicious. Where's so the ramen? We the ramen. Ah, where's the ramen? It's coming. All right. So remember, we have our soup, our beautiful veg, our vegetables are in there. Mm -hmm. And like, can you get in there, Margaret, and take a look at that? How Pretty. gorgeous that looks. Margaret. Margaret. Oh. Yeah, good shot. Are no. you ready? Okay, yeah, we need the ready. ramen, though, because we came for the ramen. Yes. You came for the ramen. So we're going to take a big bowl. I like to serve this in giant bowls. I have our pre-cooked ramen. Oh. This is beautiful. Whole wheat ramen. I just oh, you put that in the bottom. Whole, where do you buy whole wheat ramen? Anywhere? Ah, uh, there's tons of it. Tons of it. Oh. You can use regular. But I like the whole wheat, right? Yeah, it's and better I'm gonna, for you. Now we're gonna have yeah. some fun. Now we're doing the mashup part, right? Oh. We're gonna pour this glorious, healthy, Ooh, gorgeous soup ramen. on top. That yum. Oh, ramen. That. Takes me back to my college yes. days. Yep. Right, and then some Sprinkle chicken. Now I choose to top. put the chicken mm. on. Oh, the chicken Just like this. I don't put the chicken in the stock because I don't want it to get overcooked. And a lot of people store their chicken Neither in the we. stock. Yeah. And, yeah. And what happens, it gets overcooked. And now, the secret. Now we have fun. Now we have our scallions. It's uh -huh. going to be like we're making a froth. Press it up. Yes. We're going to put some 
some beautiful pea shoots, some scallions, some bamboo shoots. Have fun here. I'm using whatever I found at the uh, at the farmer's market uh -huh. uh, or at the grocery market. Some radishes. Oh, oh, ginger. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, guys. Thank you. We Ginger, got a roll, Jeffrey. It looks so yummy. It really does. You did great. Thank you, Jeffrey. Bon appetit. Thank you, Thank you, Margaret. you Margaret. Tell your daughters, hey. All right. All right, guys. For this recipe, Bye. head to today.com slash food. <laughs>about what to make for lunch today, you're going to want to see what chef and author Jeffrey sakarian has got. Uh-huh, and this dish is one and done. And even better, it'll make use of all those veggies that you bought that you didn't use that are just sitting in the refrigerator. Okay, hi, Jeffrey. Hi, good morning, how are you? Good morning. Okay, before we get to this delicious dish, yes. which I'm into, yes. our whole producing team, including our executive producer, Joanne, cannot stop staring at your Instagram and evidently it's going viral. Hey. <laughs> what are you I, doing which here? Pro, which Instagram? <laughs> this, right here. You working out, putting us to shame. Oh, okay. What? Yeah, what? you know, I, I try to do that every Wednesday. I work out every day, but I try to do that every Wednesday. I did it as a joke first. People said, why don't you just post that? It'd be fun. And I did it. Now it's, it's you know, look what happens, right? Stuff you don't plan on, like the pandemic happens and yes. life changes. And so that was life changing, just like the pandemic. I mean, oh my God! Honestly, most of us just gained the COVID nineteen. So the fact that you speak put, for yourself, twenty five years. <laughs> the fact that you put those abs to work is is helpful because you're cooking up something really delicious today. You and we're are just so kind. Yeah. we're ready to eat. We sure are. Okay, what are well, you cooking? This, is, this couldn't be easier. This is a Manhattan corn chowder. So chowder is great, but you know it is summer. This is a hot or cold dish. It's fantastic. It's gluten free. And you can make it dairy free. You have a little butter. You can take the butter out. Olive oil. It's very simple. So yummy and so delicious. I like to call it a one pot wonder. Come over here. I'm going to show you. Oh, I like very that. simple. Uh, I am just in a pot, any kind of pot. You don't have to have a fancy pot. I put carrots, onions, leeks, celery, a little chili pepper, and garlic. Ooh, I'm yeah. sweating it. Now, this is the base for any soup in the world gumbo, chowder, chicken noodle, whatever you want. Then all I do to that, very simple is I'm going to add some tomato paste, some fresh thyme. Mm -hmm. You can use whatever herb you like. Some, uh, a little bit of canned tomato that's pureed. Ooh, yes. And then very simply stock. Now, I like to use vegetable stock. I, I find it very um, sort of neutral in flavor. Yeah. But you can use water. Yes, you can use water. And during the pandemic, I cook most things with water because I don't want to have to keep running out and getting stock. All right? So then you just add your potatoes. Wow. And 25 minutes until the potatoes are cooked, and then add the corn at the very end, about five minutes, because you want that bite on the corn. And summer corn is coming. You can feel it. You can see it. Yeah. It's not quite there, but I'm, you can use any corn. A great tip when you're using store-bought corn, make a soup, because it doesn't matter. The, it, the, is the it soup turns is the that, corn into magic. Is, 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 that 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 frozen? Frozen? is that frozen corn, or where do you get no, that corn? No, that's just corn I took out of a cob. I bought it oh, at the supermarket, oh completely peeled and shucked and wrapped. And it was, it's fine. So I'm going to let this cook for about 35, 40 minutes total. Jeffrey, I have a question for you. This. Look at this. I like my chowders Ooh. a little creamier. What would I add to it that would give me that, that you know, that white, yeah. creamy-looking moment? 
Absolutely. So this is a Manhattan chowder. We've substituted uh, cream with tomato. Mm. So you simply take out the tomato, put the cream in it, and boom, and you're, happier. you're at that's your, you're that's at your happy he's, place. He's yeah, from that's the my South, thing. so he wants a little cream, you know? <laughs> no problem. I love cream, too. But, you know, this is summer's coming, and, you know, we'll, we want our abs to look, you know, kind of okay, right? <laughs> oh, for sure. And you know what I love about this? It seems like one of those recipes that you can freeze and save yes. for later. Yes. Absolutely. And plus, I serve this with my fried chickpea salad, some toasted garlic bread. Yeah. It's a meal. It's a soup meal. And people kind of forget about real hearty soups mm. can be still healthy. Gluten-free, dairy-free, if you want, just take the butter out. And you have, like, everything in here. And with a salad, you have a perfect composed meal. And by the way, it's so easy to cook for company, easy to cook for kids, easy to cook for anybody. Anybody. Um, so, Jeffrey, is there anything in the kitchen that you cannot live without? Anything in the kitchen I can't yes, live without. Tell probably, us. Uh, probably. <laughs> that's a really that tough marble. question. Come on, anything. Uh, yeah, he, he probably, thinks your actual kitchen looks good. Yes. Well, at the kitchen is something that's really fundamental. You need fundamental good equipment. So I always tell people, buy less, spend more, and you'll spend the same as you get all those other gadgets. So buy the mm. best, just don't buy a lot. So definitely like cast iron, anything at Le Creuset, anything Dutch oven-ish works. I love yeah. to have very, very good pans, but I don't have a ton of stuff because where are you going to put it all? Yeah. So I always say spend more, buy less, and you'll spend the same. I all think right. that's such a good idea because also yep. there's half the stuff stays in the back of the cabinet and you never even use it. <laughs> it's so right? true. Absolutely. It's so Absolutely. true. Absolutely. All Absolutely. Right. Well, Jeffrey, happy summer. Sending you so much love. Can't wait to try that, Jeffrey. Okay, to get this Thank recipe. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeffrey. Tell your girls hi. Cheers. To get this recipe, head to today.com slash food. It is one of the longest running food shows on the Food Network. Folks love watching. The up-and-coming chefs beat Bobby Flay, or at least they tried to. He's invited some fellow celebrity chefs to give it a go on his new show, Beat Bobby Flay Holiday Throwdown. And today, Bobby's going to throw down in our kitchen with some chicken parm. Everybody loves yeah. chicken parm. Yeah. Bobby, good to see you, man. Thank How you so you? much. So, so good to be here. Um, it's holiday season. It is. Yeah. Do you, do you cook a big turkey for Thanksgiving? I do. I do. Uh, I, Thanksgiving is my... Um, it's my favorite day of the yeah. year. Actually, I'm going to be here next week. Um, oh, good. Oh, in the yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to be a lot of food in this place. Okay, good. Oh, man. I'll, I'll be back crazy. then. Okay. I'll be back. So we're going to make chicken parm. This is okay. a dish, obviously, I, I call this chicken parmigiano as opposed to chicken parmesan. It's a little bit cleaner version of, of the classic. And I just put this on my menu uh, in, in Amalfi in okay. Las Vegas. Uh -huh. Okay, so a couple of things. You look like you're not going to cook. You have your hands oh, in your cooking, pocket. Dude. You want to do this? Oh, I okay. Love it. okay. chicken parm. So chicken cutlets. Okay. This is yep. this is classic. So um, flour, eggs, breadcrumbs, so, and so you set up a dredging station. You season every single. Um, oh, each of part them. of it. Okay, yes, exactly. Because otherwise it's bland. So you go. So the so the flour <laughs> to the. <egg. laughs> is that bad? I don't no, know. no. You're doing no, great. You, get in there, you right? can tell that Willie cooks. He's he's in there. Okay. And then and then and then the eggs hold on to the panko breadcrumbs. Exactly. Ah, and then you let that sit there for a second, beauty. and we just Come put on. it in the oil. I'm actually using avocado oil more these okay. days than canola oil. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, they say it's better for you, so I say, okay, why not? Okay, so... Are people laughing at my cooking? I, I think know. I'm doing great. I don't know. What are they laughing yeah, about? Get your hands dirty. Okay, so you want to make, yeah, make sure... Yeah, your hands. Really. So, so every, every culture has their own version of chicken cutlet, right? So we have... Um, <laughs> I've lost them. Thanks for coming. No, I'm, I'm with you. Okay, so then we so every every culture has their version of chicken cutlet. Obviously, this is sort of an American Italian version. We're gonna make tomato sauce. Okay. I have three ingredients in my tomato sauce: onions, garlic, and then some and some crushed them crushed tomatoes. And I let this cook for about 45 minutes. How do you, you just oh you press and them with then the potato I, and masher? I, and but first you let it cook for about 25 minutes so they soften. Okay. And then I crush them with a potato okay. masher so that it actually has texture. Yeah. Got and it. then I put like a little sugar. This is very controversial. Some people say don't ever put sugar in your tomatoes, but you know what? If they're acidic, you want a little sugar to yeah, bounce, why not? bounce it why out. Not? Okay. Okay. So then we have the chicken cutlet, and then I take some buffalo mozzarella. Mm, look at that. And I just put it right on look top. Look now, at that. now here's the thing that I do. You see, I leave some of the crispy bits uncovered because oh, yeah. we want that good contrast of texture. Crunchy, yeah. Exactly. We put it in the oven. I love this. I love this kitchen. You put it. You put it in this oven, and then it comes out of this oven Magic. right here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So here it is. So then we take some of the tomato sauce, and, uh, and instead of dousing it uh, all over the chicken and then ruining that crispiness, I put the tomato sauce on the bottom. And the then, cheese is melted uh, on top. 
And then see, it's, it's, a, it's a much That's cleaner so version. Yeah. A little bit That's of nice. fresh basil Ooh. and a whole bunch of Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. Look at that. May yeah. I start, Chef? Yes, yes you can. Must. And then some fresh arugula because this is a very healthy dish. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of just olive, olive oil, oil on top. And there we go. Mm. Nice sneak in here, Bob. Get in there. Let me Get try. In there. Get oh, in there. Bobby. Thank you. Is it yummy? Mm. So good. Yeah, Bobby. I mean, the, see, here's the thing. The really nice thing about it is you get wow. obviously the acidity mm. and the sweetness of the tomatoes. Mm. You get that crispy contrast, the mm -hmm. texture on the chicken, mm. and of course that fresh mozzarella. Is, and it is feels beautiful. a little light, which you can't always say for a chicken parm. Well, the thing about chicken parm, and, and you and I uh, sort of share that that love of chicken parmesan, you know, where it's kind of doused in all that cheese and yeah. tomatoes. Mm -hmm. But this is a to me, this is like a this is like a Tuesday night version of the Sunday night yeah. meal. There you yeah, go. exactly. I, um, did I hear you're in a movie? Wait, uh, what? Bobby Flay is in one let, delicious Christmas. Let me tell you Wait, something. Come on. I, yes, the come Oscar on. buzz has been so <laughs> overwhelming. Wait, wait I mean, <laughs> what are you talking? Who do you play yourself? This is, I play I play Tom Kingsley, who is a uh, a food critic. Uh, it's called One Delicious Christmas. Um, yes, they wanted me to act. I said, don't do it, but they said, please do it. So here it is. So when do you see that? And where? Uh, it's coming on uh, November 11th, Discovery Plus. Oh, um, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, yeah exactly. Plus. Oh, That's yes. So cool. so, uh, viewing everywhere. There'll be viewing parties Everyone's all over the place talking about for it. One Delicious Christmas. Exactly. Bobby, How do you really feel about a food critic, though? I love food life. critics. Okay. Yes, Good. we love food critics. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. Make this recipe at home. Go to today.com slash food. Thanks, Bobby. Great to see you. We're back with Today Food, and one of our very favorite guests, our pal, Bobby Flay. Oh, I'm so excited. He's hey, an award-winning chef, the author of 216 best-selling 216? And we At can't least. forget about his hit show, <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. By the way, new episode tonight, where two chefs go head-to-head in the kitchen for a chance to face off against the master himself. This morning, Bobby is sharing a fantastic pasta dish with us. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Flay. Good to see you guys. Bobby. Bobby. Thanks for waking up yeah. uh, early. What are, yeah. what are we cooking, honey? So we're making uh, we're making a baked pasta. It's one of those dishes that I think is fantastic for like a Sunday night meal. It's very, very comforting. And it's something that uh, can feed the whole family. So let's get started. It's going to be rigatoni. It's going to be some hot Italian sausage, some broccoli rob, and some tomato sauce. A little vodka sauce in there as well. So I'm going to start off by cooking some rigatoni uh, and some salt and water. You know, you've seen this a million on the Today Show, lots of salt in your water. Make sure it's boiling, abundance of water. We're gonna cook the rigatoni for about eight or nine minutes. Well, while that's cooking, we're gonna get our, get our sauce going. So we have some hot Italian sauces that I've cooked off a little bit, some tomato sauce. I've made my own, um, but if you have a good, uh, a good quality tomato sauce that you like, you can definitely use that as well. And we're gonna add a little bit of vodka. This is that, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the most classic Italian-American pasta dishes is pasta alla, alla vodka. It's basically a tomato sauce with a little bit of vodka in it and um, a touch of cream. So it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a pink sauce. Really delicious. What does the vodka yeah, do to it? Question. What's that? What does the vodka do to it, Bobby? The vodka actually helps emulsify the cream in the tomato sauce so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't separate. It's, uh, it, it's sort of a binder in, in, in a sense. And also, it's like, I mean, who doesn't want to cook with vodka? I mean, there you go. <laughs> Oh. So, so, so basically, you're making like a creamy tomato sauce with the with the hot Italian sausage, and then um, just because we want to make sure that it's nice and healthy, I'm going to put some broccoli rub in there as well. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to take this sauce. I'm going to pour it right over the cooked pasta. This is some rigatoni that I had, you know, cooked ahead of time. Okay. So we're just going to we're going to cover the uh, the pasta in the sauce, and I'm going to add some fontina cheese to it. Yum. And this is all going to go into a casserole dish. And I mm. love cooking things, I, you know, I call it oven to table, where, you, where you, you, know, you create something in the kitchen, you put it in an earthenware or some sort of uh, oven-proof dish like mm -hmm. this one. So, Bobby, you did, put, did you cook that pasta al dente because it's going to be cooking longer in the oven? Yes. That's actually, I thought that's a great point. You want to cook it a little bit undercooked, so maybe like three quarters of the way because it's going to sit in the sauce, it's going to bake in the oven at about 350 degrees, and on top, we're going to put some fresh, some, some grated mozzarella and some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and then we're going to go to the oven. Hey, Bobby, how do you keep it, keep, it keep it from sticking on the bottom? Oh, it's not going to stick because, we, you know, there's lots of tomato sauce in there. It's going to be totally fine. Oh, and actually, if it, um, if it gets a little crusty on top, that's actually a good thing. It's like, you know, like when you have the lasagna, and the, and, and the edges and the crispiness mm -hmm. on the round, what mm -hmm. you always want to have part of it. You get, you definitely get a little bit of this as well. You want to let this bake in the oven about 350 degrees for, 
I don't know, about 15 to 20 minutes, because don't forget, the pasta's already cooked, the sauce is already hot, we're just heating it up, and then at the last second, for the last three or four minutes, turn your oven up to oh. broil, mm. pour yourself a Cook the time. This is part of the recipe, by the way. And then take out your, uh, take out your, your pasta, and you can see, this is what it's gonna look like. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I hope That's what I'm that talking about. Oh. Here, if you're watching this at home. Make Fresh this. herbs. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, it's delicious. Make, Man, make it about this weekend. Yeah. And then basically, you know, you can just take like, take a little bit and just try to kind of put it in a bowl. Look at that, nice and chewy, uh, cheesy. Yeah. Just look at that. That's I mean, good. after looking at that, Bobby, it's amazing that anybody beats you on Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. How's it going over there? Beat Bobby Flay is great. We've done uh, we've done close to 400 episodes, Jeez. which is insane. <laughs> but I have to tell you, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, it's so great to be able to welcome, you know, you know, chefs from all over the country to come in and, and take me down. It's actually way more fun when I lose because the chefs are so excited. It's great for their community when they win. You, you know, they usually have like all these, they have like viewing parties in their in their local community. It's great. Be Bobby Flay has been so much fun for me for the last, does, I don't know, does six, your, seven years. Does your girlfriend like watching it? <laughs> You guys, Carson asked me if my girlfriend was awake. Oh. The only person awake right now in L.A. is me cooking baked pasta for you. It's 5.50 in the morning. How yeah, well, if you would just yeah. pull that sausage out of that dish, then she'd have a dish that she could eat if you were a little more thoughtful. Um, oh. Actually, Carson, you know what? You, you've actually done your research because Christi Christina does not eat meat. I know that. Yes. So if you take the sausage out of here, she's all good. There you go. We just put a, well, we just put up a picture over there. As well, <laughs> well he, last time Bobby was on, he was very secretive about this whole relationship. Yeah, like, then he spilled his guts to People Magazine. Now it's fair game. Oh, so she's yeah. a lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely yeah. lady. Hey, Bobby, real quick. We, we loved your restaurants in New York yeah. City. So amazing over the years. Anything new on the horizon? Anything we can look forward to? In New York City, um, well, we're, we're sort of in the wait and see kind of thing right now for New York because, you know, I've, I've always had restaurants in New York my entire adult life. And, uh, you know, we're just going to see what happens. You know, I just opened the Malfi in Las Vegas about five or six months ago. That's going really well. And uh, listen, you know, New York has my heart. So at mm -hmm. some point, we'll be back there. All right. We'll All right. To Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Morning on Today Food, the one and only Bobby Flay. For decades, we've watched him create some of our favorite dishes on countless TV shows and more than a dozen cookbooks. His latest is called Sundays with Sophie, and it takes us inside the Flay family kitchen, a collection of dishes inspired by meals with his daughter, Bobby. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this has got to be near and dear to you. You're, like, does Sophie cook too? You've been teaching her your skills? Yes, yeah, she, she does. So Sundays with Sophie, Sophie's basically standing in for everybody. The, oh. the idea is that it's, you know, it's Sunday meals or just meals for the family around the table. And actually, I, I devised a lot of these recipes during the quarantine because, like everybody else, I was cooking three meals a day at home. 
home. And so the recipes are incredibly simple and they're really built for the home cook. Oh, good. I love that. Okay, yeah. simple. You had me at hello. Okay. Talk about this poached egg. This okay. is cacio pepe poached eggs. Coche, uh, cacio pepe <laughs> poached eggs. So cacio pepe simply means cheese and pepper. Yes. We usually see it classically on pasta. Yeah. But everybody's cacio pepe everything. Now, at this is this point. a breakfast or is this, I know, is this breakfast or is this dinner? Um, no, like, this, this, is like, this is like breakfast or brunch or okay. like it could definitely be like a late night. Listen, I, I, there's plenty of times I love. I love uh, you know eggs for dinner. Me too. And so basically, what I do is I make a vinaigrette. This is very okay. very simple. So it's some white vinegar, some honey, some shallots. Mm -hmm. Okay. This reminds me of what we did our cooking thing together. I know. Remember? I know. I know. Do you want me to stir that? I can do that. Yeah, now. sure. Go right ahead. <laughs> exactly. Look at me whisking. And then some olive oil. And then we're going to add some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, of course. And then some mm. cracked black pepper. So okay. there, there's the cheese, there's the cacio and the pepe, so to speak. I mean, this is black delicious pepper. right here. And this is our little dressing. Exactly. Okay. There you go. So then we're going to poach some eggs. And a lot of people are. Cont are I'm intimidated. Intimidated. All right, show me. So it's, it's two ingredients. One of them is water, the <laughs> other is some vinegar. Okay. okay. And the vinegar is going to help the egg. This is my big word of the day coagulate the egg. Oh, so okay. They have, so it kind of breathes <laughs> it to A little bit. Do you guys know how to poach an egg? Al, I know no, you. No. Raise no. your hand if you can poach no, an egg. No. Al can. Oh, oh I, okay, yeah. Al poaches eggs with his eyes closed. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so we're going to just, and, and, and here's a little tip. I, I crack the eggs and I first put it into a little ramekin because mm -hmm. if I break it, I don't want to put it in here. Oh, true. And a lot of times you do that if you just, you just kind of go right into the water. Okay. So we're going to let those poach. They poach for, you know, just like, a, I don't know, three or four minutes. And, and, and the best thing to do is kind of just do a little whirlpool so it gets a, gets a okay. really beautiful shape. Seems like it'd be hard to get those out. Oh, no, they come them. right out. Really? As okay. You, <laughs> as soon as you can get them out, you just take them out. It's very, very simple. Okay. Should be no problem. Okay. okay. We have some toast over here. All right. Okay. So. Um, sourdough bread, some kind of country loaf. Mm -hmm. I like mine like slightly thick, maybe, I don't know, maybe an, sort of like uh, an inch and a half or so, or so like that. And then just some, you know, good quality olive oil mm -hmm. on the bread. Yeah. And then some salt and pepper. And this is one of the things that people forget when they're making toast, don't forget to season it as well. Okay. Salt and okay. pepper your toast. Like bring out the flavor of that delicious oh, yeah, bread I, that you I have. I never do that. Okay. Exactly. Good call. Okay. So we have the toast. I put a little more. I, I, I you take, just roast this in the oven, or you I'm put sorry, this in like yeah. the toaster oven? So you can oven. put it in the oven. You can put it under the broiler, okay. or you can just put it in a toaster. Got it. I think a toaster is probably the <laughs> best case okay. scenario, yeah. right? Yeah. It works. Yeah. What's happening over here? Should we get these out? Uh, you can do that if you want, but we're down here. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was just want, concerned about that. This is this is Savannah <laughs> in the kitchen right here. <laughs> this is the She's Coming to Food Network. Um, <laughs> okay, so we have uh, some a garlic clove, and I just rub the garlic clove a little bit on, okay. the, on the bread, just to give it a little bit of flavor. Yep. You know, this is a very savory meal. A little more olive oil, mm. and then we take our poached eggs, and we put the poached eggs right on top. Whoops! Mm. Right on top of our our bread. Okay. And then we take our dressing. Yes. Okay. Now this is Ooh. the good stuff. And this dressing is where this is where all the flavor mm -hmm. comes in. Okay. Oh yeah. Just How pour that you right over there. Really good. Some Parmigiano. Oh my oh. God. Some fresh Boom. chives. I mean, come on. Can you make the dressing ahead of time? Though? Absolutely. And of course, you can use it for salads. Or you I was can about put it on to ask that. Vegetables. Anything. Absolutely. Very, very versatile. Okay. But this is what I was doing at home. It's like you know, so doing, you're at home. Like you just take the ingredients that you have in your cupboard and you make dishes. And, and this, this was one of them. Okay. Well, that looks. Should I have a bite? Yeah. I'm so yeah. worried about those other Dive eggs. in and go grab okay. them. Okay. I just so want to know yours. You got to cut okay, it. Okay. Here we go. You, someone else is going to have to read this. Gets gooey. Gets gooey. Uh huh. Gets gooey. Oh, oh, fantastic. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. So yummy, Bobby. Wow, that's a GIF right there. <laughs> Someone's working on it. You can catch wow. Bobby again on, the third on hour. our third hour. You can also get us recipes today.com slash
We're sporting it today with food. Our friend Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay is here with an easy meal to make the entire family happy. He's also out with a new show. It's called Bobby's Triple Threat. It's where he challenges some really talented chefs to go up against his hand-picked culinary That's titans. awesome. Mm. He also has a brand new cookbook out. It's called Sundays with Sophie that he wrote with the help of his little daughter. Aww. Bobby, always good to have. It's not really fair to call Sophie little anymore. No, she's 26. Yeah. 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 But That's she'll, be, she'll be calling you after this. Yes. <laughs> yes, Sophie. Yeah. Um, what was the impetus behind the cookbook? Well, you know, I, I did all these recipes because during quarantine, like everybody else, I was cooking three or four meals a day right. at home. And, and finally, I actually decided to write them down. Hmm. But, but the great thing about it is I was basically utilizing all the things at my fingertips. And so the recipes are incredibly simple. It's really a, you know, Sophie, it's Sundays with Sophie, but Sophie's basically standing in for everybody. Okay. It's, it's, they're they're okay. family meals. Mm -hmm. So what are we making? So we're today making we're making a creamy rigatoni. We have some spicy sausage in there as well. Ooh. Some roasted eggplant. So it's mm. it's mm. it's healthful. It's spicy. It's it's got big flavors and it's easy to make. So people tend to be afraid of eggplant. They do tend to be uh, afraid of eggplant. But it's actually this is a, actually a very quick and easy way to cook it, Al. Just take a little bit of olive oil over some diced eggplant. I put a little salt and pepper, and so you, you don't put even it. Peel it. No, you don't have to peel it. And okay. I put it in the oven. That's for, it. for about 30 minutes and it roasts okay. and it gets really nice and soft Ooh. and you can reserve it, okay? Then we have some spicy sausage that I saute and, uh, you know, get nice and brown, try to get a little color on the outside, mm -hmm. make sure it's cooked all the way through and then you have these sort of juices in the bottom and then because, you know, it's the fall, I, I, I want to make it sort of a little bit heady so I'm going to add a little red wine to start. Oh. What kind of wine do you use? Um, I use uh, a good table wine. It could okay. be a Pinot Noir or Cabernet, it doesn't really matter. And then you know something that you that you want to eat. Stand back just because yeah, I have stand a white by, dress on. Yeah, stand by. Give a white dress on, and then <laughs> and then and then some tomato sauce, mm. and then we you let the tomato sauce and the um, and the red wine cook together. Mm -hmm. Picks up all that flavor. Any secret to your homemade tomato sauce? Uh, three ingredients: onions, garlic, tomatoes. That's it. That's and it. A, and you taste them. If they're a little acidic, I, I put a pinch of sugar. I know that's controversial, mm -hmm. but like let's make let as long you know. Taste good. Exactly you, right. Do you Break like break them up in a blender, or do you? Just... I crush them with like a potato mash or okay. water cooking. Could you oh. use canned if you? I definitely use canned. Okay. okay. Absolutely, okay. canned tomatoes are good. So we have our roasted eggplant. We put it in here with the with the um, with the sausages and the tomatoes, mm -hmm. and then we have some rigatoni. It doesn't have you, to be rigatoni. Why do you like uh, the rigatoni? For this I like rigatoni because it has a little bite to it, you know, oh, okay. and and also the the holes running right. through it actually pick up some of the sauce. Then we're going to add a little uh, creme fraiche to this, oh my God. so we can make it creamy. Don't get that on your beautiful white dress. I know. I'm still standing back. Okay. Oh my goodness. And then Thank some you. Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. Mm. Oh, Bobby. Oh man. That's, Are you kidding? That's some money. basil. I'm here, I'm here. I'm here for oh comfort. Oh my God. I'm here for comfort. I'm very some comfortable. Fresh oregano. This is so good. Very, this is very comfortable. You guys, you're oh like, God. oh, let, let them cook. We're gonna go eat. That's, that's right. it. Yeah, we're like, that's enough, Bobby. Let's you need all that help. You guys have like a four-course meal every single day <laughs> on the show. It's the greatest like, place it's time in the world. To eat now, Bobby. But you were one of the first people in the last hour who actually made breakfast for us on, during a breakfast. We breakfast. were so taken aback. We like, breakfast. breakfast is very important in the morning. But look, it's so oh, it was pretty delicious. simple to make, and this is amazing. Thank you very much. And again, you know, I had some, I had some ingredients, and that's that's yeah. what I came up with. And so, and so, um, you know, the book is really about simple ingredients, mm -hmm. and it gets the family around the table. And yeah. to me, that's the most important. Which is thing. the most important. Yeah. Could you make like a double batch of the sauce and the sausage, and then freeze it? Al, absolutely. You can you can definitely freeze the sauce for sure, and then and then when you you know when you want to use it, you know, a couple weeks later or whatever, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. th thaw it out. But th this is also a great family style. This Big bowl so of this for Sunday oh, dinner. Man. Bobby, make it happen. Thank you, Bobby. The whole family will love this.
with Today Food, joined by one of our favorite chefs, Ooh. our Bobby Flay. That's right. He's got a new book out next week called Beat Bobby Flay. Conquer the Kitchen with 100-plus battle-tested oh. recipes. <gasps> Yeah, this morning, Bobby's teaching us how to win in the kitchen with one of his all-time favorite dishes. Bobby, just when you think you know everything about chili, you're going to do something. Is it a secret ingredient? Is it like, are you going to add some coffee grinds to it? Or are you going to, what are you doing? You're just taking the meat out? You're robbing us? Well, I, I, it is a vegetarian dish, but Carson, you have to understand, first of all, on Beat Bobby Flay, I don't get to decide what the signature dish that we're cooking is. It's the other chef. Oh, that's right. So I got challenged to vegetable chili, and also my girlfriend doesn't eat meat, so, you know, I got to adjust. Smart so man. how do you make it good? Works. Smart man. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. So come on over. So um, I'm going to start by making the base of the chili. Every, I always say everything good starts with onions and garlic. So we're going to start with some onions and garlic and then some tomatoes as well. And, of course, you need to bring some spices into the game. And, Bobby, so well, who's like your girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you buried the lead. I, I, wow. Just kidding. I, I, I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going to go there. Well, you brought it up. Uh, she will re she's going to rename uh, Nameless for now. Okay. But, but okay. thanks for asking. I'm just going to Google it. I'll have it by the end of the oh. segment. Wow. Yeah. All right. So the go chili ahead. went Wendy right out the, the window. Meeting. Sure did. Nothing remains nameless, Where'd you Bobby. Meet? It's How'd 2021. You How'd you guys meet? <laughs> anyway, so then you, add, then you add a dark beer to the, uh, uh -huh. to the chili, which yeah. is one of those secret ingredients, right? And then this becomes the base of it. Now, Carson was asking, like, you know, you rob us of the meat. But you can use things that are veg that are vegetables that actually wow. give us the uh, the texture. Very of the meat. attractive. Meat like. So we're going to. <laughs> very we're going attractive. to. Carson uh, founder. Job Carson well founder we're not on gonna, the we're not I will not say, say it out loud. Name, but we promise. Very, very impressive. No, he didn't. He did. No he did. He did. Yeah. Okay. Vegan so or we vegetarian? Have, uh, <laughs> no. Veg you really are dating up, Bobby. You are really wow. dating up. You are a lucky wow. man. All right. So anyway, off the mix, mix, what, what vegetables are you using there, Bobby, to replace so the meat? Thank you so much, Al. Thank you so much. So we <laughs> okay. have uh, we wow. have eggplant and portobello mushrooms Ooh. because they they have that sort of meaty texture. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add that to the to the chili as well, and we're gonna let this cook for a little while. And then basically, what happens is you have the base of the chili, and it mm -hmm. looks and feels like chili. It tastes like chili, but it's completely meatless. And, and then the thing I love about chili is that it becomes like this canvas for all these like really cool garnishes that you can put on top, which is really the king, oh, right? Nice so Ooh, that's beautiful. We have some yogurt that uh, has a little bit of uh, uh, shishito peppers in it and some lime juice. We want that nice cooling effect. And I have some avocados in here with some, um, with some diced red onions mm -hmm. and some chilies. I'm going to put some avocado mm. on top. It's almost like uh, the chili becomes a vehicle for all these cool things that you want to eat. A, little, a, a few tortilla chips with some crunch. Mm. You've got to make sure you have that crunch going. Hey, Bobby, does, it, does the chili take cheese. less time because it's meat-based, I mean vegetable-based, than, yeah. than a meat-based one would? It does, Al, because, you know, if you're cooking something like eggplant or portobello mushrooms, it's going to uh, it's going to cook a lot quicker. You just want to make sure that the mushrooms, then the eggplant mm -hmm. cook all the way through because then it absorbs all the flavor from the base of the chili itself. You want to cook at that dark beer. You want to get some of that earthiness as well. And uh, and then, you know, you, you just you, st you start to garnish it a little bit of lime zest on top. So you have some acidity, you have some spiciness, you have a little sweetness, mm. all the good things. And it's a uh, it's a very warming dish. I have to say, like when I first said when I first heard that I had to make vegetable chili mm -hmm. on beef Bobby Flay, I was kind of bummed out because, mm -hmm. right. you know, I am I am a meat eater. And um, but I have to say like the eggplant and the mushrooms do a great job of substituting yeah. it. And of course, it's a little bit healthier. I mean, people are eating a lot more vegetables. I was going to say, are, are plant ba is plant based having its moment now, Bobby? Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, as a chef. We constantly have to adjust to uh, to the trends of the way people are eating. And I will say one thing. People are eating healthier and healthier, and I don't think that's ever going to go in reverse. Mm -hmm. I think it's only going to keep going in that direction. Bobby. So we have to really get very comfortable with cooking vegetables in lots of different ways. Yeah, what did your girlfriend say when she tried oh, that first wow. bite? I was just curious. <laughs> He's trying to help you here. No, trying to help what, a brother out. So what, what did she say? Who? Um... You know what? I haven't made this for her yet, to be perfectly honest. Oh. But you know, it's it's on the dock. Well, it's been it's been it's been the summer now. Now you know it's getting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're done. right. Well, is she there right yeah. now? You told me to step on in. <laughs> no, she's not here. But, but oh, yeah, yeah. thanks so much for asking. You're the best. Bobby, we love you so much. Does it's just so fun to tease you. you. Does she have a key to the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> what else is in your book? We have a couple seconds. What other kind of recipes? Are they all vegetarian? Uh, well, you know, th there's all kinds of things, from like piri piri chicken to shrimp and grits. Oh. Um, 
There's some great desserts like a spiced chocolate pudding, yeah. um, eggplant rollatini. I mean, mm. you know, um, Salisbury steak. There's, there's really classic home style dishes. Mm, cool. And then there's a couple of things in that are a little bit fancier. But it's a, you know, if, if you're a fan of the show, I mean, uh, Al's been on the show a couple of times. Um, it's such a fun show. And um, we've, mm -hmm. we, we, we've shot over 500 episodes. Jeez. Wow. Cool. And, only uh, lost so twice. obviously it's they're amazing. not all in this yeah. book. This is volume one. Our, so oh, hopefully wow. there'll yeah. be more volumes. It's a terrific book. Uh, thank you, Bobby. Bobby. It's a great show. It's a great book. Thank, thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Good luck Bye. with the relationship. You guys do the best. <laughs>
it didn't exist. My parents were importing the stuff. Nowadays, you find a plethora. You find a plethora. Rock. You find all you sorts of- You get to use words like plethora. And lovely parmigiano that didn't exist either. No. So we've you, come a fact, long way. For the longest time, I always thought parmesan cheese was in that green can that you yeah, should Because for the longest time, that was parmesan cheese until they finally started importing it because people loved Italian food. And I think, I think Italian food is one of those cuisines that I don't think people associate I think they think it's American food. Well, let me ask you, if you weren't doing Italian food, which you are the master of, what cuisine would you be most drawn to? Uh, Asian. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, especially Japanese, because I find that it's it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. I like things that are pretty. They yes. come in pretty packages. They're dainty. They're delicate. And I think that um, it's like eating a little jewel. Like when you eat a piece of sushi, it's like mm. eating a jewel, right? I mean, think about the way it's wrapped, the way it's cut, all the little specks of different colors inside. The facets. Yeah, it's, it's stunning. And so to me, that would be what I would be doing. I thought you were gonna ask me a different question, but yes. See, you never know. No, That's... I thought you were gonna ask me what I would do if I wasn't cooking, and then I realized okay, it's well, not what he's asking well, me. Well, what would you be doing if you weren't cooking? Something with a lot of adrenaline, like be a spy, Ooh. or be a race car driver. No, wait, let's, <laughs> wait, 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 let's go back to the first. You wanted to, you want to be a spy? I think it's cool. You know what, I could- Living on the edge, knowing all these secrets and the adrenaline rush of it all, it's pretty cool. I could, I could see you as a spy. Come on, Al. I could. You've got that kind of Boris and Natasha thing. I could be your Boris to your Natasha. Biggest culinary influence? So I would say that it's mostly my family. Mm -hmm. Mostly. I mean, obviously, growing up, I watched the Galley Queen Gourmet, Julia Child, all of those people, but I think that my aunt is one of the biggest influences in my life. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, too, but I only spent X amount of time with him, where my aunt, I've spent a lot more time in the, cook in the kitchen cooking with her and traveling and exploring new foods and coming up with recipes on the spot in these exotic places. And so I think she's sort of my, you know, she never had any children. Mm -hmm. She is worked and make movies her whole life. She started when she was 18. And she's made a, you know, she's become uber successful at it. And I feel like she's sort of the person I look up to and the one that I got the most inspiration because she loves food as much as I do. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that, I think, because there's a whole generation that you are the most famous De Laurentiis in America. I'm serious. Yeah, you can't say that too loud. Well, the uh, rest no, of the De Laurentiis will not like that. that. I understand we that. We try to keep it all in perspective. But I'm telling you, for a wide swath of this country, you are the most famous De Laurentiis. But for those of us of a certain age, and in a knowledge of, of this business, your family is a big Hollywood dynasty. Yes. Was there ever a point where you thought of going into the family business as opposed to, you know, forging your own your own pathway? I did go into the family business before I did this. I, so it's it's a rite of passage mm -hmm. for in my family and everybody does some kind of job in the family business. Before I went to college, 
because for my family, college, you know, in Europe, at least in the old days, not anymore, college was, you know, it was an icing on the cake. It was mm -hmm. not necessary, especially right. if you had a family business. Sure. You just went straight into the family business. And so me being a female, mm -hmm. you know, my family was like, well, why don't you just work on a movie, figure out what part of a movie, what, what, what role you want to play. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, not necessarily, when I say role, I don't mean acting so much as whatever, what wardrobe, job? props, whatever it producing, might be, producing, directing. whatever. So I did a couple of different jobs on a couple of different movies. I even did a little, a little acting and I realized I don't really like it. I really love to cook. I know that doesn't, that doesn't sound realistic at the time mm -hmm. because it were mostly men in kitchens, right? And it was sort of manual labor and my family was like, you're little, you're not strong. The hell are you gonna do? They're gonna eat you alive. It's like, but that's what I like to do. So if I can't do that, then I find something else to do. I didn't like movie business, but I did do it. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was not a good actress and I didn't enjoy the hours and I didn't enjoy moving locations all the time. And you would think that I wouldn't like to travel even though that's all I do these days. <laughs> and now all I do is stand in front of a camera. All the things I didn't like that I wanted to do in food because I thought that I could be artistic but be, be behind mm -hmm. sort of, I didn't end up doing it. I ended up full circle right back where I didn't want to be. But, but in a different yes. milieu. Yes, but with, with all of these things. And these things make me feel very comfortable. So mm -hmm. in this vein, I'm very comfortable. And on camera. Yes, but I have this. Between me your, and the camera, there's all of this. Your co-stars. My co-stars are so colorful mm -hmm. and quite delightful. And in a moment of panic, I can just put something in my mouth. <laughs> food in my mouth. Sorry, I didn't complete the sentence or the thought very well, but I meant any of these pieces of food. What's your favorite meat? Is this mortadella? Not bologna, mm -hmm. but mortadella. When I was a kid and I would show up with this, everybody thought it was bologna. Have you ever had just straight mortadella? I it's don't the, think I have. Mm, you should try it. It's the first thing I have when I land in Rome. Mm -hmm. That on white pizza. Now, what are the white specks? Fat. There you go. So usually it's seasoned with mm -hmm. black pepper and pistachios. Mm -hmm. oh, it's wow. quite delicious. Yeah. We're going to do a little bit of pesto. Pesto is sort of like my mayo. Oh, that's interesting. Well, it's a fat. It's a fat, yeah. Ah. Yeah. It's a tangy fat. Here, I'm gonna give you some. And then I put a little mortadella on top. I'm a pretty simplistic person mm -hmm. when it comes to sandwiches. And you have to remember that Italians don't eat a ton of sandwiches. We eat panini, but they're usually not even a lunch item. They're sort of a snack. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so then I put a piece of fresh mozzarella. And we have, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt. You know what else you could put is really yummy. Have you ever had fried capers? You know, I'm not a big caper person, but I've never had fried capers. Okay, well, I fry my caper. So we're talking about the meat of your career. Or let's, let, let's widen it. Has there been a, a setback in your life that, you know, that you, you've had to deal with? Yeah, I think divorce. Yeah? Yeah. I was married for like, I don't know, 12 years, but I was with Jade's dad for 25. Mm -hmm. So I was 18. And then at 40 something, I'm like, oh, hmm. Now what? Mm -hmm. Now what do I do? And plus, my whole life, I think when you're with some, how long have you been with Deborah? Uh, tw it'll be 23 years. Okay, so when you're with somebody for 20 some years, mm -hmm. your identity becomes, you, it's a joint identity in a yeah. way. Maybe not you and Deborah because you have very strong careers on your own, but most couples and all your friends, everything mm, is sure. sort of oh, intertwined. Sure, part, your life yeah. is intertwined. I mean, it's so funny that you say that because I, when I, I mean, I was sorry, sorry to hear you, know, you guys. Had, had yeah, I know. Up, but but it never, it not for a moment changed how I feel about you or either professionally or personally. But I'm in a field mm -hmm. that's a lot about family. Right. My whole, my whole career is based on family. Not that being married was the only family. Right, right. But I think for me, what I realized was my identity was intertwined with his. Ah. And I defined myself by certain things. And, and being married or a wife was one of those things. Right. I spent so much time curating that relationship. Now I gotta figure out who I am. And I'm also 25 years older. Yeah, I didn't think of it that And a way. single mother. Yeah. And I work full time. And I think that society can be tougher on women than men. Yeah. I yeah. think men can come and go and do different things in their life. And I think women, we, we hold them to a different standard. It's, it's actually you... made me more of a, let's say, real human being. Yeah. I am not as perfect as everybody would like to think that I am. Maybe sometimes it takes something like this yeah. to realize how appreciated you are. Probably, and probably I think that's what milestones in our lives are. I think that the other one was my brother's death at a very young age. Mm -hmm. 
I was already doing Food Network, but it was very early stages. And I remember with him and him dying literally in my arms and my sister's arms and realizing, holy cow, he just turned 30. Life is short. I better get on it. Yeah. And I think that's when I realized, okay, I got to focus my attention, figure out what the hell I'm doing and make sure I do it because it's fleeting. So I think things like that mm -hmm. really change your perspective and they're important. Who are some of the chefs that helped you succeed? When I was looking um, and working on opening Jada in Las Vegas, um, I turned to Bobby Flay a lot yeah. because he'd had a 15 year relationship with them already. And he went through, he just helped me with everything that came down to understanding what this partnership with Caesars Palace would be, what the pitfalls were, what I had to be aware of, sticking to my guns. I'd never done this before. I went from zero restaurants to 275 seat restaurant in the busiest corner in Las Vegas. And so I was terrified. And so I think for me, he was one of the people who guided me, mm -hmm. sort of, and really helped me day and night, gave me his lawyers, like really was there to walk me through it. Mm -hmm. So he was my biggest champion, I think, in that realm. Is there one question you, you're, that everybody asks that you're tired of? Yes. What's How could I be so thin and eat so much pasta? Never trust a skinny chef. If I have to hear that, I mean, my entire life, first thing out of people's mouth is, how do you stay like that and eat all that pasta? I'm like, I don't eat all the pasta. I eat a couple bites of pasta, I don't eat all of it. I eat a little bit of chocolate, I eat a little bit of things. I don't eat an entire platter full of anything. But it's like, it, you know, I think that in Europe, we know how to eat yeah. a little bit of everything. Sure. We drink a little bit, like. Well, the, our portion, the portions are so much smaller. Yes, but in America, the portions are ginormous. So no one has learned to eat small amounts of food. We've grown up with like giant meatballs. Super size. Everything is, all you can eat and super size. Yeah. That's all we know. And that is also part of the culture because all these immigrants came here. And the, a success story in America is the more food you have, yep. the more money you have. Yeah. So the bigger the meatballs, the richer you are. Yeah. And that's what people wanted. And so I didn't grow up like that. So to me, it's not that strange. You know, it's so funny you say that because to my, my grandmother, my dad's mother's way of thinking, you were healthy and you were prosperous if you were a little heavier. Of course. And so when but she that was Deborah, the beauty. she was like, oh, Stupid. child, you gotta, you gotta gain weight. You gotta, and how many mothers, on your bones. how many mothers say about their sons, hey, if, if your husband is super thin, he's certainly not happy. Fat husband is a happy husband. Well, then I should have been really happy. You are.
What's the difference between mozzarella and burrata? Well, burrata is different because burrata has like a shell on the outside and it's buttery, so it's a different texture on the inside. It's the churning process that makes it different. It's much creamier on the inside. And it's definitely, like for instance, my daughter doesn't want to touch it. Because really? it's just, it's too wet, it's too creamy, it's too milky. You mentioned Jade, who's, who's nine, which is hard to believe. Ten. Jade is ten. is ten years old, double digits. You saw her when she was like an infant on the counter. She was a peanut. I mean, how has she changed your life? I think that Jade makes me enjoy the little things in this life. And I think that all children do that. They see things, they get more excited about things, and you forget. You know, we realize as we get older, we get jaded by experiences. No pun intended. Yes. And I think that kids sort of get excited about things that you forget should excite you. Yeah, secret to your success, what, if, if, there, if you could boil it down. I think that the secret to my success is hard work, mm -hmm. good time, I mean, timing, because I think you could be the most talented person in the world, but if the timing isn't right, it probably won't work out. I think that everybody was ready at the time that I came out to make food at home. 9-11 changed all our perspectives on our families, and I came up right after that. And I think after 9-11, people felt like, I want to stay home. Yeah. I want to invite people over. But in order to do that, I need to learn to cook. And so they looked wherever they could to find a way to make it easy for them to entertain at home and bring their loved ones in. And I think it's a combo of all those things. And also because I've streamlined my perspective. Mm -hmm. When you think of me, you think of... Italian. Yeah. yeah. But California Italian. Maybe yeah. a little bit lighter than, than traditional Italian-American yeah. food. And yeah. I think that's the key. The key is to figure out what it is you like to do and really, like, streamline it. Have something that defines you. Yes, and streamline it. You, you've been so instrumental and so generous with your time mentoring other women in this business, especially in the hashtag Me Too era. What, what's a, your advice to, to women who are looking to enter this, this end of the business? A lot has happened, and I think that you, you gotta be strong, and you gotta stick to your guns, and you gotta know who you are, and lean on the people around you that you trust to help you get through any hardships. We're all gonna have them. You can't go through life thinking that you're never gonna encounter a hardship. Mm -hmm. Life is about the ups and the downs and you have to just learn to dodge them mm -hmm. and do the best you can and really rely on your friends and family to help you through it and to give you ad advice and guidance. Let's top it off, we are top three things. Top three Food Network shows other than your own. Oh, what? Oh, other than anything I'm in, right? Okay, beat Bobby Flay. Okay. Barefoot Contessa. Yes. And Chopped. All right, there you go. Good. Now. Oh, finally. Finally. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, tell me if you like it. It's not gonna be like a grilled cheese, but. But it's close. It could be good. Mm. Oh, that's Crunchy. That's good. What do you have still left you want to accomplish? I'd like to open some restaurants in other parts of the world. Ooh. Outside the U.S. Want to come visit me? I will definitely come visit you. Here you, there you go. Look for a Jada, a Jada restaurant coming to a country near you anytime soon. That's cold cuts. That's a take. That's a wrap. Mm. Take off the. What is the tie doing it's on? I thought a, this was it, casual. It, this is Sal? casual for me. This is casual because you loosen I'm the not tie a minute. Exactly. It's it's hip. It's hipster.
So if your go-to dinner night after night after night is pasta, we got some help for you. I think this is help just for me. We have Giada De La Rentes. Nobody cooks pasta like her. She's mm -hmm. been cooking up a storm thanks to her at-home blog, Jotsi. Hi, Giada. Hi, guys. How are you? Look how cute you are in your kitchen. Look at you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> how, how's quarantine life at that house? Um, it's been long. I'll say that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but actually it hasn't been, it hasn't been bad. You know, I was, I was just saying to a friend the other day that I know more about what my daughter's doing day in and day out every single moment of the day than I ever did before. And I didn't even know it. And so <laughs> it's, um, homeschooling is interesting. I've sort of tried to perfect my TikTok dances because my daughter's had her 12th birthday during quarantine and that is all she wanted. And she wanted me to get better at it. So I've been doing that. And Obviously, lots of cooking. So lots what have been your meals. favorite meals? What have been your go-tos during this time? Chocolate chip banana bread, which I think everybody has been making a ton of banana bread. Yes. And um, this special pasta that happens to be Jade's favorite that has um, garlic, olive oil, peas, and prosciutto. So not we, want get, we, we want to get to the recipe, but I want to ask, I know your family, you have fa some family members in Italy, and I was thinking, I'm wondering how they're doing. So my mom lives in Italy, in Rome, actually, in the center. Um, and it's been, it's been really interesting. It was really rough at the beginning. So we talked to her every day. We would eat meals together over Zoom. I would have oh. breakfast, she would have dinner, because oh. we're so many hours apart. And I think that talking to us regularly, I was, I was noticing too that I talked to my mom every single day in a way that I didn't before. I yes. would talk to her once a week. So I, I think it's really helped us con communicate and connect as human beings in a way that maybe we didn't even realize we weren't doing. Yeah, that's yeah. so interesting. I think even though we're far apart, we're still connected. And I think one way that we are trying to connect, or at least I am in this household, is by meals around the table. I think more people are sitting down and eating than before, probably. So will you make this, this delicious pasta for us? <laughs> I want to eat it. So prosciutto, can you see it? Yes. yes. I'll pull it up in a second. I want to throw my pasta, otherwise. You can do whatever pasta you want, obviously. Um, I'm doing a little bit of a, a fusillo, like a little, a large fusilli. But that's my um, pancetta. Can you see it? Yeah, so why do you cook that? Why do you cook that instead of just putting it in? Because, because I want it crispy. It's the topping, it's like the garnish. So I want yeah. it to be nice and crispy, just like crispy bacon, like bacon bits you would put on a salad. You don't want yeah. it to be slim. It's kind of no, not that right. tasty. Right? Definitely not that you said it that way. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you could do it in a pan or you could do it in the oven. Either way works. It just gets okay. all crispy and it's kind of like bacon. So you could use bacon here if you prefer. And then you just dump a bunch of um, olive oil and garlic. It's so funny mm. doing it this way. By the way, it's um, fascinating. What have, you guys, what have you guys been cooking? Nothing. I've been cooking actually a three pasta a three dish pasta recipe like basically they put it on today.com and it's what basically it? a cacio wait cacio y pepe how that Brava! wow said it really nicely i what, did what, what did she say what was that cacio y pepe <laughs> oh wow so um cacio do you know what it is a cacio is pepper and and well pe pepe, pepe is pepper, pepper. what's cacio? <laughs> cheese chicken yes but do you know what oh. kind of cheese Cacio. <laughs> no. What is it? What is it? Um, Parm Parmesan. It's pecorino. Oh, pecorino. Okay. Yeah. So we haven't had pecorino. Oh, my okay, so you melt some butter. No, yeah. <laughs> All right, so you just brown the, um, the garlic a little bit, just till oh, it's okay. nice and fragrant. Then you add peas, anybody? Peas? Yes, peas. peas. Yes. Okay. Can you Those use peas? Because that's all we got. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, frozen beef. Just try to defrost them if you can, you know? Otherwise, mm -hmm. there's a little bit more water in here, but not really that big a deal. And <laughs> a little bit of red pepper flakes. I don't put a lot because Jade is a big fan of red pepper flakes, but a little bit is really nice. It adds a little warmth. And you just kind of warm through the, the peas and the garlic together. Mm. And then you dump the pasta when it's ready. Let's see here. Jada, first of all, as you put that pasta in, I know it's delicious because you made it. You're going to be doing a show from your house 
which I have to say, watching you cook like this is fascinating to me. Yes. You're moving the camera around, doing your own thing. Like this is going to be, is it, where you, where's this show going to, going to live? Food Network. On the it's Food Network. Show, yeah. What's it I called? Can't shoot, I can't shoot from a studio, so I'm shooting from my house. By awesome. the way, with Jay doing so, the dishes, it should be funny. It's, it's mesmerizing watching you cook like this. Is that cheese you just put in there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I pre-grated my Parmesan cheese. Okay, you should put it in. So basically, for let's see it. No, oh. this is Papigiano. Oh, Papigiano. Like so just toss it together. That's it. And a little pasta water. Here. By the way, pasta water is important. Jada, yeah. for this recipe and all of Jada's recipes, go to today.com slash food. We are so excited to get started with cooking in today food. But before we do, before we do that, we're just going to take one second and shout out our new executive yes. producer. Talia is in the house. We just want to say, hey, welcome Happy to today. Happy first day. It's her first day of school. Go, Talia. We're so happy thrilled. you're here. She's here. And you know who else we're so happy to have? Oh. If, well, she's not at the ranch hanging out yeah. with her family or filming <laughs> episodes of her hit Food Network show. Reed Drummond is busy coming up with easy and delicious meals for you and your family. Reed's the star of The Pioneer Woman and a best-selling author of seven cookbooks. Her latest is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks Super Easy. It's 120 shortcut recipes for dinners, desserts, and more. We've missed yes, you. We're so missed happy you you're guys. here. It is so, I just feel like I'm seeing old friends and it's just so happy. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I love it. We, okay, first of all, we have to say congratulations. Yes. Your, your daughter got married. Oh my gosh, oh, thank sweet. you. How I was know. that? It was so much fun. I mean, oh. it, it was. we did it on the ranch, which was a crazy idea. We <laughs> sort of built this huge tent out there, but it was fun. And the, the great thing is it was a lot of work, but the day of we were just able to let the process happen and enjoy it. It wasn't stressful. Did you and do any, did, you didn't do any cooking for it, did you? No. Good. You just no, relaxed. No, no, no. I, know. Sure. I was going to say, who does sure. rehire as the no, That's why I was able to relax and have fun, yeah, right? to so. watch your husband walk her down the aisle. Oh, we yes. know he's been recovering yeah. from an accident. It must yeah. have been special. It, it was wonderful. I mean, it was a blessing. We, it, that's my favorite picture of the two oh, of them. Um, he was a little stiff then. He's, he's doing much better. He's on his horse today, so everything okay, is great. Back We're on the horse. Very, very lucky. All right. What are we going to cook? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so now that Hoda has eaten a whole chocolate I know. cake you know today, what? Um, that is really good. Why is everybody making fun of you? I don't, I don't appreciate that. I don't, thank you, Jen. If I think I you would have supported would have me. It was really quiet, and then all of a sudden, the cake was gone. And <laughs> But you I, should see what she does to chips. Oh, I, well, you know, <laughs> you know it's morning. What? It's happening again. You have the rest of the day to work it off, right? Exactly. So well. after the cake, I thought it'd be great to make some vegetables. So I'm going to do a sheet pan gnocchi Yummy. dinner. And okay. what I love about it, my cookbook, really, I'm not afraid to use shortcut ingredients. So. My favorite ingredient is this is store bought gnocchi. Oh, so and is this frozen or you just no, get it? No, it's actually shelf stable, believe oh. it or not. So you can uh, you just buy wait, it. Throw it in there. Wait, yeah. are you, is this a joke? <laughs> what you just gnocchi. did? You just dumped everything on the sheet everything pan. Everything on the sheet I pan. I thought you had to boil oh, it. Oh no no no! Because we're going to roast it. Oh. So then What's I've that, got pesto. Yes, pesto. <gasps> I'm going to mix it with olive oil. Oh. Did I'm you trying buy not to get pesto too? on you, so I moved it away from your beautiful white Can you buy the pesto or did you make that? No, bought the pesto. See, I like everything. So yeah, she's speaking happened. our language. Yeah, I mean, during the pandemic, you know, I, I mm -hmm. kind of burned out on cooking a little bit because there were Didn't so we many all? kids around. Is that it? Yeah, so they, that's it. Because pesto is so flavorful, it has garlic and, and you know, And do you need to oil the, the pan? Did you already oil it? You don't it? have to because there's oh. plenty of olive oil in the pesto mixture. So you basically, just mix it all around mix like it all that. Around, and then look how Wait. beautiful it looks. Oh, my gosh, Jenna. we have to pull taste. it out of the oven. So. I like to do a little balsamic. Do you want us to help oh, you? Yes, glaze. Yes, help me and grab some go. Parmesan shavings. So do you just, that? I love balsamic glaze. Yes. I do everything I do. on anything. And you know what? I used to make my own by just reducing balsamic mm, for yeah. hours and the house would smell like vinegar and my kids would be like, what is what that smell? This is so, kind of crispy. It's delicious, isn't it? And see how all the oh veggies got beautiful color. Mm. Mm. But it's such We're, an easy meal and I would totally just eat this. But wait. We could do this 
too, which is huge. Look at what we just in did. In one second. Put it in the oven, is dress this basil? it. basil? What did you, what I is that? tore basil. Oh, I tore just, basil. Yep, and I, I'm so lazy, I don't even want to chop basil anymore. You just chop it. By the way, I like it on the oh, Should we go around the back? Yeah, we have another recipe. Okay, okay great. Honestly, so mm -hmm. sheet pans are kind of my thing. I okay. love them. They're, they're just, I, I get nervous if I don't have 20 ready to go at mm -hmm. all times. So this is a sheet pan salad, and I love this concept mm. because you basically roast any veggie you want, it's it's the squash time of year. Oh, so yes. this is a mixture of cubed butternut squash Yum. and delicata squash. I love delicata what squash. What is that? I'm what obsessed is it? with it. Me too. Do you ever so put it on it? toast? Oh, Wait. yeah, mash, mash yes. it up. Yes. What are you talking it's about? It's just so a squash. At, this is what it looks like. And oh, it's in basically the store? kind oh. of an heirloom type okay. of squash. But the great thing is you can eat the skin. It gets really tender. So ah. butternut, it can be a little bit tough, should not do, very tasty. Yes. Drizzle and then we're salt gonna do another roasted vegetable situation, salt and pepper, Italian seasoning. This is so brilliant. Wow. And then this is just so toss. brilliant. But here's what's fun about wow. it. So roast it and it's like 450, 25, 30 minutes. Okay. And look how gorgeous. So that's delicious on its own, but I build a salad oh, out of this. Thank you. So basically, you make your own dressing too, don't you? Well, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I doctor up bottle dressing. So but I'm using the roasted vegetables as a base for mm, a salad. That's delicious. Mm. Isn't it good? Yes. And the dressing mm. is tahini, mm. mustard, lemon juice, olive oil, honey. Okay. And this then, is isn't it pretty? 10 okay. plus. 10 plus plus. Pomegranate seeds. These? Yep. Mm. Yep. Pistachios. Pistachios, pomegranates. Mm. So this I love pomegranates. It's pretty at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then goat cheese, which Hoda Great. doesn't love. Great. Thank you. Well, Hoda well, likes it. It, it just doesn't love her. Yeah. Okay. There's a thank lot of TMI so in much. this segment. <laughs> There's a lot about Hoda. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Bree, thank you so much for these recipes. Head today.com slash food. And for Bree's new book, it has recipes just like this one. Head today.com slash shop. I predict a bestseller. Me too. Okay. <laughs>back with today's food thrilled to say good morning to our next guest finally after all of those teases the pioneer <laughs> woman herself reed drummond has made it all the way from her ranch in oklahoma are you near blake's ranch in oklahoma not so much, not so much but, you know we're in the sta same state yeah. so, so, you know, we, we know each other when i was there marrying him and gwen i would have stopped by your ranch seriously and next time or yes. your 25th it's wedding true. anniversary i could have yeah, renewed you your vows <laughs> oh, well we're also out with a brand new cookbook it's called super easy it features more than 100 mm. shortcut recipes which we like the sound of that actually lots been going on in the ranch in oklahoma you look absolutely stunning you've got oh, a daughter who just got married right yes Hard to believe. Yeah, and you're about to celebrate your 25th anniversary, and Carson's going to do your renew your vows for you. <laughs> that, that's gonna hard to believe too. I know I'm only 29. I don't know how I can <laughs> get married. For you look 29. Years. What happened you to you? during COVID? All I did was eat and drink and not work out. And well, listen, same. I I was wearing pandemic pants this time last year. I don't know if you remember, but. But, uh, yeah, I just, you know, the wedding was a great inspiration and motivation. But then once I started kind of uh, exercising more and getting healthier, it felt so good yeah. that I just kept going. So I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm over that hump. And now it's about just maintaining and, and yeah. enjoying. Well, I don't so. know if these delicious recipes are going to be uh, on any maintenance, but they are really <laughs> smell good. Uh, speaking of my wellness journey, yes. let's eat some tots yes. Yes. Uh, with cheese let's. all over them. 
So, yeah, it ahead. starts with chicken. Yep. Yes, so I'm going to make tachos. Now, do you know what tachos are, Carson? No, no idea. You need to know. So, <laughs> tachos are just like nachos, but they're made with tots. Oh, Yum. So, oh. I, baked, I baked some tots with a little we cumin and We have the gang eating already. Oh, Cook right. some chicken, add some celery. So, these are buffalo chicken tachos. Yum. Celery, garlic, and green onions. Did you make up tachos or is that a thing? I never heard of tachos. It's kind of a thing, but it hasn't okay. swept the nation yet. Yeah, it's so going now to. Will. I'm yeah. kind of hoping. Uh, It'll but be trending by the end of the segment. You can put on nachos, you can put on tots okay. and call them tachos. So Love it. Then, of course, buffalo sauce, and then you just let oh. this simmer. Mm. I started Delicious. with raw no. chicken, but you can do rotisserie chicken to okay. make it easier. Yeah. Mm. So simmer that until it's luscious Have you and changed saucy. what you cook now because of your sort of wellness journey? Is it, is it put no. you on a different path? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, and you know the thing is, is I have, I have teenage boys, college students, uh, lad, right. a, mm-hmm. ranchers, you know, yeah, cowboy, and so I have to make food that everybody loves. Right. And yeah. I don't, I'm not good when I deny myself, yeah. you know, whole Butter categories of food. And- so I'm just kind of learning to eat. I like to say I eat a Rhode Island sized piece of cake instead of a Texas sized piece <laughs> right. of cake. That's the best way you get the flavors in the taste. It's How does that just taste? It's really good. So Everything's good. good. So, yeah. good. so yeah. you, you pull the tots out of the oven. Mm-hmm. They're seasoned, so they're a little bit elevated. I kind mm-hmm. of push them into a pile. Yeah. Pepper jack cheese yeah. all over. I okay. mean, this this is what life's all about right oh, here. Oh, right here, yeah. And then you spoon the saucy chicken all oh, yeah. over. Mm-hmm. And so you can do ground beef that. and Ooh, that's a hit. you know right. black beans and do sort of. A is the chicken mix. gonna because it's hot melt that cheese? Or are you putting this back in the no, oven? No, it's going back in the oven. Okay, yeah. I thought so because so. okay. you want to melt the cheese like uh, nachos. So all the cheese you want, melt it. Mine? Oh, here we that's go. Okay, yeah. Cheese. Actually, Pepper jack cheese, the buffalo yeah. sauce. Mm. It's, it's hearty. It's, it's got a kick, huh. but oh jeez! Did you know redheads can tolerate uh, spicy food more than anybody really? else? Really? Is that true? Yeah. So yeah. this is good. Is that true? You love it? We'll delve into what? the Chicken. genealogy of that some other time. But, wow. but basically, you garnish with uh, blue cheese, mm-hmm. and to make blue cheese dressing, I just take ranch dressing mm-hmm. and add blue cheese to it. Oh, oh and clever! Oh, it's very shortcut. easy. Well, you can do knew? bottled ranch, or you can make your own. But Brilliant. nice little shortcut. Mm-hmm. So this is what uh, this is why my teenage boys love me. Oh, I can see I mean, why. That is delicious. Hey, Carson, really, yeah. really good. Hey, this is gone. I mean, just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. What happened? What is eating a whole bunt cake already? Oda, we have wow. not started the cake at, segment yet. Hey, take a breath. No one's missed these eating segments more than Hodes. <laughs> so good. Right. Remember, Rhode Island, not Texas. <laughs> She's going state by state. <laughs> All right, well, that does bring us to our chocolate cake. Now, this is your secret recipe, right? Okay, yes. So, confession, my my top secret ingredient in my top secret cake is dark chocolate cake mix. Oh, okay. And listen, I had my house full of humans during the pandemic and large six, you know, six foot five humans and football players. And I had... I was making so much food that I was about to lose my religion. I'm just, just, every day I was just like, I can't do it anymore. So I'm not afraid to whip out the chocolate cake. I doctored it with, uh, you know, bittersweet chocolate chips just to make it a little bit more uh, rich. Wow. But the thing is, this is the secret. It's a box cake. Well, it's what. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But the thing is, I'm topping it with ganache, oh, which is Ooh. heavy cream wow. and good oh, well, quality go. chips. Yeah. That's okay. all two ingredients, yes. and then it turns into this Here. luscious. Ooh. And are these oh, inside this becomes, or is this like a topping this thing becomes, situation? So, well, you can just eat one if you like. So you just but, ma- <laughs> okay, yeah. So you made the the we cake. Gotta go. Oh, we're out of time. Okay, yeah. I really okay. wanted to understand this. And then drizzle. Drizzle. Uh, I do sprinkles on top, <laughs> but <laughs> after Halloween, you can take Beautiful leftover cake. candy, chop it, it up, and top. put it on top. So hold up. Hold oh, my God. Happy plate. plate. Wait a minute. The plate. Oh, yeah. I want to show it. Clean Literally. plate club. Clean plate club. Clean plate Done. club. There's, you left a oh. And she's going to eat out. <laughs> and also, she's going to move in with you. And she's she's giggling. She's giggling a lot over there. Congratulations on everything. Love your show. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, of course, you can find all these recipes at today.com slash food and pick up a copy of Super Easy at today.com slash shop. This morning on Today Food, lasagna two ways with layers of pasta, meat sauce, and creamy cheese. Lasagna is one of the ultimate comfort foods. But get ready for something a little new this morning. Reed Drummond, a.k.a. The Pioneer Woman, has created two recipes. They're going to become your favorites. Her latest book is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks 
the new frontier. Wait, good morning. Hi, Savannah. It's good to see you. I, I, I can't, you're doing something really different with lasagna, which is risky. Well, it's a little risky, but when you see these recipes, you will totally understand. I like to mash things up, and yep. you know, you don't want to make lasagna over and over and over. So, we are going to make shrimp scampi lasagna roll-ups. I like it. Which mm -hmm. are as good as they sound. So, okay. I cook some shrimp in butter, onion, garlic, a little thyme, and. Um, Chopped it up. Okay. So I'm going to make a sort of a shrimpy, cheesy filling, and this is cream cheese, ricotta, egg, and parmesan. I mean, what could you, what could possibly go wrong? I know. It looks so I mean, good. it's all right. Sign me up. Yes. So I'll let you stir this together, okay. and I'm going to start on the white sauce. Um, my new cookbook has. Lots of fun recipes like this. Yeah, where, I like that it's different. Yeah, and buffalo chicken quesadillas, for instance. I have two teenage boys at home. Yeah. Um, my girls grew up and left me. So, so, <laughs> so mean. you got those brutes at home. So to rude feed. of them. You still got Charlie the dog? Well, Charlie's not with us oh, anymore, but I have I have Walter. Okay. Oh, Walter. And I have a couple of other little bassets running around. Look so. at the whole crew over there. It's like, Savannah, oh my how could you oh, ask hi. that? But, oh, okay. no, it's okay. Charlie lives on in his books. Yes, and, he does. We read his all the time. Oh, I love hearing that. Okay, so I, I stirred it. So that's all stirred together, and I am making just a beautiful white sauce, and okay. it's, I started with the roux, and it has cream and milk, mm -hmm. and so you cook and cook and cook until and you're this trying is to thick. thicken it up, right? Thicken it up. Is that thick enough or not really? This looks great. Okay. This isn't quite there, but right. I have I have Magic some of already television. finished. Yes. So I'm going to have you help me build a oh, roll up. Okay. So this is the filling you just stirred together. Mm -hmm. Take about. A generous third a cup. Okay. And put it on the end of the. Oh, this has the. Okay, the whole thing is in here. Our yeah. shrimp, our everything. And these are cooked lasagna noodles. Mm -hmm. I cooked them about half the time mm -hmm. that the package says. Right. And then just roll it up. Yes. That's the name, lasagna oh roll ups. They're so cute and pretty. What they do you are think? They're so cute. Amazing. Amazing. Are you it's dying? Oh, yeah. my goodness. It's between bisque and a lasagna. Oh. oh. Good oh. point. That's exactly what it is. Oh. And then I always put the seam side down. Yeah, of course, to make it look pretty. I poured the white sauce in the bottom of the dish. Oh. And then I'll let you pour and the then rest gonna, of it. Am I pouring over. or am I drizzling? No, pour. Okay, pour, pour that get sucker. in there. Okay, yeah. Why not? Look at that creamy yummy. It is Isn't so that gorgeous. Good. Yes. And then top it with mozzarella. Mm -hmm. And you can see the finished dish right here with parsley on top. That doesn't look crazy difficult either. No, it's not. And my daughter who lives in Dallas now uh, saw my new cookbook and she said when I come home, will you make me the shrimp oh. scampi lasagna roll up? So, I mean, why not look at it? It's okay. gorgeous. I want to taste that. So, that's lasagna one way. And now, the this second shocked way, me lasagna soup. I mean, it's it's really earth shattering. Okay, it's, tell me, tell me. I'm going to have a bite. It's beautiful. Here. So, started with ground beef, mm -hmm. sausage, uh, onion, oh. garlic, yeah. thyme, oregano, and I just cooked it and then added. Mm. Oh my God! Uh, right? Let's try yes. that. Wait, Savannah, just yes. take your Delayed time. reaction. So good. <laughs> take okay. Your time. And just turned it into a really delicious uh, whole tomatoes, tomato paste, mm -hmm. uh, parsley, and you can see the whole tomatoes. I actually like to let them cook down a little bit. Yeah. And then break them up because oh. they're a little softer. Mm -hmm. Anytime I try to squeeze them with my hand, it winds up in my eye. Yeah. Or <laughs> that's not fun. Or on my shirt, which is even worse. Even worse, exactly. <laughs> so you just kind of, you browned up the the uh, beef and then oh. yes, then you put in the drain the, the excess fat and then turn it into a beautiful soup. Mm -hmm. And then I cooked some broken up lasagna noodles. Oh. So this is that there. down at the bottom. Mm. It's like a hug. In. It is. Oh, <laughs> so really wait, what about point. the cheese? Where's the cheese? Okay, so okay. once you simmer away the soup yes. and the noodles are perfect, I make this little ricotta dumpling mixture. Oh, wow. And all it is is ricotta, Parmesan, salt, pepper, basil, and oh, parsley. Mm -hmm. Stir it together. Mm -hmm. And then when you serve up the soup, you just put little dollops right in the middle, oh and it's just, mm -hmm. if the soup is really piping hot, the yep. ricotta dumpling just kind of melts Can I come it. over to your house, mm -hmm. Reed? Yes, yes. Is this yes. what we make there? Because it <laughs> sounds fab. Bring your kids, and uh, Lad will put them to work on the ranch. Yeah, I <laughs> love it. I love it. Thank you so much. We, how do you like Fantastic. the soup? It's amazing. amazing. Which one do you like I love, better? The, I love oh. the soup. It's yeah. crazy. We, we're torn. Can you I tell? Yeah. I, I like one vote for soup and. Uh -huh. Well, you know what though, and then you get a piece of shrimp on yeah. this one. That's the thing, oh. and all that shrimp scampi oh. flavor is in there. You really redesign helps. lasagna. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's next level. Yeah. My wife I, loves your shrimp. I get bored really easily. <laughs> so I, I have to have some fun in the kitchen. Thank that's you true. so much, Rhea. I know you're coming back for the fourth yes. hour. More food. You can find all of these recipes at today.com oh slash food. And for more on Rhea's book, go to today.com slash shop. You can buy it there. Thank you, honey.
Bree Drummond is busier than ever. Not only is she a mom of four, she's a New York Times bestselling author. She has three million Instagram followers, and she's a star of the hugely popular Food Network show. It's called The Pioneer Woman. And somehow she's also managed to find time to put together a new cookbook called The Pioneer Woman Cooks the New Frontier, which features a couple of recipes that we're going to be making today. And she took all the photos for the book. It's, of course, she you does everything. Did that too? She did that too. Uh, my really? camera's a mess. My camera's sticky. <laughs> it all over it. So she's got roast chicken for us. Look at this. Yes, I. I'm so happy to cook we're, with you both. So I'm a big happy. fan of both of you. We so love thank you, you for having me. So wait, I can't cook. Yeah, me either. But wait, you're based in Oklahoma, and you just do your sh everything from your home. Is that pretty much? Works? We we film the show at our guest lodge, so yeah. at least they don't have to trip over my teenager's laundry, <laughs> yeah. you know, dirty socks in our real house. I was house, telling but. her that my daughter Christina is like she is the most incredible woman. I her oh, voice puts me to sleep. I watch her. Her life is oh, idyllic. Yeah, she, my voice puts my husband to sleep too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're making chicken today. Yes, I just want to show you my favorite way to roast chicken. Okay. Uh, I'm wearing gloves just for the spatchcocking. Yeah. So do you know what spatchcocking no, a chicken is? No, no, so no. it's super no. easy. Basically, okay. you have to put on gloves, cut okay. the backbone out, which is just snip on either side. Okay. That's the unpleasant and splay part. Splay it out. But then you splay it out, and the whole point is to kind of <laughs> oh. <laughs> the whole point is right. to get it as flat as possible. You can use your palm and uh -huh. kind of push, mm -hmm. but that way a chicken that would normally take um, a lot longer to roast yes. just takes uh, really a fraction of the time. So then you wind up with uh, a beautiful roasted chicken. So what I like to do is make sort of an herb dressing Ooh, and it's just uh, simple olive oil mm -hmm. herbs. Cut some baby gold potatoes in half and just toss them in the herb mixture. How long does this take you to make? You want to help me and oh, just sure, kind of scatter sure. them around and then you'd brush the same mixture on the chicken. Now, is this Good a job. greased pan or is this? Not? It doesn't have doesn't to be have because to be. the chicken has so much so uh, beautiful oh. grease as it cooks. Okay. So, just really about 30 minutes total. You start with a high heat and then lower it, and then look what you wind up with. <laughs> wow. Halfway through, I add cherry tomatoes mm. and zucchini and then put it back in and finish it up. And you have this beautiful roasted chicken, which I like to serve as roasted chicken, mm -hmm. but I also like leftover roasted Can chicken. Can we try this? Yes, of Maria, course. That's like your perfect meal, by the way. Right, that Have is. a bite. Yeah. Chicken. I mean, oh. I like French fries, but yes. that, we're not having that. But I'm sorry, Maria. <laughs> I should have made no, we're fries. Not, we're not allowed to eat that. I think roasted chicken is the perfect mm. food. And that is yummy. It's good for weeknight family mm -hmm. meals. But Are you surprised at how your cooking, your passion, has turned into this incredible success? Well, you know, I think you nailed it. Just passion. If you if you are passionate about what you do, mm -hmm. it can you take you in directions you never thought you'd you'd go in. And that's um, I've had so much fun with Pioneer Woman because it started as mm -hmm. blogging. Mm -hmm. So come around. Oh um, and I want to show you what you can do with the chicken okay. if you don't want to slice it up and right. serve it as roast chicken. So you can shred it, mm -hmm. which is my favorite thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a beautiful chicken and wild rice soup. Soup, oh, onions, yum. celery, and carrots. Okay. And then I'm going to deglaze with some white wine, which okay. I love in any soup. It just adds mm. beautiful flavor. And it's okay. getting to be soup weather out there. It's, yeah, it's getting to be. Finally, did you have a hot summer here well, like we did? We had, we had a scorcher. <laughs> it seemed to go on forever. And then add some flour just to thicken it okay. up. And then you'll cook this for a bit. Do all and your then, kids cook? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sadly, no. My daughter Paige loves to cook and she's a great cook. The rest mm. of my kids love to eat. So, uh, welcome to my plight. But I love to cook and so it's, it's, uh, What's it's that? chicken stock. Chicken stock okay. and then water. Mm -hmm. And this is so easy is wild that? rice. It's, oh, I didn't know it was that color. Yeah, it's not the mix that you buy in a box, oh. it's real wild rice. Um, Minnesota has that? has wild rice okay. that kind of comes from Minnesota, and then you basically cook it until the rice is done. And mm -hmm. look how beautiful it looks. That's gorgeous. Oh. And then you add the chicken in, obviously. Um, and I like to kind of cream a it up cream. a little bit. Yeah, you got. I to. mean, I, d I can't think of many dishes that I make that aren't made better with a little cream. <laughs> exactly. So you can add a little or a lot, and then let it simmer some more mm -hmm. with some aromatics, sage, and rosemary and thyme. Yes. And then I love to add Ooh. kale also. To at the, the soup? To the soup, oh, yeah. At the end, is that kind of the last Kind of at touch? the end, you yeah. just let it uh, simmer in the last few minutes. Tell us what this pasta situation yeah. is. Of 
Okay, so again, what you can do with the leftover chicken yeah. is make a chicken spaghetti casserole. And it's, I think, casseroles are just the ultimate comfort food and mm. this has mushrooms and mm. a little bit of wine mm. of course so mm. if you can spatchcock a chicken you can do anything in life. <laughs> you can spatchcock a chicken. We need a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> yeah. But really you can make soup and casseroles, enchiladas. Right. So. This was these were all delicious, awesome meals. I mean they seem easy enough too. Very easy. Thank if you. it's not easy, I won't do it. Awesome. Oh, that's good. For these recipes, head to today.com slash food. And for more about Reese Cookbook, go to today.com slash shop. <laughs> Welcome back. We're back with Today Food. This morning's guest, you know her, you love her, Ree Drummond. She is known as the pioneer woman, and today she's showing us two easy recipes for a family feast. You've got a, a simple, easy pasta recipe. What are we cooking? Yes, so I am so into shortcut homemade ravioli, and what makes it shortcut is that I use wonton wrappers. So these are just in the store. And I made a little mixture of ricotta, parmesan, salt, pepper, lemon zest. Wow. And I just put a little, I mm. can't get too close to you guys, but put a little dollop in the middle of the wonton wrapper. And then I just take my clean finger mm -hmm. <laughs> and rub a little egg wash around the edge. Oh. And then take a second wonton wrapper and put it on top, line up the edges. And then you just want to press it together. Oops, I grabbed three. That's okay. It's, I'm doing this on the fly. And then just force all the air out. And honestly, if you can't make, make homemade pasta dough or you don't have time, this is such a great shortcut. I like that. And then you just can get an assembly line with your kids, make as many of these as you want, and then just drop them into salted water one by one. And look. All right, I love it's those. Little pieces of ravioli. Just Delicious. Fresh hey, and ready to go. Hey, Ree, can we, we only have a minute, but we want to get to that dessert, that, what is it? Ice it's box, ice box yeah. cake. Oh, yeah. Blackberry ice box cake. So the frozen pound cakes that we all know and love, I shave the top off, crumble it into crumbs, pour in butter. Very easy. And then just put this on the stove top, toast the crumbs. Mm. And then the cake that's left, you slice the cake into three slices lengthwise. I already started a layer and it's cake, a mixture of jam, blackberries, and lemon juice, Yum. and lemon zest. Yum. It's so fun to use a frozen pound cake because then you cut that whole well, step. Oh my gosh, uh, you it know, doesn't even look hard to make. Ree, yeah. Ree, it looks delicious. Something Savannah so, I could make. We're happy. Yeah. All right. We you just layer it kind of like lasagna. All right. Cake, jam, cream. Ree, and then you wind we up. love you. We love you. We can't wait for your book to come out. Thank you for cooking for us. Uh, you can check out Thank her you, recipes girl. at today.com slash food. Jeffrey, that your two young girls are authors 